You can tell um, it to me anyway. <laughs> I, I assume that Jack would have filled you in on how this yes. happens. Yes. Oh, I didn't even tell us we were doing a show. <laughs> I, just, I was like, all right, that was the movie. Now. It was the weirdest thing. This guy comes up to me in bar. He's like, you want to be on my podcast? Like, I've heard some shit lines. <laughs> that's okay. I wonder how often that you that's used now. You All the time. <laughs> I yeah, do, right? It works. It oh, works. No, it doesn't work. <laughs> how many times so, have you used the Jack? So, Hillary, I don't know if you know the the history. Uh, Jack has brought us many a guest, and uh -huh. uh, two of the guests that he's brought us, one of whom I just saw on an episode of that Tia Leone show on CBS. Um, oh, Madam Secretary. Madam yeah. Secretary. And then the other one, I just read a Deadline article about her new series that she's going to be in on Showtime. So what I'm saying is things are about what to blow up you for you done? because you're going to be on Podcast of Terror. You're going to get the Podcast of Terror bump. Yep. <laughs> uh, although I was telling Corey, uh, I guess to stroke your ego a little bit, because I was trying to get background on you because I record pre-recorded an intro before you got here. And I was like, oh, shit, you're an FBI. My wife loves that show. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. It was yeah. fun. And yeah. then I listen up and you're like, tourist well, number four. Yes, thank you for mentioning that. <laughs> I, I see that. I haven't seen it. I don't know. I assume that you're just right your jazz hands right I'm, in the middle uh, of the frame. I'm not going to trash talk a show Hillary's been on. I, I've never seen it. I don't know anything about it. <laughs> I but it. the ads for it everywhere. And it makes me so angry because I, I you know, I, I've pitched to a lot of like top agents and, and top producers and stuff. And a lot of the times what the notes you get almost always is, uh, you know, uh, this has been done. We want something more original, something more creative. And then you see <laughs> FBI. It's just like somebody just like pitched that. Yeah. Like, right, we're gonna give you a million dollars if you come up with this amazing idea. Uh, FBI. Oh. But, but mean, they went in a different direction. They made it a procedural. Uh, and no shows uh, on TV are procedurals, right? No, uh, I came up with an amazing procedural that I thought was gonna be a smash hit. Um, and it's a it's a long story I can't get into, but it ended up being pitched as a half hour comedy, and you know it went nowhere. And I was just like, no, no, like, there's there, you know how many proced cop procedural shows there are on TV? There's there's one half hour of cop comedy, and if you do a second one because it's a sitcom, you go, oh, that's just like Brooklyn Nine Nine. Well, there's if, um, if you do a drama, has... procedural, nobody goes, oh, that's just like CSI. Nobody... That, that that's probably the problem too, though, is that oh, it's just like Brooklyn Nine Nine. Well, we already had and canceled that show, but then it got picked up by another network, so it took your spot. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> I well, should have been the uh, NBC version of uh, Brooklyn Nine Nine. The CBS All Access has one now called No Activity. It's a cop comedy or a cop. Yeah, comedy? yeah, it's pretty good. Tim Meadows. Oh, oh yeah, I've, I've seen the ads for that. So maybe it's not my idea. Maybe I'm just a bad writer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just terrible at, at, in the pitch room. The point where we tell you you're just not good. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you see that 911 show that they came out with? So they've basically rescue taken 911 with William Shatner. Yeah. I wish that Rescue 911 was still a show. <laughs> uh, but from from the commercials I've seen, because I refuse to watch it, it's just like they took a cop show and a firefighter show and a dispatch yeah, show, like Angela Bassett and Connie Britton and, um, and Jennifer uh, Love Hewitt, uh, Six Feet Under, and, Peter Cross. Yeah. Yeah, hmm. yeah, it's kind of amazing. I it's can't just keep up anymore. We it, we're just that that's what's like it, it, that's like the future dystopia of pop culture we're living. Soon it'll just be like ten minutes of just every procedural ever <laughs> beamed into your brain all at once. It'll be called <laughs> emergency with an exclamation point. <laughs> that's a real show from the seventies. Uh, Let me out of here, Corey. That's like more horrifying than that alien hybrid thing. Oh, <laughs> good segue. Oh, that was really good, but. But we really need to like explain to people who have no idea who Hillary is. Yeah, is this the show? Yeah, no, it technically it is. A break. And this, <laughs> I really like how you brought that one back. I can't use my own inside jokes of my own show since uh, we're on hiatus. So I'm just but, gonna but, use all jokes on here tonight. I guess I'm on the. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. All right, let's set up. Let's 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 set up. What do you want? What do you want the audience to know, Matt? Uh, well, I'd like to know Hillary's favorite color, favorite food. I was just about to say. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Periwinkle is my favorite color. It's fucked up, but I'll take it. <laughs> one of the dullest crayons, the, the sharpest crayons in the box because it was never used. That and the white one. <laughs> it's a color. If you like blue and like kind of lavender. He, that nice, looks very periwinkle. Calming. Yeah, kind of. Um, you look periwinkle that's tonight, a good Matt. thing. <laughs> like okay, my face looks periwinkle? Gnocchi is my favorite food. 
Matt looks like a gnocchi. Gnocchi? Come yeah, on. no, Matt looks like a yuck. Kind of like soft and potatoey, so it's it's all right. So two for two, my friend. <laughs> I guess I kind of forgot you're that big city living, and you, you your favorite foods are things like gnocchi. Um, because there's a restaurant that I discovered last year that literally just serves gnocchi, and it's called Gnocchiria in the East Village, <laughs> and that sounds really corny, but it's really. I would have called good. it no kidding. <laughs> oh my god, that's <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna open up a rival one. Really That'll good. be like like on CBS All Access. I can't. <laughs> Speaking of New York, real quick story. I'm, uh, a Jeopardy last week. I had a nickel. Every time. <laughs> yeah, right? That's my new podcast, New York Stories. <laughs> it's, it's like the moth, but you know, potato noodle related. <laughs> Uh, there was there's this reigning champ on Jeopardy. I, I mean, I'm a few episodes behind. I watch it when I'm at the gym, so I'm always like, I so watch you're like, like three weeks behind. Yeah, I'm like three years behind. So <laughs> <laughs> Matt knows. Matt, Matt, me and Matt are uh, we uh, we sync our exercises. Anytime I lift That's a weight, adorbs, he knows. Guys, yeah. yep. yep, yep. Weird. You except usually when he sees uh, Jack just uh, got a 500 calorie workout is because I was in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the times so I'm like, hey man, good job. He's like, I was just washing dishes. <laughs> okay because you send a reply like a great job man and you need you know, to help each other oh, like that's nice yeah yeah that's so great. How, are you, how are you putting that many calories washing dishes though <laughs> i mean what kind of shape are you in you, it's <laughs> you, you didn't listen to my, my actual podcast uh episode angry dishes where i talk about how <laughs> i would like do the dishes when i was arguing with my girlfriend yeah girl okay I can, it just seems like you burn <laughs> off like yep. Mm -hmm. A day's worth of work by walking the microwave to microwave your sponge for a minute. <laughs> oh, I forgot. I uh, have an update on the microwave sponge thing. So I, I did was it today, but I feel like I well, feel you need like to whole... you need to know this. You need to, just in case this ever happens to you. So I I, I tell I told their audience always uh -huh. microwave your sponge um, for sixty seconds okay. before you do dishes because okay. uh, it kills most of the germs in there. I yeah. did a unless I you like them. Up. Yeah, unless you like germs. <laughs> well, then uh, it makes the super germs. <laughs> yeah, you get you. I am making my own staff. Of, you know, I still throw out the sponge. It just they, uh, super germs need like a month to to come into. You know, so, uh, the, 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 we're getting distracted here. Episode I title is your own brand of SARS. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, so the sponge. I opened up a brand new one right out of the wrapper. Put it in for two minutes, uh, figuring I was doing some other things. You started uh, it on fire, didn't you? Yeah, I caught on fire. God so, damn it, Jack. <laughs> so always. Always make sure it's a very, very moist sponge that you microwave. Never microwave a dry sponge. And don't do it more than a minute. The more you know. Yeah, see? It's a learning practice. <laughs> well, gnocchi made me think of sponges, which made me think of... <laughs> well, I don't want to eat at your restaurant then, Jack. Yeah. Speaking of uh, microwave fires... Yeah, I don't want to tell the gnocchi story now. That's, that's, that's ship sale. No, we're going we're gonna to get back to the gnocchi story because I love a good potato-based food story. <laughs> All right. it's a little which, potato funny, potato is... I have a but, podcast for you, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> I like the alliteration. Yeah. <laughs> we had this potato bag where you would put potatoes in a in this like sack and throw them in the microwave. And one Christmas morn, <laughs> my wife like over fucking cooked her potatoes and started the sack on fire in the microwave. And because I live in Wisconsin, before we left for her parents, we just threw it out in the snow in the backyard and left it. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Can you imagine, like, the God forbid, you guys like were killed in a horrible accident that day, and uh, and the uh, the cops come and they they like check out your check out the house and they just see this like burnt sack of potato. Like, what detective? A tough way to go. How Sherlock wouldn't even like have enough evidence to work on? Be like, I, I don't know what this is. I don't know what happened. <laughs> they have this That's a bad way to go. Death by Hot firing sack. potato. Hot sacks. Hot sacks. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh, fun times. This is awesome. Are we... <laughs> what else did you want to know about Hillary? Oh yeah, okay. favorite food, favorite whatever world. she wants to talk about. You, yeah. you should be able to like push whatever you're pushing, at least a little bit. That sounded really bad. I'm sorry, but I've, I've been <laughs> drinking, so it's okay. Uh, well, uh, you can watch my short film, The Finger, on Amazon Prime right now. So you should cool. go do that. That's awesome. Yeah. That you actually get like. That they put short films on Amazon Video. Yeah, it's great. So that's very cool. I added yeah. it to my list. Oh, thank you. Right I'm not saying I'm going to watch it. I just said I added it to my list. <laughs> like, one step at a time. <laughs> How many first responders are in the finger? Yeah. You have you have your cops. Uh, you have your firefighters. Uh, you have your... Well, I don't want to spoil the movie, guys. Right. 
Is it about like the reserves? Like it's it's centered. It's a movie centered around guys who really only do heroic actions two days a month. <laughs> that that is there. That is no. a procedural that hasn't been done. It takes place in an Italian restaurant, though, because yeah. we we're talking about Milky. <laughs> Jack, we need to trademark. Like the New York, it's weekend, weekend Warriors. That's going to be our procedural <laughs> reserves film. I like it. And it's just going to be 90 minutes of a guy going to work, like normal work, and then like 10 minutes, he's got to go really? to like an army base. I love it. I love it. And we're not insulting. Uh, God, no. I know plenty of reserves. Yeah. I just because, like literally they're doing more than me. Like if they're there, if they were in the reserves to the reserves, if they were doing one minute of like military duty a month. They would be doing. They're burning a lot more calories. I'll <laughs> yeah, say that. they're better Americans than I am. It's true. I've said it before. I'll say it again. I'm a terrible American. <laughs> yeah, you're not a great one. But then, <laughs> yeah, neither am I. Yeah. You, you don't. Well, you, you, Hillary, do you drive a car? I know Jack hasn't seen the inside of a car for quite some time. The driver's <laughs> seat, at least. I mean, not often. When I go oh home God. for when I when I'm home for Christmas, I will. Okay, well, uh, so you I remember what it's like. <laughs> do you have marathon gas stations over in your part of the country? I don't even know what that means. <laughs> okay, well, it's just marathon <laughs> is the, marathon. the all the time. Um, I only see them when I drive to Ohio, so it's like Indiana ish. Marathon. Wait, but what? What are they? They're open all. <sighs> I have no idea. Sorry, I, I was burp. I wasn't like a twenty four seven gas station. Yeah. The where I'm going is because it's American. Um. When you pump gas, and the majority of them, it plays a song, and their their theme song, the tagline is "Get a full tank of freedom and ride the American road." Wow! Wow! So, that's pretty amazing. Next time you wow. see a marathon gas station, that's how I signed all my yearbooks in high school. <laughs> Get a full tank of freedom and enjoy your summer. <laughs> wow! <laughs> Jack, she's never coming back on the show. Is she? <laughs> Gas station at a time. <laughs> Hillary's having the time of her life. I am. This is really <laughs> enjoyable, guys. Oh, glad you can just poke <laughs> fun at us small town folk. <laughs> <laughs> You're the one that brought up cars. You had some kind of weird, like, like, you haven't been in a car in a while. Because it's weird to me. We've had this conversation. I literally. Yeah, not judging you. I did not drive You're a car today, us. which is really strange. Okay. You want to talk about it? <laughs> no, I, just, I just didn't really leave my couch. I, I I smoked a bunch of food. That's not a euphemism. I literally smoked beef ribs and and, and ribeye. Oh. Should I mention I'm vegan right now? <laughs> as long as like Never that's I mean to each their own. I can't trust you anymore. But <laughs> as long as you don't hate on my love of meat, no, we're good. Um, I would yeah. not lose my my views on someone else. Have we lost Corey, or is he, or we just, uh, is he just smartly just sitting out his, <laughs> the bulk of this? He, uh, his mic shits out on him, and he pops in and out. And yeah, we miss you, buddy. How are you back? I mean, I, don't, I didn't expect oh. a response. I, just, <laughs> I have mic. sound. I have sound clips of dirty things that Corey has once said. If you want, I could just randomly play it. <laughs> sure. I think it's doing it in the butt for your country is the one I got. Wow, I find that less offensive than. <laughs> The gas station freedom. <laughs> What's wrong with gas station freedom? <laughs> do you not want to be free? Hmm. I do. Of, of Trump. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I would love if the gas was free. That like, would be. Yeah. If it said, like, come get a buck, like, literally, like, a gas, like, a tank of freedom because you don't have to pay for it. There was like some kind of socialist benevolent gas. How, station. how bad is a gallon of gas out by you? Bernie Co. Uh, what's, what's that? How bad is a gallon of gas out by you? How do we know? <laughs> I don't know. I yeah, assume we see Wait, a gas Alexa, what's, How much does a gallon of gas oh, cost Alexa, in New York City? My old nemesis. Two. <laughs> 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 Two U.S. dollars and eighty-seven over cents over the past week. Thanks, Alexa. <laughs> God, so what it was two? You said two eighty. Alexa, what's that? Two eighty-seven. Oof. Yeah. Is that a lot? Uh, I paid two fifteen this morning. Yeah, I remember when it was like eighty-nine cents. Oh, I fucking lied to you. I totally drove a car today. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's it. it. Twist ending. <laughs> <laughs> this week's podcast of terror. Nyoki did not drive a car today. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's going great, right, guys? <laughs> this is um, this is pretty on par. Although when Jack's here, it's always a little off the rails. I'm sorry. No, never be sorry. This is I, charged. Never. I was <laughs> trying to figure out how many times you've been on because this might I be think them. this might be a dozen. Ew, like I think we're past that. Martin to your Alec Baldwin. <laughs> oh, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Guesting. Yeah. Like oh, hey, yeah. SNL brought it right back around. See? Thank you. See? It's Thank all you. it's all coming back. The next do we, hour. <laughs> do we have Corey score back? Who knows? Oh! Yeah! <laughs> hey. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, we lost him. Oh, you're this is it's 11. Oh, okay. Jack, it's number 11. So, oh. I thought you were on 13. All right, I'm I'm catching up to Doctor Who. 11. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> on my thirteenth one, I'll be a woman. It'll be great. <laughs> I'm Please remember about that. what's been going on for the last ten. But all right, I'm gonna remember that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can't wait. I'll I'll do a dozen if you guys will have me back. Yeah, well, yeah, fuck it, yeah. Not that Hillary chick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have to talk about the guests that you're bringing. But sorry, I really dropped the ball since uh, since uh, Mike Walls. Is By it way, bad? Just, uh, I don't remember. Babe. What we did, we did Jaws, Mike Walls. We did Jaws. Oh. Yeah, I remember him being on here only because it's on a list. Is that bad? It's very. It's kind of a little vaguely Nazi. Do you like oh. lists? Are you a list maker? Uh, well, we've okay. So we've done <laughs> this Phoenix song, Listomania. <laughs> this is our one hundred and forty sixth episode. So oh, we have a list to awesome. keep track of when. Yeah, I don't fucking know why this is still happening. <laughs> but I, we do it to keep track of what movies we've done and who's been on and when they were on so that we can reschedule after, unless it's Jack. Yeah. Jack just comes, I think Jack's been on like six times in the past two months. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Which is fine because Corey was gone and it, you know. No, it's like those, those, those Saved, by the Bell, Saved by the Bell episodes where like Tori was in them for a bunch. Oh, you know, so. Tori. I'll just be in there for a while. <laughs> <laughs> She's one of triplets, identical triplets. And she is. The yeah. Parent Trap Three movie. Oh, she's in it with Haley Mills. Yeah, yeah, she's uh, she's yeah. sisters with uh, Joy Beth Creel, who is married to Rob Liefeld. Oh, who are these people? <laughs> <laughs> I, I understood most of those names. Uh, well, Jack knows Rob because Rob is the guy who does Young Blood and did a bunch of eighties comics, created X Force. Yeah, that's that? why I know him. Yeah, the nineties. Uh, Spike Lee directed. Levi's 501 jeans commercial. <laughs> hey, was it I... a Spike Lee joint? It was Spike Lee was doing Levi's commercials in the 90s. Yeah, that's. So it was like a it was like a Spike G one Spike, Spike, Spike Lee one hitter. I, 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 I <laughs> oh, <laughs> and the master was reminding me because that was a necessary uh, creator of Deadpool. Oh. Did you see that they're recutting Deadpool two to be a PG thirteen movie? Brilliant. It's a brilliant marketing strategy. They're making it into a completely different movie. So you're the like, first person that has agreed with that, but I respect you more than most people, <laughs> so I'm now on your side. I think the Aww. idea is brilliant. I hate the Deadpool movies. I don't I, I do not understand why they're popular. I didn't see the second I think they're I think they're okay. Jack, can you them. can you please leave? Hillary <laughs> can stay, but you have to leave. I mean I will. <laughs> Jack, can you take <laughs> this crystal Pepsi with you? Because this is shit. <laughs> <laughs> is this your first time drinking it? No, I had it in the nineties. Yeah, but I mean, I was gonna say, in, is it still around or is that like vintage? No, no it's back now. Really? I, yeah. I found this on the way out here. Uh, I drove across from California to Michigan, moving back this way, and uh, like in the we, trash or oh. no? It was in a, it was pretty close. It was in some <laughs> backwater uh, gas station. Uh, I think right before we made it into the state. Uh, but yeah, I was just like, oh, I've got to have that because I drink dumb shit on the show all the time with Matt, and uh, that'll be fun. And I it just worked it. out perfectly. Exactly. Okay, so speaking of drinking dumb shit. <laughs> what was everybody drinking? No, that's all one word. That's oh. Matt's, Matt's code name. Okay. Um, with Secret Service is oh. drinking dumb shit. Nope. I recently found out that the reason that the, real quick, that the uh, second go at uh, Fear Factor was canceled was because they had the contestants drinking donkey cum and urine. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. TMZ got hold of the video and released it. And then uh, Crystal Pepsi. I think a donkey yeah, released Crystal it. Pepsi. <laughs> All right, so here's where I can explain because Jack wanted to know how much of an alcoholic I am. Um, I got two cans of narrow gauge. Buddy from Kansas sent it. It's called the Rains Down in Africa oh, for the Toto fans. Yeah. And then also join us in creating excellence. Yeah. And and then there's the Rosanna so Lager. <laughs> yep. 
<laughs> and then I got Brewing Project, uh, things of that nature, literally. Oh. So, okay. let's see. It's not going to end well. <laughs> Hillary, what are you drinking today? <clears throat> water. Thank H2O. You. <laughs> I have water too. It's in a big red cup, and it's. I, I got a Barry Lacroix, and uh, <laughs> and then Corey's got the Crystal Pepsi. I do. Which you hey guys, you podcast have... over. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks. See you guys next time. Corey, you have to pair that with bologna sandwiches. Remember? Oh no, no, it's hot no, spam. No. Uh uh-uh. uh <laughs> I guess your listeners know who I am, right? Since we didn't, we introduced Hillary. We didn't introduce me. On, like my. Did all, we introduce all my, you? All my, all my well, um, we introduced me via <laughs> color and food. Via New York, yeah. The, well, like I said, the pre-recorded yeah. intro, I got more in than I uh, expected yeah, that's, to. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, maybe they just like the sound of my voice. <laughs> well, you've already elevated the show. Uh, Have, cause, thank you. Yeah. you have any interest usually... in doing ASMR? Because I feel like you might not be terrible. You'd be good at it. Well, you have a so. soothing voice. Why, thank you. You seem like you probably into making people uncomfortable. <laughs> you could that's rub. Not, that's, that's not nice I'm, anyone's ever said to me. Actually, it's not a bad thing. Me. Like I feel like that might be <laughs> enjoyable to you. <laughs> I don't know. What is no, no, no. They they just said that they were like, you seem like a really genuine, nice person. Like truly, I can tell. I can tell that. But he's like, but I feel like if I ever wronged you or messed up, you would cut me. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, why? Thank you. It's the nicest thing. <laughs> to me. You seem real vengeful. <laughs> that's probably a safe bet to go with. You should you should pick <laughs> that assessment. <laughs> Only when you've wronged me. I just Easily. pictured you having like this night, this like night, like midnight job as like a, like a vigilante. Uh, the and, equalizer. Yeah, but you're you're like an assassin, and your calling card is leaving a burnt potato sack <laughs> in the. In the I like that. She's I do, been here. I do drink out of a mug that says "quietly plotting revenge." <laughs> nice, nice. Ooh. Along with like a Snoopy mug, but you know. Is it Snoopy quietly plotting revenge? Because that would be fantastic. <laughs> no, <that'd> be awesome. <laughs> I'm sure I can special order that somehow. <laughs> he just flies at you Red Baron style in, the, in his doghouse. Oh, my God. It's like North by Northwest. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, man. Um, oh, that's sneaky. <laughs> yeah. No, you should do ASMR. So you need a niche. And I don't know if there's ever been somebody like rubbing gnocchi against. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Matt so, was rubbing his beard against the yeah, microphone. Corey, Corey, Corey got, got really mad at me before you guys got here. I was just doing this. Did I tell? <laughs> did I have we talked about ASMR before? Did I tell a story about about ASMR at work a couple weeks ago? No, we have talked about it because I got really, real oh, quick. Okay. I got real, real drunk on a Friday night playing video games on my computer with someone. Uh-huh. It was one of my coworkers, and he's like, "Dude, you gotta watch this ASMR." And then I drunkenly watched a Russian girl put pop rocks on top of an umbrella for an hour. <laughs> wow! Wow! Oh, yeah, shit, you not okay, Jack. Your turn. Um, I hope it's about yeah. Noki. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, uh, yeah, I, I I only know what an ASMR is because uh, Dan brought it up on the show. I I, I still don't a hundred percent grasp it, but I I think I got the broad strokes now. But anyway, somebody. Uh, oh, my boss comes in. Uh, like I can't say who. Um, because it's still my boss. <laughs> I don't know if I should tell this story. Yeah, I was uh, gonna say just calling it the broad strokes is already a problem. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm in the market. I'm, I'm in a marketing team, and somebody's like, "Did you know what ASMR is?" And I was like, uh, "Yeah, yeah." She's like, "I just heard of it." I was like, "Yeah, it's weird. I, it's been around. And I only just heard of it recently." She goes, "Look how many hits on YouTube it has." And, like, she puts on a random channel of like somebody like putting tapping a ping pong ball or whatever, and it's got like three hundred thousand views. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she's just like, we, "Can we use this somehow?" I was like, "To, to market our school." Like, <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> <laughs> she was just so amazed that it's such a huge medium, but like like porn, it's there's really but, you, you can't use it to your advantage in most. No, <laughs> no one's used porn to their advantage, Jack. I don't know what <laughs> what were they thinking that investment? It's Must, right. Marketing, I mean, no payoff. Okay. Um, was the video you watched of an, a mildly attractive woman? Um, uh, probably it was probably they're they're mostly attractive women, right? And that's the thing. Like, find me. I do. If I do ASMR. I'm not going to get any hits. I imagine. Well, maybe in the bear community. Rawr. <laughs> there it is, Jack. Okay. Yeah, that's See, it. We're gonna, guys, Corey, Hillary, go. Yep. We got to have a business plan. We got to yep. work up. <laughs> just get real oiled up and just go. Rawr. Excuse me while I adjust my robe. Oh. <laughs> I can't wait for the David Fincher uh, social network <laughs> film about me and you creating this company. <laughs> Justin Timberlake's like, what if I could get you a billion bears? 
So if there, <laughs> Dan and I play the Winklevoss twins in this, this is yes, great. Yes, yes, we'll, we'll definitely have the uh, wow. the Corey Vi. So if there's if there's a movie depiction of us and our rise to fame, I'd like to request that Hillary plays me. Oh, I like that. Let's, can we see a little Matt right now? Can can you do your best, Matt? You need to eat a lot more Funyuns. <laughs> I swear to God, if you just emulate him rubbing your beard against the microphone, we're gonna have a billion hits before the uh, show even hits. Yeah, realize like she's like Christian Bale. She will eat Funyuns for two years and prep for their all. It's true. Not because they're delicious, just <laughs> to further your career. I guess this week's Access Hollywood, Hillary Mann gains <laughs> seven hundred pounds to play Matt. Stein. Jesus Christ! You saying I'm nine hundred pounds? <laughs> Are you saying she's 200 pounds, Matt? What the fuck? Oh, well, I'm assuming, that, I'm assuming she's like, we're going to go into what happens after we're famous and you you just become like uh, like Orson Welles-esque. You just, you just keep growing and growing. <laughs> All I picture is uh, your, your excess. Yeah. Bart Simpson. Just, I wash myself with a rag on a stick. <laughs> I'm looking forward to episode 500 of podcast here when I'm the good looking one then. <laughs> <laughs> Corey, you're much better looking than I am. No. By then I will rival your 11. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's true. When we talk about all the people that Jack has brought us on the show, it's mm -hmm. not like any of them returned. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good um, point. Well, okay. Are we talking about guests that have been on here with Jack or guests that have been on here because of Jack? Oh, wow. Yes. That's deep. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Pull it, I'm looking at my spreadsheet here. <laughs> to be honest, I don't remember everybody I've given you. Uh, well, yeah. Mike, Mike, and Billy have been on twice, right? Those guys. Okay, um, yeah, and those were a result of you. Jack was not on the show with them, but they were here because of Jack. Uh, I like, I like, I, I like when there's people that I think would get along great together and have a good conversation together. I am more, always more than happy to to bring those people together. Aww. No. Mm -hmm. the don't fall into that bullshit because that's Jack basically I saying. I got money. I got paid. <laughs> I've enjoyed talking to you, but I'm tired of your shit. Uh, let me introduce you to the next person in line. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe that. I believe Jack actually enjoys being here. Uh, no, here, but somehow, because he's, he's yeah, not either. But... Here, because uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. spoilers. <laughs> there are a lot of times where Jeff gets pissed at. Jack and I, because we're trying to like have a normal conversation while we're playing video games, and we're not paying attention to flanking the enemy. Jeff is a, is in our video game squad. We play uh, uh, a couple of nights a week usually. At, yeah, it's so. real cute, guys. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was listening to somebody else on a different podcast talk about her so husband. Jealous. Says <laughs> no, like this is our poker night. Like you know, no, that's dad's nice. always on a poker night, and I... what we do or. Matt probably actually has poker nights, like real poker nights, but in the city. Do, nobody, but I don't anymore. <laughs> I haven't played video games since. Okay, I beat Mortal Kombat on medium, not hard. <laughs> and I you are you are wife material. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody one day. Um, That's how we proposed over here. <laughs> He's my favorite. Was Get over here back, forever. Back, back. Yeah, I love Scorpion. Um, I also that, that movie is not the first one, so guilty pleasure. Great movie. Great yeah. Movie. Oh, so same good. Same director as uh, Alien vs Predator. Your other guilty pleasure. Really? Yeah. Paul W S Anderson. Oh, Can we God. just agree that there are no such thing as guilty pleasures? There are just things that we like. All right, fine. But come on, <laughs> I, I I had done it too. And for no, me, that's right. Yeah, AVP, the the Mario Brothers movie, Gossip Girl. <laughs> Hey. Uh, but I just lose you. I, I see really, really no. like David Hasselhoff. No, I see what you're saying about guilty pleasure. You're saying, why should we be ashamed of these things? <laughs> yeah. But I disagree. I, I think I mean I think you're right, but I think we're just not using guilty pleasure correctly. We're like, we're like kind of bragging, like, I like David Hasselhoff. Like you're proud of it. It's it's, it's something that makes mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. relatively unique. It's the same it's why. Very yeah, exactly. Thing. It's the same reason why you would like brag about like, oh, I'm from Staten Island, I'm from Boston. You know, it's just it's part of your identity. But the actual guilty pleasure that makes mm -hmm. you feel guilty is I'm sure people have pleasures that they really are would are actually embarrassed to tell anybody about. Like, like I don't ASMR mind, videos. Like, exactly. Like I love Gossip Girl. I, I hate to tell you this, but I love Gossip Girl. <laughs> but I'm not gonna say I hate to tell you this, but I love that porn where they shit in, in your eyeballs. Like, you know, that there's people wow. who like that um, and don't 
that. I would like to know exactly what the name of this film is so I can avoid it. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I shit in your eyes. So. Or look it up right now. What's that? Yeah. I shit in your eyes. I want to watch it. I mean, I'm assuming there's a shit in your eyes video. I'm not, I'm not really going to look a, I wouldn't use my. I wouldn't use one of my real guilty pleasures as a hypothetical guilty pleasure. Because <laughs> I feel guilty. But the whole concept of guilty pleasures comes from the fact that it used to be stuff that we were ashamed of liking. You know, it, we were closet nerds in the 80s. In my day, it was like, you weren't cool if you like comic books. But I always liked comic books, so I didn't give a shit. I'm the one who went to school with the first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and people were looking at me like, what the fuck is wrong with you? This really? is a book about turtles that are ninjas. No, no, she, he's yeah. talking about the comics, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. You're talking about the, yeah, the, the cartoons. original black and white comics, like, Eastman and Laird stuff. Ninja but, Turtles, but that's the thing, is it? I don't know if you know that. I did not know yes. that. Stick, you know the character Stick from the show? Uh huh. Splinter. He's a part of a stick. He's like, and the, the way they they get their the, the, the way they turn into anthropomorphized turtles is from the same canister that hit Daredevil in the face that caused him to go blind. Yeah. Um. It literally yeah, hits the okay. and then falls down the sewer. Wow. Right. Because that's how cool I am. But but that's, that as cool. we saw, the nerdiness got to be less of a stigma. But even then, it was the hipster ideal of, I like things ironically. You know, it's it's not a guilty pleasure. I like it because it's not cool. And that's how cool I am. And look at my luscious beard. Uh, <laughs> and lumberjack shirt. It, it's, <laughs> it took me a long time to grow this thing, bitch. I know it did because uh, it took like nine and a half microphones. <laughs> it just, that the whole point is is that we're still afraid to like the stuff that we like. We're still afraid to put ourselves out there and just enjoy what we enjoy. And I think that's what Matt's talking about is that a guilty pleasure is bullshit. You get pleasure out of something, you might as well just fucking stand up and enjoy it and say, I like this because that's how you find like minded people who enjoy the same things you do. Yes. Yeah. Preach. And this has been the gospel according to. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got a fucking pulpit. Exactly. We gotta get it. We gotta get it. Wait, wait, We we have to get about one eight hundred number. You gotta put a one eight hundred number up there. That's how you're gonna start. I like nine seven six myself. I'm a purist, but uh, that's how you're gonna start making money. People are mailing mailing you cash, like the uh, the big church. I wonder if I can do. I can put one on me, but I don't know if I can put one on him, on his (laughs) hanging window. Hey, oh, I could (laughs) even get him the phone number though. Hmm. Yeah, uh, that'll be the sequel to our uh, Bear Social Network movie. <laughs> <laughs> Is this before or after Gremlins Three comes out? Oh my goodness! Not Wait, the, not Gremlins Three the, the movie because that Gremlins fucking, Three the, the script. Out. Beat says we should have the phone number one eight hundred Pothead. Oh, we should. <laughs> it works. I like it. <laughs> it works. Is that is that what is that what you call your your listeners? Is that like the name of the uh, podcast of terror community? Potheads. Yeah, we call them know. potheads. That's amazing. That's adorable. That's amazing. I mean, it's really we, cool. <laughs> it was totally unplanned. It was one of those things of like when when uh, Dave is the one who named the show. Dave, head of the Galactic Network, because named I hate the podcast things more than anything. Yeah, <laughs> and and so I was like, so can we we shorten it to pot? Can we be at pot at gncast dot com and. And they were like, that's a great idea. And I said, oh, that's great. Then we can call our fans potheads, thinking we're never going to have fans. So it doesn't <laughs> matter what we call them. Now we have six. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's great, though. I, we, we don't have really a good name. I begged Dan. For, to, I wanted to call us the Wienerverse, W-E-Verse. Oh. And the fans, <laughs> our fans would be wieners. I love like, it. I'm we, on board. Yeah, just shot it down. I was, I was bummed. So I'm I think totally... We, I, I'm yeah. gonna have my wife design a shirt that's Homer Simpson <laughs> as an Oscar Mayer. I'm gonna do that. So, okay, since Simpsons came up, uh, my tattoo artist slash friend started a clothing company called Wisconsin Skinny, like ten or eleven years ago, something like that. Because it's like seeing Bigfoot to find someone from Wisconsin that's skinny. <laughs> well, it's kind of the the whole thing was like, oh, I'm skinny for Wisconsin. Nice. And uh, <laughs> there was an episode of The Simpsons where Homer went on like a rant of nicknames, like things that people have called him, and Wisconsin Skinny was one of them. Oh, wow. So oh, that's Pete, so cool. Pete made a shirt, and it was Homer, and it said Wisconsin Skinny, and within 47 minutes, he got a cease and desist from Fox. Yep. Wow. Um, and I had asked uh, our friend Gary, who used to draw for The Simpsons, and he goes, they're too busy doing other things to give a shit about it. I'm like, apparently not. Nope. <laughs> Yeah, that's crazy. Fox is never too busy. They're going after people for making Jane hats on Etsy. That's bullshit. You know, 
well, they won't make any more Firefly, but you make a hat that looks r similar in <laughs> style. Yeah, and they sued they sued me last week when I pitched a show called Married with Children. So <laughs> I was just like, well, it, Wait, you know, what? No, I'm just kidding. Because they are, it's a, okay. yeah, hi. Hey, good night, everybody. So <laughs> I watched some movie last night. Aaron, put it, on, here. Aaron <laughs> put on some movie on Amazon Prime last night that I'd never seen from the 80s. It had uh, Jane Spader and Cynthia Gibb. It was called Jack's Back. And it was a modern day Jack the Ripper is killing people. Jane Spader starts out what? as a doctor at some like clinic thing where he <laughs> works with Cynthia Gibb. Gets murdered by his coworker because he catches him who thinking that he killed this girl, and then suddenly James Spader wakes up and it's his own twin brother who is a manager of a shoe store who looks and acts like James Spader just oozing every like ounce of charisma, wearing box not not box of briefs just briefs just like eighties full on briefs like <laughs> hardcore Spader package in your face, this guy works in a shoe store. And I'm like, in what world is James Spader <laughs> the manager of a shoe store? Um, this movie sounds awesome. I can't yeah. believe there's an 80s movie I haven't seen. Yeah, we're gonna wow. have to remake it. We're gonna have to do a remake. Wait, is that a horror movie-ish? Is it? It is now. Should we cover it? Should we, it? Should, we, should, we, should we cover it on the show? Sure. We can definitely do it. Cool. <clears throat> We it's always what was it? It's, what's it called? Spader's hard package. Jack's back. Oh, yes. Jack's back. <laughs> oh, that could that would be a good one for Maybe. my my twelfth, my big twelfth. We could do it for uh, my dozen anniversary. <laughs> uh, April Fools. Although I already have one lined up for this year. <sighs> Don't tell us. Don't spoil it. No, tell us. <laughs> <laughs> the bear. I still like Angel Devil. <laughs> yeah, no. look, I mean, look, like it works the angles there. too. Yeah, yeah. It totally is. The Bear like, Wench Project? Right and then just, oh, that's it? right. Oh, really? That's what you're going to do? Wait, what was yeah. it? The Bear Wench Project. <laughs> the adult adaptation of the Blair Witch Project. <laughs> Which now would have probably cut this out because normally, like last year we did Xanadu and it was rated as the scariest movie we've ever seen. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, that was a brilliant April Fool's show. And then the year before that, we did 80s percentile. <laughs> yep, yep. You guys are good with it. You guys come. It's hard to come up with a if if you do a completely different thing every year and not just like the same different thing every year. It's hard to keep yeah. coming up with stuff. I don't. Well, I have someone anything. someone really thought that we had decided that we were going to become an '80s podcast. <laughs> she wrote a, a note saying how sad she was to see the podcast of Terror go, but how Aww. excited she was for '80s percentile. Aww. And I'm like, I have no way of saying anything to not disappoint you at this point. Uh, podcast of Terror became an '80s podcast so gradually. I didn't even know. <laughs> <laughs> Matt had no idea about any of the stuff we talked about on the eighties percentile. No, I really—I was born in eighty-five. I mean, I don't know what the hell's happening. I don't know what's happening. It was most only the half the time. <laughs> <laughs> it was only the half a decade. What do I know? Ask Matt in five minutes what he thought about the movie we just watched, and he's not going to have any idea about that either. So it's fine. I, <laughs> I'm excited to talk Alien Resurrection with you guys, uh, not just because we had a, a blast watching it just now. But, blast! But Matt actually <laughs> seemed to have engaged with it. And you never engage with anything. <laughs> he was texting me. He's so like, what yeah, really happened? What really I, happened? I will. Uh, let me. He like falls asleep when we start talking about the movie. <laughs> I got to cue it up. But um, I text. So I was like, as I said, I was making a lot of meat earlier. Sorry, Hillary. <laughs> Thank you for saying that. And um, I told Jack, I'm like, holy shit! I'm like, this. There's this band called Graf Orlock. Their genre of music would be considered cinema core. It's just grind core, and then every movie or every song has like a movie quote. And um, they used one of the lines from this movie for one of their songs. I can't Was it, remember the name now. I'm not the man with whom to fuck. <laughs> My favorite. <laughs> oh, oh, literally so much better. <laughs> um, uh, you want me to look up the name of the song, Matt? No, it's not. It, the, the thing I sent you was Waste of Ammo. And that's the song where they took it's entirely the, I mean, the song is about the movie. But that's not the movie where they use oh wait, never mind. I sent it to you. God damn. That's what I was just looking up. I was just asking right, you if I had it open for you. Enjoy that. Oh, it is God. Oh, we'll just sit here and sign. No, Ron Roman says that in this movie, right? Yeah. 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 I said the same thing not a few minutes before. Oh no, actually. 
Jack was like, yeah, you would have been Winona's character. And he's like, no, wait, maybe you would have been Ron Perlman's character. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's, it's... Ron Perlman's I, character, Jane, <laughs> from Firefly. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. That's really... It really... Oh, wow. So we were talking yeah. about... We were talking about how Joss Whedon wrote this movie. Like, oh, that's a Joss Whedon line. That's a Joss Whedon line. I didn't. It really is Firefly. It's like you guys a proto- really shit over my Graf Orlock there. Your yeah, audio is super low. We could barely hear it. I Play know. It. I was trying to turn it up, and you kept talking. And the yeah, moment has I've passed. Gone, I've gone against grindcore bands, and I always come out on top. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, it's the Ross Roman line where he says, "Does that not compute?" Yes. Uh, so I was like playing with meat, and I was like, "Holy shit, that's a Graf Orlock song." Tells my story really mm-hmm. fucking. Sucks. But you also seem to like the movie. I couldn't have eaten sure. during the movie. I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty gory. It, um, <laughs> pretty gruesome. So I have never seen. I heard that. <laughs> I've never seen Alien Two or Three. <gasps> uh, obviously, because they're not called Alien. It's not called Alien Two. It's, well, it's Aliens. Aliens. God. And then what is Why? It, Alien? Why we watch four when you haven't? Seen well, Aliens isn't one. a horror because movie. I, I don't Jack know. wanted to see that's Resurrection. True. No, it's true. Aliens it's is so good though you need to watch it. it Aliens is the, is the introduction of the idea of space marines. Yeah. And stands out on its own. And and Matt, you might actually like it. I know you don't like sci-fi, but it is James Cameron. I don't and, like anything. And but, but you like Cameron because of all his associations with I Arnold like beer. <laughs> <laughs> it is I think it's Cameron's maybe best film, uh, besides the Terminators. Mm-hmm, I mm-hmm. I might I might almost put it above Terminator. Like Terminator has a very special place in my heart. Yeah, can you just go ahead and leave? Flawless. <laughs> but no, like I love Terminator. But Aliens is a. I'm trying to say it is a flawless. Movie. It's really good. It is like it is the the 80s action movie. Yeah. Yeah. I stand by that. It's top ten. Like it's it that uh, you'd love it. It's so good. But what Alien we, Alien Resurrection about? is kind of like a 90s up- update of it. It's a shame. You, did you guys cover the first one on this show? No, no. I think this is our first Alien franchise movie. Yeah. No. Well, because we were talking. So you so Aliens introduced introduced the idea of Space Marines. Like that had never yeah. really been done before. Now it's everywhere. Halo, all that. That was really where the idea was new and original. And Alien like set the grimy spaceship. Like that's every spaceship on every show and every movie now. Yeah, and critters. We- always, yeah, <laughs> critters. Yeah, and uh, Leprechaun in space, and yep. uh, all all of them take place in the same spaceship, pretty much. Uh, but before that, it was like 2001 Space Odyssey and Jet. It was always clean. The Starship Enterprise. This was the first like gritty, all metal grates and stuff. Mm-hmm. And Alien was the first to do that. And it's literally everywhere. Yeah. And then, yeah. And then the Space Marines. It really is an amazing series. I, I'm, I'm shocked this is the first time you've covered it. Yeah. And actually, during the filming of this, part of the reason why they had such a hard time getting uh, time in a studio was because of other films that were going at the same time that were taking up space. And so they had to build the water tank specifically for that scene. But one of the things they were competing oh, with wow. was uh, Starship Troopers, which yeah. completely Space Marines ripped off from yeah. Aliens. That's a huh. great point. Yeah, although I love Starship Troopers. I, 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 that's one of my favorite films of the 90s. Yeah. It's... yeah that, is a, that is a good one. And and man, has there ever been a movie with Ron Perlman and Michael Ironside? Because that is a team of <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Oh my god, that would be amazing. They should remake the James Spader movie. <laughs> oh, yeah, they should. Imagine Ron Perlman and Tidy Whitey's as a shoe salesman. I every night of my life. <laughs> and I'll just have Hillary whisper to me while I'm watching it. <laughs> Jesus. <You're okay. laughs> Waste ammo. <laughs> 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 she whispers. She whispers. Ron Perlman lines from Alien Resurrection. It's a, it's a, it's a ASMR. That would be perfect. That would be so good. That is the chick. ASMR videos that are about lines from horror and action movies. Mm-hmm. I love it. That's brilliant. Three ninety nine a minute. <laughs> <laughs> we get ten percent as your managers. Like anybody's going to make it in three minutes. Come on. No, <laughs> well, what you hope is that you have a constant stream of weirdos. Right, you do a ten minute minimum. Yeah. Okay. Special premium, like just Mr. Freeze lines from Batman and Robin. (laughs) (laughs) You have to work up to the good lines. (laughs) I see. (laughs) Credit card. Chill. (laughs) Oh my god. Twenty minutes. Just maybe come. I mean, not the man with whom to fuck, (laughs) or maybe. (laughs) Did you only? Man, are those your notes? Literally, you only wrote down Ron Perlman lines. (laughs) 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 Okay. Wait. Wait. I wrote. 
48 because back in Sigourney Weavner's yeah. The Shit, she was 48. When oh, I no. Said, yeah, oh. When, when that. Yeah. yeah, she looks great. Uh, I said it should be called <laughs> Alien for Attack of the Clones. <laughs> you know, I said Clone Wars and you said Attack of the Clones. They both work. They both work. They both work. Thank you. <laughs> uh, the Ron Perlman quote. Um, monster in your chest because I thought it sounded like a great song. Yeah, you sang a whole song at the at, during did. the movie. <laughs> There's a monster in your chest. <laughs> this is for the alien that music. It's like a uh, lounge music when Matilda, band. When Matilda closes, the Alien the Musical, <laughs> book and lyrics by Larry Mann. <laughs> <laughs> T minus ten seconds. It's a monster (laughs) in your chest. Please tell me there's a song about the dribble on my leg is burning me because that sounds fantastic. (laughs) Is that blood or is it acid? (laughs) (laughs) Um, And then I just wrote spider (laughs) because of that scene at the end. (laughs) I love that. That was great. I enjoyed that. But those were my notes. <laughs> All right. Good night, everybody. That was Alien Resurrection. That is already a better around. recap than we've ever given a movie. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was just traumatized the last half of that freaking alien. Yeah, the human. With the eyes. We're giving his puppy eyes. <laughs> I thought it was that... terrible. <laughs> <laughs> that was the thing. It was like, it was disgusting, but then it was just like giving you puppy eyes. The sad eye Ziploc bag full of jello alien. It was like, you know what? It was actually kind of like, um, it was like Jeff Goldblum and the fly a little, you know, yeah. you're kind of feeling yeah. bad. This disgusting thing. Yeah. That's good. That's like, yeah. they're pretty similar creatures, I guess. Um, Have you seen the fly part two? Of course. With their, a really long time. Daphne uh, Zuni. Daphne Zuni. Yeah. Oh yeah. Is Eric um, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I mean, he is a perfect young Jeff Goldblum, like a Jeff Goldblum son. It mm-hmm. kind of works. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. What were we saying? Well, I was just going to say the part with the dog in the fly part two is that heartbreaking moment of like, oh, shit, you know, I'm going to cry because of this fucking movie. Yeah, yeah. No, it's I, always hard. With I rewatched Alien 3 to gear up for Alien 4. And oh, I, I'm sorry. I, I, <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, I hadn't seen it. I only seen it once with my brother when we were younger. And it was, you know, I was I was telling Jack I was pissed off because Michael Biehn wasn't in it. I mean, yeah, yeah. They killed you know. fixing me. <laughs> and um, Spoil- but, uh, oh, oops. Whoops. God damn it, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, he's for the only person in the world who's never seen Alien. Yeah, yeah. Matt, we're going to have to fuck you on this one because we do have to talk about the fact that the direction where our aliens should have gone after two got completely screwed up by the yeah. fact that they got rid of some of the best characters. I mean, at least oh. they brought back Bishop for a second, but the, the whole point of Aliens vs. Predator was supposed to be about young Newt, I think, originally. And then oh, she, oh was really? Character in this, it was supposed to start out with a clone of her that was going to be the the star, the lead of this story, oh, because they didn't know oh. that they were going to get Weaver back. Oh, well, she did get a, the highest paycheck for an actress of all time at that time. She got twenty million for this. She was the first. Ching. Yeah. Is that uh, before Demi Moore had done GI Jane, when she got like a ton of money, mm-hmm. or or was it striptease? She got paid like an insane amount of money because she actually got. Oh, striptease. Yeah. striptease was before. I think it was G.I. Jane. Striptease yeah. is 96. I mean, we could ask Alexa. But... God. She'll not tell you the right answer, but you can ask her. How do you know? What does she get? Some... Multiples. You've asked Alexa before how much. Do, do no, you... I just know that it is a woman and women lie. Oh, God. Wow. Gosh. You want to talk about it? <laughs> <laughs> no, my wife's in the other room. That's a lie right there, though. Feigning interest in Matt's feelings. That we know. Yeah, right? <laughs> See? Oh. You don't really care how I feel. Watch, I? Watch, what, watch what you say, Matt. You should see her mug. <laughs> oh, no. She's going to kill me. She'll never find me. She'll get lost on the way here. They're going to bury you in Linus's blanket. Uh, <laughs> That's put- good. That's good. So- I'm going to make Bell reference in Psycho, but <laughs> <laughs> have you guys done American Psycho? Nope, I would love no. to though. Oh, I haven't yeah. done the sequel either. Yeah, I, I, I will fucking quit the day someone wants to watch the sequel to that movie. Ugh, yeah, All American Girl with William Shatner. <laughs> Is that what we're talking about? It, it's American Psycho too, but yeah, no, you're right. right. Is it subtitled? All, it's called All American Girl, and isn't oh. it, doesn't it co-star William Shatner? Am I wrong on that? Since we're making bad jokes. <laughs> yeah, since we're making bad jokes, I always like when people bring up 28 Days Later. I'm like, I really like the prequel, 28 Days. I'm not making a joke, though. <laughs> no, he's he's actually oh, being authentic. I'm 100% serious. No, American Psycho 2 with Mila Kunis. Yes, but William Shatner is in it. 
Are you fucking I, kidding I, me? I'm not joking. I, this yeah, is what I, happens because I have such a dry sense of humor. I'm like the boy who cried wolf. Like, what was I? I was saying, saying something yesterday at a party, and everybody's like, I was like, oh, I, think, I think I'm choking. I'm like, ah, Jack over here, Jackie sarcasm. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> No, I'm 100 percent serious. Oh, I think it's called American Psycho 2, All American Girl, and it stars like Mila Kunis, like seducing William Shatner. Oh my God, why like- are you right? I don't like <laughs> that you're right. <laughs> wow. I swear, I feel like I'm in a Twilight Zone. Oh, no, it is. It's American Psycho 2, All American Girl. And in the love scene with her and William Shatner, Macaulay Calkins just sitting in the corner, just jerking it. <laughs> oh God. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell if he's done joking. It. I don't know when, he, when he's done. His hand is burned. Like <laughs> this could be the movie. I don't. <laughs> it's movie. So back to Alien Resurrection, Attack of the Clones. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's an app title. Do we? Do we? Can we tell people to just skip Alien Three? Like, All right. So you I did the extra homework. Uh, I have I've kept my mouth shut on this, uh, but Hillary's been say, saying all night, and you I'm getting from you now. I I like Alien Three. I I really like it. I don't I don't know if I like it okay. more or less. I when think I watched two it movies. the other day, it was like better than I remembered. It's a hot mess. But it's a hot mess. It's a hot mess. But and like we were saying, the reason the first two are so successful is because you you love all the characters. You've got Dallas, and then. Vasquez and Gordon and like all these and then in the third one it's just Charles S. Dutton and like a bunch of bald white bald dudes. white dudes that have British accents mm. so they all sound exactly the same to it all sound and look the same and all the scientists in yeah. this look like that too yeah, uh, yeah. which but at least they that's that's right. them from everybody else but there is that moment of like the the two women scientists you completely confuse with each other I don't even know if they have names as characters but they look the same, they react the same, they're they're basically playing the same role. Yeah. And that was definitely like Alien 3. But you're right, Charles S. Dutton, I remember watching the movie because I really liked the show Rock at that point in time. Rock and Live. Thinking, oh, this should be good. And then it was not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I really dig it. I, I, I have a hard time following it, and I have a hard time with the characters and the dog in the beginning, which it's a cow in the completely different... Uh, alternate oh, cut yeah. um but uh, both versions i like I, I i don't know i have a soft spot i i like but i can i can go to like artsy fartsy really slow movies and i i find things to enjoy like i don't enjoy it the same way i enjoy alien resurrection mm-hmm. i totally watch alien 4 way more when i owned them all on VHS. i really liked alien 4 yeah i mean we were saying we liked it better than well i mean i liked it better than the third one and then the two new ones i Prometheus like it better than yeah anything Covenant. that's coming after i don't think i think oh, it's yeah. the last good alien movie avp sucked avp2 sucked prometheus sucked, sucked requiem so sucked <laughs> avp is fun though because it just goes so over the top and it brings back the lance henriksen is the bishop originator yeah. i like all that stuff i think that there's just there's only so much you could do, and it was a lot of high expectations into doing that movie, and they made some weird decisions with it. What I do like yeah. is that for at least the first four Alien movies, they're all very different from each other. They're all very different yes. feeling. Yeah. Different directors yeah. obviously makes it a point of that, but it goes into a different style. And so by the time, there's more similarities probably between this one and two than there are between any of the other ones. Mm-hmm. But yeah. what this does is where we get space marines in the second one we get more space pirates in this one and which is why it's it's the precursor to firefly yeah i can't believe i never made the firefly connection before that's incredible Uh, yeah and and (laughs) joss whedon says that the script that he wrote is followed pretty remarkably in the movie it's just that they get everything wrong the the tone the inflection every scene that he wrote he's like they just did it all the wrong way but everything I wrote pretty much is there. I always found that interesting. Yeah, he said he said basically the direct like the director's choices. It really is the same mm-hmm. same exact script word for word. I I wrote a script for somebody in college that was very much my style of comedy, which at the time was like like kind of Kevin Smithy, like mm-hmm. you know, a little it was a little hammy. It wasn't great, but somebody turned it into a Woody Allen film, and it was it was pretty much word for word oh. the same script, but it totally worked as a Woody Allen film. It was such, it was so cool. Yeah, and that's why I like collaboration. That's what I think is missing from certain directors where they just get so far up their own ass, uh, Lucas, that uh, they can't see the fact that they're making mistakes. But when you have a collaborator or someone that you're working with, that's why I like doing comics, is because I'll write something and then uh, my friend Levi will will pick up on it. And 
you know, as the artist, he gets to make more decisions on how things finally hit the page, but he brings something else to it that will either inevitably make me think, oh, now I can go off in this direction or at least go, I didn't think of it that way. And that's a better interpretation. Yep. Yeah. hundred percent. I, I mean, that's why I, I like, that's why I like working with you guys. It's, it's just like, it's a completely different show from nineties percentile, but it's, it's so it's just, you know, it's, it's just different. It's like exercising different muscles. I love it. Yeah, if you have friends that you hang out with and you get different things out of the friendships, you know, it's like there's someone that you you play video games with, someone that you work out with, someone that you mutually masturbate with. All those <laughs> things work out because you, you I mean, in your case, they're all mad. Right? Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, yeah, work, work out. <laughs> Burning those calories. <laughs> if you pull it hard enough, it's a workout. Oh, God. <laughs> We have the we have the watch. Try to start a lawnmower. Like in his pants. This is rated R. Kitties. <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's what's so funny is like you guys are. Um, I I have I like Alien Three and and you guys don't. I <laughs> I don't like hate I've it. I've never seen it. Right. I I really hate AVP and you guys both like like you, you like you acknowledge it's, that it's like just like how I acknowledge fun, although you can like overcome that I, I can't. watched that recently and the special effects are just so bad and that's also like it's just so also the thing yeah yeah like, it's, yeah, yeah. And it's, um, but it's also it's it's yeah it's early CGI so it's terrible it's, it's Paul it's Paul W S, S. Anderson mm -hmm. who I don't think is a good director I don't like any of his movies I don't like Event Horizon I like Mortal Kombat but it's uh, yes. but that's about it like Resident Evil I don't like. Um, and it's PG 13 and it's one of the only alien movies that is PG 13 and it just doesn't fit the, that story. It's was like when it's 13 Die Hard. Was, uh, Requiem PG 13 or was it R? No, that was, that was a hard R. Uh, and boy, that movie was terrible. It was yeah. terrible. And it was the movie I was hoping alien five would be because alien resurrection ends on earth and we had never had the xenomorphs on earth. So I was like, mm -hmm. Oh my God, alien five on earth. That's perfect. Cause you can't do the spaceships anymore. That it's done. Mm -hmm. Um, and then Cameron started talking with Weaver during Avatar, mm -hmm. uh, and Cameron was signed on to do Alien Five, and Arnold Schwarzenegger was going to co-star in it. Uh, and it fell apart. Yeah, and then, then yeah. The, and then yeah, and that fell apart. And then you had the Neil Blomkamp movie, and that oh, fell apart. So it really, cool. Scott killed it. Uh, and what we ended up with was Prometheus. But the only Earth movie we get aliens on Earth, not counting the Antarctic alien is base, Requiem. is Requiem. And it sucks yeah. that they lift yeah. it because it really is a cool idea. You've never seen xenomorphs. You've seen them in spaceships. You've seen them on space stations, you've seen them in space prisons, but you haven't seen them in the suburbs, mm -hmm. in like a mm -hmm. town. And that was so cool. And they, and they, they fuck. It was, it was these two brothers, I think, that directed. They, they were special effects guys. Yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. I just I watched it once, and that was enough. It was two special effects guys who have really weird eyesight because everything in that movie was too dark. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what I. When I think about that, I'm just like I can't see what's going on. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um. Yeah, so I would say I would argue, and we don't. I don't know how you guys feel about the new ones. We don't like Prome Prometheus or Covenant. So I would say this was the last good Alien movie, Alien Resurrection. I liked. Mm, see, I was going to say I like Prometheus better than Covenant, just because Covenant was so repetitive. Some, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. And because people complain that Prometheus was too different. Well, I mean, I'm still trying to understand Prometheus. <laughs> There's not much to understand. <laughs> But Just that's don't. the thing, though, is that Prometheus is too different, so we're going to make the next one and call it Alien, except we're going to do the exact same yeah. fucking story we did in uh, Prometheus uh, with a twist. Michael Fassbender playing the flute. <laughs> 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 he could play my, there's a monster. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, you play your flute? What is, I don't know. Uh, I was gonna think I expect Jack to sing. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can play my monster. There's a monster in your chest. There's a monster. Um, in, yeah, if he wants the ego, that's the way to go. Being yeah. the Tony <laughs> alien, the Tony award-winning alien, the, 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 the it, pops out it. and sings "Hello, my baby." <laughs> that okay? So yeah. that is how I got introduced to alien movies. So watching Spaceballs, like I was seven or eight or something. And with my brother, we love that scene. Hello, my baby. And my dad was like, well, guys, it's actually from a movie. And we were like, what? what? Cool. Yeah. We have to watch it. And he was like, well, he's like, yeah, I guess you can. <laughs> <laughs> I think we like, you know, taped it or something because I am a child of the 80s. Yeah, VHS tape. And uh, yeah. And that was our that was our introduction. And it was amazing. That's number yeah, one. Number two. I think we watched <laughs> way more, but it's. Oh. Yeah, but yeah, Spaceballs, there you go. Um, Beatmaster in our chat says that Spaceballs was a better alien movie than Prometheus. <laughs> <Alien>. <laughs> I, 
<laughs> That's good for you. I still point. haven't seen Covenant. I have illegally downloaded it and need to watch it, but oh, illegally download. don't say it out loud. I acquired just, it. People that work very hard. He's just kidding, FBI. <laughs> and also SAG. <laughs> I still SAG after, right? Hey, mm-hmm. I right. I, I, at my at my old job, I had to coordinate with the New York chapter of the Screen Actors Guild. And I remember they were very insistent when I would talk that I never call them SAG for short, always SAG after. And every time I would say it, they would correct me. Wow. Yeah. Wait, SAG wait, wait, wait. They, they, you'd have to call them what? Screen Actors Guild merge. What is AFTRA? They merge with AFTRA. American Federation of Radio and Television Artists. So they're one or union now. This is, and you know, they're unions. Yeah, it's even though it's it's actors. It, this is Jimmy Hoffa shit. You got you say it right. <laughs> say yeah. after. Maybe you should just call them assholes. <laughs> this is her of union. Which I am a member. This is so her union, no. you dick. <laughs> hey, I fully support Hillary and her veganism. <laughs> Look, um, if anybody in SAG after <laughs> wants to get back at Matt, just you know, he legally downloads movies. Just <laughs> send it. I purchase them, and then I download them so I don't have to put the DVD into a DVD player. Oh, I see, I see. Because I'm lazy. No, I get it. But but it's it's like music. <clears throat> you, I believe the law is if you physically own a copy, you can have one digital copy, regardless of how you get that digital copy. They do not spell out. Oh, oh, that's you can have same thing as like Nintendo ROMs are legal if you physically own the copy. The cartridge yeah. having a digital copy is not illegal. That's an amazing loophole, and that just goes to show why we have to like get everybody out of Congress that's over sixty and get people that understand <laughs> how the internet works, <laughs> and then legalize marijuana. That should be priority number one. Yeah. Fuck right. Yeah, I, I left this. No, no, that's the state it. where. What's I left that? The state where marijuana was legal and then i moved to a state and we just made marijuana legal Corey, you gotta move to new york buddy so, uh, yeah Corey, after new york you stop you just swing by wisconsin real quick and yeah. get marijuana yeah oh. marijuana yeah, needs if, to if some weed, weed <laughs> some weed farm wants to sponsor me and just move you from state to state for the next couple of years i'll go Fuck yeah so um watch be- aliens first before covenant okay you should also watch wait you've seen the first one right yeah i know yeah yeah Okay. I'm not that big of a shit box. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I appreciate your concern. Um, you know what a and movie that is, is, genuine is, right, concern. Matt? <laughs> That's One of them talky pictures. You should watch Aliens. That should be your first. Get in your car um, and on drive one of your to lists. the video store. <laughs> that should be. Then you can watch my film. <laughs> I was also in a HBO miniseries with Winona. Yeah. I know. And I asked Jack if that was the reason he picked this film. What I like how you brought up <laughs> the FBI over the David Simon miniseries. Oh, I but see. It's cool. I it's see on your. I see in your credits. You once Are we walked. We're gonna play. Are you an background. actress again? Yeah, this is an episode of Are You an Actress? <laughs> uh, no. What's great? What's great about the HBO? Uh-huh. So a lot of people. Uh, get Don't be excited. a dick, Hillary. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people get excited when they hear Winona Ryder uh, or Oscar Isaac um, because they're, they're huge stars. I, I get excited because David Simon is, I think, is one of the greatest like television minds of all time. He did yeah. The Wire, he did Homicide, he did Treme, he did. Uh, did he do Generation Kill? Was that him? Anyway, I don't know. yeah. Anyway, he did Show Me a Hero. So like the fact that she got to work with David Simon to me is like it. it it's you know that would be like me getting to work with he one of my cool. idols. Yeah, and Winona is cool too. Okay, this is gonna sound really bad. Who she, is Oscar she, Isaac and why does he look homeless? Come on, Star Wars man. Who was he in Star Wars? Uh, the, oh, Poe Dameron. Uh, oh, okay, 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 okay. okay. And Columbus, I've seen it. I just, I, and, I'm really bad with names and faces. Uh, Ex Machina and Drive. Oh, he was supporting. He was a Drive. I didn't know. That. He's Apocalypse and X Men Apocalypse. His yeah. greatest acting to date. <laughs> no. Ah! Yeah, the movie was pretty bad. No, I never watched. I, yeah, I stopped watching X movies after. Oh, what was that one with January Jones? That was bad. First class? First I like, class. Is that a I porn like star? Kevin Bacon. January oh, Jones? Oh, no, he was January good. Jones? Yeah, Kevin Bacon was good. I like First Class. Uh, I, 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 I did not. And, and I remember being over to friend's house and watching First Class. And my wife being there, and as soon as Beast turned blue, she just started laughing her fucking head off. <laughs> She's just like, someone put this in a movie and just started cracking up. I'm like, yeah. That's that's why we have shame about the things that we're not to do. That's- <laughs> I just saw the trailer to, what's the 
the Phoenix one or not? Yeah. X Men Dark Phoenix. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's the. Oh, first. there's but, another one. Yeah, it's the third. So, so first class takes place in the '60s. Days of Future Past takes place in the '70s. Apocalypse takes place in the '80s. This is going to be a '90s movie. What was the Days of? Future? And none of the people age in between the movies. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, what's her name? Uh, the British actress. Um. Uh. Bobby Cannavale's wife. Rose Byrne. Rose Byrne. Yeah. yeah, she's she plays like a sixty-year-old in uh, in in the last X-Men movie, and she's beautiful. Ah. Uh, okay. So, what's with the new mut mutants then? That's a horror movie that should have came out a year ago, and they keep pushing it back. Oh, yeah, must and, not be good. Yeah, but it's a horror film, and it but it takes place in the X Men universe. They're trying to branch out. Okay. Uh, and and then wasn't there a TV show with what's his name from True Blood? There's the Gifted. Is and that that's, still that's on? Also, yeah, and it's it's in the second season, and that also takes place in the same X Men. They okay. basically are trying to make an that's MCU, but for X Men. Deadpool is also in that universe. Got it. No, I don't. But okay. I think we just need to stop. Mm -hmm. um, like Deadpool three will probably have more X Men characters in it, I think, from the movies. But it's just the the X Men universe since pretty much X two, but but certainly everything after that has the worst continuity errors all the way across. They just don't give a shit about it's not planned. Oh, yeah, because now Emma was in the sixties, but she was also a preteen in this fucking Logan movie, and it, they and they switched. Caliban from I see Logan. That's supposed to be good, though, right? Which one? Logan. Oh, Logan. Yeah, Logan good. is really good. I haven't watched it yet. Yeah, I don't. I th it's very good. It's uh, good for the rest of the X Men movies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it's a little overrated. Okay. I, I, I don't. Feel like... I, yeah. I just a little. I still love it. I no, they don't... got so thrown ass about it. They decided we're gonna make a black and white version to put it out there too. Because how cool are we? Not that cool, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a great dramatic interpretation of X Men, but if it was just a, if I put it up with other regular dramas, like if it wasn't about Wolverine, I'd be yeah. like, eh. and it's like Hugh Jackman's sign off, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Unless he comes back for Deadpool three, or he said he would come back if he was part of the Avengers. And once Disney finalizes the buy of Fox, technically they can be in the oh same my god, movie. My brain so you hurts. might see Hugh Jackman as Wolverine in Avengers five. Oh my god! Could I happen. just don't know why the Marvel universe would want to associate with the shit that's going on at Fox. Is there an Avengers 4? Yeah, the trailer just came out a couple days ago. Yep. Oh, see, I don't give a fuck. Wait, so. Okay, hold on, wait. The last one, I didn't see the last one. Avengers 3? So, okay, is that, was that, the, I thought there were. That's Infinity War. So the, there's the first oh, one. Okay. And you the got, second you got the first one, then you got the second one, and then you got the third one. Joss Whedon did the first two. He did the first two, okay. And then. Russo Brothers did the third. I they thought, did the I Captain America an... sequels. Wait, the third one. Which one had um, Aaron T uh, Taylor Johnson and what's her face? Avengers the Two: one. Age of Ultron. That was the second one. Yeah. Okay. Also, those okay. two characters are in the X Men movies, and they're the only characters oh that appear God. in both universes because when they negotiated the rights, and basically they killed off Aaron Taylor yeah. Johnson, mm -hmm. but kept him in the X Men movies. And Scarlet Witch is a main character in the Avengers movies, but she's barely in the X Men movies. That was the deal they made. I'm so I don't care. <laughs> Then you have to take in the expanded universe. <laughs> Back to Alien. Jack, do you just want to text me when you're done? <laughs> <laughs> no, but there's another thing, though, is that Joss Whedon, we're talking about him being the writer for this movie, he went on and, and got very popular and started doing a lot of things that got him very far, but blew up uh, to a, a heavy degree, not because of Serenity, though I remember when Serenity came out, people were saying, you know, screw Lucas, Whedon is my god now. Yeah. Uh, that was stuff that people were screaming as they were coming out of the theater. But it was like Joss Whedon did Avengers. And Avengers was the thing that was so ridiculously successful um, for being a, a superhero movie in a line of superhero movies. And the expectations were not, this is going to make a billion dollars. It was just like, yeah, we're going to do an Avengers movie. And we're going to introduce a couple of characters you haven't really seen before in it. And we're going to have them fight space aliens and shit. And then went on and did Avengers 2, but in that time got so fed up with the bullshit of working in uh, Fox and working with Marvel slash Disney, working with all these other situations. He's like, I kind of just want to go back to doing small films on the side or doing TV shows. Now he's got an HBO series coming out, which is his own universe. But this is a guy who had Buffy and Angel. Oh, Buffy. I don't oh. scoff. Buffy's I'm, great. This is just out of control right now. <laughs>
It's related. He wrote he wrote he wrote the screenplay yeah. Alien Four. Did we lose Corey again? <laughs> Corey? I think so. He all of a sudden got really quiet. So I guess we did lose Corey. Jack, do you want to just take control of the show? Because I've completely given up. <laughs> Alien Resurrection is the 1997 sequel mm -hmm. to Alien franchise following Alien 3 in 1993. Uh, Ellen Ripley dies famously at the end of Alien 3. They didn't think there was a way to bring her back. As we said, they... Apparently there was. 200 years later. 200 years later, yeah. And basically, it was they, they realized the movie could still make money, and they paid Sigourney Weaver a shit ton of money. And she got and to she do some it. fun stuff, because yeah. she's like alien hybrid yeah they did they did something new so because they cloned her with an alien in her specifically to like take out the alien dna she's left with a little hybrid and that kind of gives her a story like she's really the first half if not three quarters of the movie she's kind of like almost like a, an anti-hero she doesn't give a shit about anybody mm -hmm. and she slowly rediscovers hum her, her humanity she like burns her own clones and finally she actually goes back and tries to save them in the when she throws the blood in the window and sacrifices her own son who she kind of likes and uh, she kind of wants to fuck it as well so um uh so yeah, yeah the that, sexual tension was well so the sexual tension Ooh. is something she produced this movie too and she had a say in the character and that was part of her deal and she wanted an aliens because it was also supposed to be at the end of alien one she was supposed to get raped by the alien uh, really yeah that was in the original like b movie because alien started as a b movie script it was the 70s and 80s we raped everything in the 70s <laughs> and 80s <laughs> don't say we Corey. come on yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so uh, they, there was a scene where she gets raped by the alien at the end, and uh, and it's kind of still there. Like uh, he he come, climbs up behind her in the spacesuit at the end. Like, oh yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyway, in Aliens, when James Cameron takes over and he goes, "I'm going to do a completely different thing," she goes, "All right, I want to have the scene where I fuck the alien." And he's like, "What? No, it's, it's, a, it's an action movie. It's, why, why would you? Oh, have, wow. Why would you have sex with the it's alien?" So like, I would really, really like to do it. He's like, "Look, I'm James Cameron. I'm a genius of filmmaking." And you've got yeah, Michael you, Bean yeah. right there. We're not gonna. <laughs> we're not gonna have Come you fuck on. the alien. Yeah. No, you're gonna get in this yellow exosuit and, and say like action movie lines. No fucking aliens. So yeah, then, except that's what they wind up doing in Species later on, though. Yeah, yeah. And it was well, it was a huge hit. So anyway, she wrote it. She demanded that part of the script have something where she has sex with the alien, and the compromise was those like scenes towards the end where she's like being carried and then she like disappears like into an orgy of aliens and all of that was yeah, was, was Sigourney Weaver's uh part of her contract she wanted that in the really yeah. yeah I saved that I was gonna tell you and I was like I want to catch your reaction wow on <laughs> I still respect her immensely yeah um. no I mean the the difference is that in comparison to the first alien the idea that she was going to be raped is in this it would have been with consent it would have been yeah. her deciding it, she gets to take charge take charge as, as the actress and as the character she's the one who's choosing to have this moment and and the up sexuality connection that she has with it is weird because it is she keeps yeah. saying it's her baby and she's its mother and then it sees her as its mother but to the point where it kills the actual alien queen uh because it doesn't recognize her as its mom mm -hmm. but there mm -hmm. is that sexual tension so it's basically it's and then the weird puppy eyes <laughs> yeah and, and that was the other thing, too, is that the alien was supposed to look more feminine uh, and was supposed to have dual genitalia. It was supposed to have both male and female genitalia. And they backed off of that again because of species and because they said, maybe this is a little too outside the lines. Uh, even I, as a Frenchman director, realize this could be a little creepy. Um, but but so. Josh Whedon brought it back in Firefly. Uh, Wash famously walked around with a penis and a vagina. So it's just... <laughs> Actually, when you I, I really can't believe I never noticed the connections between Firefly. It's not just space pirates. Uh, Sigourney Weaver, who has a striking, striking resemblance or other way around to Summer Glau, like they look very similar. Hmm. She also is kind of playing the same character where she's like yeah. suddenly like, has superhuman yeah. strength and can do kung fu. Like hybrid Ripley is huh. kind of. Uh, I forget but it's also of... very Buffy the Vampire Slayer, too. It, he yeah. likes to have superpowers in his female lead characters. It's just yeah. that in. In Summer Glau's character in, in Firefly, you don't see it happen as much until the movie. Right, 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 right. That's true. Yeah. So yeah, I guess uh, yeah, I guess if she's got a kick ass manicure. <laughs> yeah. If Joss Whedon didn't write this script, would Ripley be a super heroic like hybrid <laughs> with a badass? Well, <laughs> here's the thing. I mean, we're like the alien yeah. DNA only. Oh, it didn't affect her physically at all. It made her blood acid. Oh yeah, and her fingernails like are silver, <laughs> silver green, black. Uh. No, if, but if he hadn't written this movie, she probably wouldn't have done it because she wouldn't have come back if it was just Ripley keeps waking up and okay. there's aliens around again. It was like Home Alone 5. It, yeah, it's, no, I, as an actress, I could see like why she, yeah, it's 
And she did a great job with like the kind of mannerisms of the alien. It's great. She's great. Yeah, she's subtly doing the alien mm-hmm. body movement, body language throughout the movie. Um, and, and it gives her that that same sort of thing of what Linda Hamilton had when she came back for the second Terminator is that it made her more of a kick-ass character. As kick-ass as she was in Aliens, she was still kind of like not the physicality level of a lot of the other characters in that. But she has the drive. She has the, the powerful attitude. But in this, it's like she's beating ass. And she actually did the scene with the basketball where she throws it behind her head and makes it in the basket. She insisted for hours. Yeah, for hours she made them sit there and say, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. And then she actually finally did it. But it wasn't like the one shot that was always rumored. Uh, so the crew uh, must have hated her. And then when she finally <laughs> nailed it, you would be like, oh, my God, that's amazing. They were probably like, uh, uh. God. Yeah. And when she nailed it, Ron Perlman actually looks at the screen and says, oh, my God. And it was just the the <laughs> time that they were able to edit that part out um, because otherwise it would have fucked up what was hours of work. And he could have been the one who pissed off everybody that day. That's, that's funny. Amazing. Oh, if I was on set and then finally like hit, I would just like make a fart sound as it hit the net. It was like, <laughs> <I'm just> like, <laughs> <"Whoa."> <laughs> we'll fix it in post. That's why I'm not allowed on film sets. <laughs> this is why my amazing pitches go to other shows on Fox. Why are you allowed in your schools, Jack? <laughs> oh, God. That's a different story. That's because I try to market ASMR. <laughs> right. Jesus Christ. No one so, wants to point out that uh, the guy from CSI was on in this movie. Gary Dorden. Oh yeah, that was the first thing I noticed. I mean, Ron Perlman's in it. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. I was yeah. less surprised to see Ron Perlman in here than the yeah. guy from CSI. Dan Hadaya, Dan Hadaya from Adam's Family, and uh, and father to Dan Hadalek, famous Wii Studios that, character. Well, he was. <laughs> yeah. He was also the Tortelli. He was uh, Carla Tortelli's ex-husband. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, and had the spinoff show with uh, Casey Kasem's wife. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. The Tanellis. All I can think about are tortilla chips now. Um, uh, I'm with you on that. Speaking of spinoffs, yeah, uh, guacamole. <laughs> Ooh, I haven't had guacamole in a fortnight. <laughs> that sounds like you would say, "I am not the man with whom to fuck." That reminds me of those whose line is it anyway, where they said they have to see where they have to read the line. They have to incorporate right. the line. The, I'm going to improv. It was a very good Ryan style. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sure I'll be on again. <laughs> oh, you are welcome here anytime. <laughs> the cast no. also has, uh, wait, the, ca- the, the cast also has, um, uh, what did I say? The guy from Breaking Bad and uh, Better Call Saul. He, that was one of his first roles. Uh, and then the French Tuco. guy. I can't think of his name. Has the French guy that's in Amelie and starred in uh, one of his earlier films that made it. Who, who directed this? Jean-Pierre Jeunet? I don't know how to say yeah, it. Yeah, he's the director yeah. of Amelie 2, I think. Yeah. Um, and, and he did the wrong Amelie 2, not Amelie 2. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, um, so, Amelie 2 is great with Michelle Pfeiffer. Amelie's. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle Pfeiffer and Sylvester Stallone directed it. I, I, love, uh, I love Amelie 2. Oh, hey, Creed 2 is really good, guys. Go see it. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> I, I went straight to staying alive when you said wait, wait, Sylvester wait. Stallone directed it. I went straight to the the sequel to Saturday Night Fever, Staying Alive. That's still undirected. Exactly. Are, exactly. Were you in Creed Two or is it no, actually I just really SAG like, after him hicks him so <laughs> <laughs> No, I really like. I love Creed, and I story checks out. Creed Two recently, and I thought it was great. I mean, because Ryan Coogler wasn't the director, so I was like, I don't know. Well, I it was great. I, I, don't know, I, re- I like randomly I saw Creed it one awesome. and it wasn't the worst. It's good. I like that movie. The best I'll tell you is it was not the worst. Right. I, uh, <laughs> I, I turned to my brother right Jesus. before the movie started and I said, <laughs> I said, if it sucks, it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> what? Rocky four, Ivan Drago. If he dies, he dies. Uh, oh. The Phantom Menace has put that what? put us all through the ringer so bad that that's all we do when we walk into a movie theater with high expectations and more. It's like, well, if it fucking sucks, I I can go home and masturbate. I've it's actually okay. never seen Phantom Menace. I I was so I didn't want it to ruin everything, and then I've seen the only part of Attack of the Clones is Attack of the Clones. I've no, seen is the <laughs> yeah is where Natalie Portman and Hank and they're like, I love you. No. I love you. It was so bad. It's the, the romance and then I did watch the final one just because I wanted to see the kind of origin story of Darth Vader. And that was, it was watchable. You should, I, I would, I, but I, I, I can't, I don't, watch. I don't want to 
They're terrible, but they're thing. a fun watch. And You've actually fun. seen the Phantom Menace, so you just eternal sunshine yourself out of it. <laughs> <laughs> And oh, can yeah, you that, give me yeah, their number. Great idea. Eternal <laughs> sunshine, like lying in that table and all, all the memories, and mm-hmm. it's just Star Wars oh. pretty cool stuff. <laughs> I mean, this is my base movie <laughs> watching figure. Or like The Hobbit. Ugh. Yeah, they, uh, they, they were, they were, they were pretty dull. It's Although, ama- I guess it wasn't. It was it. It would have been so cool if Guillermo del Toro had directed The Hobbit as originally planned. Yeah, and it would have been one movie that would have been amazing. Yeah, that would have been very cool. But and different. Nope, we got three films. But here's the thing: the Hobbit movies, they're 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 they're, they're fine. They're they're okay. They're not great. But like, if you had a two hundred million dollar like three hour fantasy epic, that like that, uh, and Lord of the Rings didn't exist, it would be it was like like it really it's still it's amazing that we can poo poo a movie that on a technical level is still mind blowing. But we're we're so inured to that now. We're just like but, I agree, I hundred percent agree. I just think yeah. It's but it does the most unforgivable thing, which is it takes the whole smog battle and does it over the credits of the third oh. movie. <laughs> that was kind of ridiculous. The only reason to watch the fucking Hobbit, besides the repetitive nature of everything we've already seen in Lord of the Rings, is to fucking have the smog fight and it doesn't happen. <laughs> yeah. That's I I've mean. never heard Corey get so fired up about a Lord of the Rings topic until right now. You've never heard me talk this about Lord, Lord of the Rings. Rings. This is the Hobbit. And okay, did you watch the cartoon? Because <sighs> yeah. I fucking love that cartoon. No, and, I didn't watch the or, cartoon. Lord of the Rings is the Hobbit. It's all one goddamn universe. They're all well, fucking short. Hugh, the Jackman, are long. Hugh Jackman can play but Wolverine like, in the Lord of the Ring universe. Years, years of like, and then, you know, and Gollum was great because, you know, in the Gollum. Lord of the, you Lord guys of are the nerds. Great job. They called him Gollum. 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 Whatever. <laughs> Gollum sounds like the guy that works at the marathon cast. Hillary, stab him. <laughs> Shank him. Just get him real quick. Wasn't well, in the movie he's smog, but in the awesome. cartoon he's smog. Wait, what now? Isn't isn't it in the movie he's smog or something, and in the yeah. cartoon he's smog? Mm-hmm. That's like hearing Raish versus Raz in, in <laughs> Batman Begins versus the animated oh, yeah. series. It's just so good, and then um, then you finally wait for the high, and then the, the first three Lord of the Rings movies are amazing, and then you're like so hyped up for don't don't go. Eh, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I and, forgot you could see on the screen. And then I was so excited for the Hobbit. And then and then fine. And then okay, Guillermo can't do it. Where Peter Jackson does it again. Fine, cool, whatever. But then they make it a three. And I'm sure that wasn't That's his choice. Long. I'm sure it was right. freaking line cinema or whatever. But it's just like, I'm oh, and they invent the character. I mean, like I I love Evangeline Lilly, but like literally invented a new character. And then all the 3D stuff was so unnecessary. Like the the, the the barrels and the, and then the butterfly. The I, I just I so here's continue going. I'm just gonna vent. So it's no, I, I was gonna say it, that's it, what we're here for. The real problem. <laughs> and then <laughs> you don't want to get me started. <laughs> or <do> you? <laughs> yes. I've never seen these movies, but I guess I need to watch them. I think we lost Corey the Grand. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're just gonna complain about it. I'm gonna get drunk. That's the, what the I do one, with my the life. one pod to rule them all. That's what you would call it. <laughs> oh fuck, Jack! I know you I can know. be a marketing I guy. A, I have a gift. You're a marketing guy. I like it. Yeah. Wait, what was yeah, it? So I can log out and log back. Okay. There he is, uh, Corey. So we... What were you gonna say? <laughs> I was gonna say the problem is, is that there's never a good experience with a prequel. It, 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 if you've got the movies that have already been made and they suddenly decide we're going to make a movie before that, they always have to do this side glance at the screen of like, hey, this thing that's coming up later on, hey, remember that part that shouldn't fucking matter now because it hasn't happened yet? But for you, the audience, we're going to show you, here's Indiana Jones trying to reach for his gun for the scene that doesn't fucking work in the context of a prequel movie, <laughs> but was great in the first movie. I really they, need to worry. I don't know about you guys. They don't fucking work. My friend doesn't like you. I don't like you. <laughs> By the way, the Death Star plans are over there. Right? <laughs> but I don't like you. <laughs> I love those guys. Prequels are dumb ideas. It's like 20 years later, and here's Han Solo as 19 with a guy who doesn't look or act like Han Solo. He did a... I mean, listen. That movie was fine in the context of the movie. Job. Impossible job. I, I thought he made, a val- he made a valiant effort. I don't blame the actor. I blame the people who said, let's make this fucking let's film. Let's make a movie without Harrison Ford. Right. <laughs> or like, let's just CGI Harrison Ford. Mm. I'm trying to think of a pre- I'm trying to think Ford. of a 
it's I mean, just, this good dude had, uh, Arnold in Terminator 4. Foundation, yeah. I just watched that oh, the other yeah. night. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. You could have done so much better I, with your night. I know. I haven't seen it since the theater, and I, I hated it. And uh, You I liked should have left it that way. No, I liked it more this time. I didn't hate it when I, it grew I on me. saw it in the theater. I don't, I didn't like it. I'm an Arnold Schwarzenegger purist. Mm. So how was Genesis? I liked it. No, I, didn't see it. Uh, I haven't seen it since the theater. Oh my god! Right, fucking though, right? Felix and Oscar over here. I hated it. <laughs> no, I, I didn't hate it. I I liked what Genesis does because in the context of Terminator, it actually is funny that they can do that. They can re fuck yeah. with the history. That is yeah. the whole point of those films. The storyline works. There's, I like the time travel. The continuity actually is pretty sound in the in the Terminator universe. Um, well, I did like um. Uh, I'm, this is going to be. Uh-oh. I don't know what I'm walking into. Nope. I like nope, Rogue good. One. I gotta go. <laughs> I, I I didn't I've like. I've never it seen it. I first saw it and I like it a lot now. It's I great. really it's really really like. It grows it. on they me. They did a great job with. I like Rogue One as well. Yeah. All right, peace, peace. My friend doesn't like you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to like. And I just had to throw that. I'm trying to think of a prequel I like. Uh, I, mean, I mean, I guess Rogue One fits the bill. Yeah. Um, Rogue One works because, again, it's not about the characters from the films that we already know. It's about this whole well, side I story. I enjoyed the Young Indiana Jones Chronicles. <laughs> did, did anyone watch of, that? We did a night. Nice yes. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yep. I'm trying to think of a prequel I like better than the original. That came out after the original. I mean, Godfather 2, but I like Godfather 1 better. But a lot of people would say Godfather 2. Interesting. Two. Wow. Okay. Actually, my favorite Master is... Claims, so Beatmaster claims that the Cube prequel, Cube Zero, is pretty good. That, that happens two once in a while. No, that's Corey. Good, because I didn't know what to do to stop. <laughs> no, I, yeah. I just started fumbling I with these knobs as if that would do anything. <laughs> I just panicked. <laughs> that would be me on a plane. Like the pilot, like has a heart attack and dies, and I was just like, oh, you know, and then <laughs> that's what I would do until I die. Jack, did I ever tell you about the time a girl passed out in front of me? <laughs> well, oh God, that's it's happened to me. That's terrible. Wait, what? When people pass and out, and I literally just was like. Wow. Oh. Uh, and yeah. I just like slumped yeah. back into the crowd. I was like, "Fuck this!" Yeah, no, it scares the shit. Told out my of wife me. never to pass out because she's dead. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I will abandon you in the Please woods if you pass die. out in front of me. After Corey makes the most god awful sound, he comes back just to a chuckle while slamming his his crystal Pepsi on his podium. <laughs> Man, at least like if she passes out, at least turn the stove off if she's cooking potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> it was the microwave, and those things turn themselves off. <laughs> I just wanted to sing a sack of potatoes song. Oh god, <laughs> that one got cut from uh, from Alien the, the book. Yeah, needless to say, we don't have the potato sack anymore. Um. Oh, yeah, guys. Uh, what do you guys think of the scene uh, where she m- meets the other seven? Oh, did you look at clones? your notes? Yeah, I'm looking at my notes now. <laughs> so what much is, more thorough. Yeah, I was so subtle with it too. Uh, what did the, you guys? The clone room. It's not like chicken scratch. <laughs> Uh, the clone Fire. room, the uh, the original seven. Cl- yeah, she finds that that they. That was uh, gross. Yeah, man. yeah. Talk about an orgy scene, but it was. They also all look like the Elephant Man, and it made me sad. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> oh, starring uh, John Hurt, the original. Hey, yeah. At, yeah. At, oh. And he's and he plays himself well, in the Spaceballs. Look, we do that again. So. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Um, uh, the the clone scene. Yeah, it's uh, it's body horror. Like it was so cool to have a different genre, subgenre of horror in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was horror cool. Franchise. Because I, I, this kind of felt more horror film than any of them. No. Maybe the first. The first, first one's one. probably. Third, I'd say the third's more horror than. The third one's. I know. Sorry. It doesn't count. <laughs> Sorry. There's only... It was cool, though. No, that seemed really cool. And she did a great job. That was some prime acting. It's great. Did you like it, Matt? <laughs> it just made me eh. Eh. <laughs> Oh, and then that one at the end that like, kill me. Oh, eh. yeah. Did well? Have you did you it like the, clone, did you like the clone scene? It was a waste because they were gonna blow up anyway. Fucking waste of ammo. Wait, was it waste of fucking ammo? Anyway, did you <laughs> Matt? Did you like the clone scene? I mean, I didn't. Dis- There's nothing about this movie I didn't dislike. Yeah. There's yeah, nothing that I was like, this is fucking awesome. Other Here's than why, the Orlock reference, I want to know everybody why, what everybody thinks about the clone scene. Uh, South Park did an, abs- uh, an entire scene parodying it. It was such a like. It's, really, like, I know Alien Resurrection was a big Hollywood movie, so it's not an obscure reference, but it is like for pop culture, it's yeah. kind of obscure. And it's in the original Towley episode, and it yeah. is one of the funniest fucking really? scenes I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, Towley discovers like the uh, first attempts at Towley. Do you know who Towley is from South Park? 
I never really watched it. Um, all right, uh, Hillary, we're gonna need you to leave. No, 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 no. <laughs> my, no, no, no. I love The Simpsons. My dad loves South Park. I've just never, yeah, I don't know why. I just never, uh, I don't blame you. Well, anyway, the tally scene, I encourage you listeners and you guys after the show to check it out. It is so fucking funny. And there's a, like a big mutated towel. Like it's a bath. It's a talking. It's a talking bath. That's funny. Uh, beach I mean, towel. I figured. Yeah. What we're going to do, everyone, if you're watching this live, go watch it now. We'll wait. Mm-hmm. We'll just and uh, and, he, and the, yeah, it's got this big mutated beach towel. He's like, kill me. Kill Aww. me. It's so, it's so stupid. Ugh. But they, they recreate the other clones in the background. It's, it was That's a very cool. faithful adaptation. It's That's like the cool. Spaceballs uh, spoof. It's very faithful. Mm-hmm. I love Spaceballs. Our next dog's name is going to be Barf. Oh, that's Aww. amazing. Aww. Jesus. <laughs> May he rest in peace. Yeah. Like that to happen. I, I was like going to name my next dog DeJour Delioche from uh, what was the, uh, Who's Harry Crumb? <laughs> <laughs> I I, uh, I don't know when I'll ever get a dog again, but I always wanted to get, this is a very deep Star Trek uh, nerdy thing, but I really do want to get a Scotty and name him uh, Jordy LaForge because they're ah. the, end of the Enterprise. <laughs> it's really corny. <laughs> I know. And just live up to it. You're gonna blind him. <laughs> You're just gonna immediately oh I'm gonna blind him and give him a visor. Yeah. Aww. <laughs> I'm gonna get the I'm gonna get the dog that started in dog roots. Don't even feel bad for the dog <laughs> yeah, because no. you put him on Instagram, everybody's gonna love your little blind Scotty dog. They're gonna think that's the greatest thing in the world. You're gonna get so many hits from that. If, oh, if, well my dogs, yeah, if my dogs were alive when Instagram was a thing, well, I guess they were. If they were alive when I knew how to use Instagram, <laughs> uh, they uh, I, they would have done well for themselves. They would have had their own account. Rock Rock had fans. He had some Aww. fans. I like the dog in Alien Three. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> so sad. And Jonesy, Jonesy, wait, did Jonesy live? I guess Jonesy didn't live. Uh, the cat. Well, the it cat. dies of old age. She leaves it on the Earth space station. Before okay. she leaves for with the space marines, oh, okay. remember the opening of Aliens is her waking up from her cryo sleep right. uh, in, uh, in Earth orbit. Right. So the cat's fine. Okay. Can yeah. you imagine though that if Aliens Five, Joss Whedon had that cat wake up from cryo sleep <laughs> on Earth? Just, I would fucking it, love that. It turns into the episode of Futurama with uh, the dog. <laughs> yes. Oh my god. Wait, am I allowed to say? The F word? No. What fuck yeah, you can. Fuck, 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 fuck. I made like <laughs> ten references to masturbation on this show already. Sure, I know. I did say this was rated R. I didn't know mm-hmm. what F word you were talking about. Okay. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> she was about to go on like an anti LGBT. Fun, kids. Rant. It's fun. I thought it was finger, but okay. Oh. Hey, nice. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, you, them. you can do, Amazon Prime. Did you just want to say it or the F word? Oh no, I just said it, and oh. then I was just like. Oh, I thought she was talking about hipster bands. She was talking about <laughs> when. Um, let me see. I had some other notes. Yes, I don't know about the tally. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Ba, 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 ba. I think we covered. Oh, I like the. So we talked about how it's a different director and it's a different movie every time. I like that up and bu- bu- up until Alien vs Predator, where mm-hmm. they break the streak. Mm-hmm. They had like good, competent directors. Uh, like they're all movies. They're all directors who are famous for other movies they had done besides that. So like Ridley Scott's obviously done some really amazing movies. Uh, James mm-hmm. Cameron is James Cameron. David Fincher, that was his first movie. He became. Yeah, I didn't yeah. realize that until I rewatched. Like, these are all Oscar caliber directors. Uh, Jean. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Pierre uh, Junet did Amelie mm-hmm. and did the uh, World War One film with Audrey Tattoo. But Amelie was after this, right? Yeah, he yeah. did. He did some sci-fi movies before you this. Can see, uh, the kid had potential. He had potential. <laughs> Get that French kid I'm over talking here. Talking like Dan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The guys, the guys from Five Hundred Years in the Future. He has a bronze. Still accent. talking like this. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm from I'm from fucking Uranus. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she put his lines down. <laughs> that, that, that's obviously my spirit animal. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Mine's Ron Pullman. <laughs> we have the cool. We have the same shoulder hair. <laughs> Did we mention the guy who was the leader of the Space Pirates who played Rochefort in the Three Musketeers movie? And I oh, think that's was, right. And he was in Robin and Hood, he, Prince of Thieves. He's well, in a bunch of stuff. Yes. Who's he in Robin Hood? I he, I think he works for the sheriff, but he's not the actual sheriff. Yeah. He's like some other. Yeah, he's but, like Alan Rickman's assistant or something. <laughs> yeah, he's really close to just being the next incarnation yeah, of the Eleven Fingered Man. He's just in a bunch of things, but that's well, yeah, those two. Yeah, yeah he's also the bad guy in uh, the Twenty Four miniseries Live Another Day. Yeah, he's never a good guy. It's not like you look at this yeah. guy and think, oh, he's that's mm-hmm. pleasant. I want to leave my kids with him. I mean, he looks pleasant, but yeah, right. Yeah. Very sexy voice, mm-hmm. and and he's not a bad guy in this. He's obviously he's totally in his relationship um, with his pilot, <laughs> which is 
his monogamous relationship. <laughs> <laughs> but still, I mean, it's yeah, no, as no, far no. as these. Inc- uh, granted, she's one of two women on his ship. Uh, yeah, it could have been casual. One and a half. Yeah. <laughs> no, but he was no. He was a he was a nice guy. People seem to Jack. I'm him. supposed to ask you about Brad Dourif. Brad Dourif. Oh, yeah. We, uh, Dorf. We, oh. We, uh, oh, hey, we were talking about the rest. Uh, yeah, well, we, there was a, the, the cast. We were so, talking about the cast. There's a, there was a few others, but I think we covered most of them. I didn't but, realize he was going to come back at the end, too. I didn't. I kept my mouth nice. shut. Thank yeah, you. I Thank you for that. My poker face. I had a lot of questions. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> she's like, she's dead? like, she's no. like is, yeah, is she dead? I was like, watch the movie. You'll find <laughs> I, out. I like my mom. My mom would watch movies. <laughs> like five seconds. She's like, who's that? Why is he here? And I'm like, I don't know. I haven't seen this movie either. What spaceship is this? Where's it going? Well, we haven't now done any of the child's play movies. movies right? You're like, oh, do you know he's in this movie too? And you're like, okay, <laughs> let's watch the movie. Then you'll Matt, have we, Matt, have we done any of the child's play films? Didn't you do Seed of Chucky no. or one of those? Um, fuck. Let me check my list. Which I ever ever of me. Them. Oh, they're good. I it's remember good going series. to Blockbuster Video when I was little and being like, ooh, I can't watch that one. They're very simple, but they're good. I've seen like parts of them. Um, Brad Dorff's amazing. Yeah. I just watched his so arc good. on Star Trek Voyager, and he is just a fucking like awesome actor. So good. Um, we have, we have not done any Child's Play movies. Oh. Hey, I haven't seen any. Yeah, you're gonna catch yeah. up. To- <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. Three is my favorite. <laughs> three is the three is the most fun. That's the camp with uh, yeah. uh, Tim Whalen, who starred as uh, Jimmy. All I remember is that they oh, replace yeah. paintball real- like the paint bullets with real bullets. Oh my god, it's brutal. Yeah. No, maybe it was a hawk. And the nerd jumps on a grenade, takes takes one for the team. Uh, Brian, and Not then that, a euphemism that was, for a fat chick. That, <laughs> that was the uh, that was the last uh, horror film because then Bride of Chucky was when it started becoming a comedy. Another comedy and then film. they did some stuff with trans and like this was in it, right? in the fourth one. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry, Corey. They did some stuff with trans characters and stuff with uh, the seed of Chucky, or when they had the kid. The kid starts out as I think it's like a Glenn Glenda situation, if I remember. Yeah, I've never actually a, seen it. It's an homage to Glenn or Glenda. Oh, yeah. have but you it is. Another person from Lord of the Rings. Uh, yeah, oh. the, uh, the not the not the one from Lost. Pippin. Yeah. Oh, Pippin. Mm. Um, have you guys seen yeah. Sleepaway Camp? Yes. This eight. Oh God, it's. I've never seen it. It's you, because it's, I have a feeling it'll first, come up on like, here. Jason, like Friday, one of the. First, no, well, no, oh. it's one. Of, right? It's a comedy. No, 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 no. It's a horror movie in the eighties, and. It's, it's, it gets sillier in the sequels. The sequels, the yeah. main actress disappears, but is replaced yeah. by Bruce Springsteen's sister. Uh, or, or the character. The actress <laughs> playing the character is actually in real life Bruce Springsteen's sister. Oh. Uh, and, and it just gets really super hokey. But the first one is, as you're trying to find out who the killer is and stuff like that, the reveal at the end is yeah. incredible. And yeah. it's one of those movies that you have to yeah. see Without hearing too much about it going in, yeah, yep. Like I would feel bad yeah, doing the okay. show. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. have you? You haven't covered it on the show, have you? No, I don't think Matt's seen it. Hey, uh. interesting. He, yeah, well, I mean, yeah, he, sorry, you know, I haven't seen it. There's this wait, and if you guys covered that, um, it was Tom Hanks's first movie that's like credited as being like the first slasher film that takes place on Staten Island, Castaway, Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, guys, Jack's is better. <laughs> I thought his first movie was that Mazes and Monsters one that was like a and d game that gone wrong. Oh my god, that scarred me when I was a child. I was like so... That was really depressing. Oh, I haven't seen it. Right? Isn't he... What, what's wrong? He's like... He has AIDS? Has anyone seen it? <laughs> that's, <laughs> Guys. that's Philadelphia, Matt. No, he's exactly. like... Exactly, that's what I'm saying. It's just... Oh, it's like a sad movie. From Earth to the Moon? No, 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 it's like, I think it's like Bride. Something, Toy Story 2? Something about a wedding. Hold on. I'm gonna... Band of Brothers? <laughs> <laughs> just... All right, hold on. Splash? Yeah, so upset right now. Well, uh, I don't know it either. I don't, I'm trying to think of what I'm his surprised. earliest film is. All right, hold on. And it said, it's right. like, said it takes place on Staten Island? Well, he said he's not a, he's not the lead. It's like literally his first film. He well, I just remember him playing Alex B. Keaton's Uncle on. It's like one of his, hold on. The I'm Love gonna... Boat? Yes, it was a love boat. It was IMDb, and no one's telling me no. It was the so. same plot as Triangle. It was. Just... Should we ask? Alexa? Yeah, 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 yeah. He knows oh, you're yeah. alone, yeah. Hillary. <sighs> She's not listening. Typical woman. Wait, what? <laughs> he knows wow. you're alone. It's a young bride to be is stalked upon by a serial killer. Yes, he knows you're alone. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
guy said it three goddamn times. Alexa. Yes, his first movie, because the first credit before that is The Love Boat. And this is before Mace is a Monster. And then so. he went nowhere, <laughs> disappeared. But yeah. Tragic. Dumb, dumb, dumb. I just think of Mason Monsters being his movie where he's actually the lead in it. But oh uh, yeah, yeah, that's fair. Wait, fine. Okay, so bound together by a desire to play mazes and monsters, Robbie and his three college classmates decide to move the board game into a local legendary cavern. Uh, mm. It's it's so sad though, guys. Don't watch he it. Probably had a probably had a level 12, 12 wizard. What was the chick tracks or something like that? The little comics that used to be given out by that weird church that would do a comic about how I did. Huh. Yeah. marijuana and became possessed by the the devil mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. they did ones about dungeons and dragons i played dungeons and dragons and became possessed by the devil uh they did a movie based off of it actually uh, not too long ago the dead gentleman uh, movies <laughs> did one based off of that um whole thing of like i i played dungeons and dragons and i got too obsessed with my character dying and so i I lost my soul and, and went to black magic and stuff to bring it back. <laughs> that should have been the Warcraft movie instead of the, the bullshit like generic. Anything book. should have been the Warcraft movie more than the actual Warcraft movie was. <laughs> Did you guys all see that? I started watching on HBO. I couldn't get through 15 minutes. I was like tempted yeah. when, when things come on HBO. Yeah, I'm, 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 yeah, watch it. It made me long for watching Final Fantasy The Spirits Within. It was like, wow, this is so bad. I want to go back and watch that other really bad movie based off a of video game that has nothing to do with the video game at all. Well, she loves Super Mario Brothers, so she, yeah, might, she might like Warcraft. I, Hillary, I, what I, do you I, love? I like the Mario Brothers movie. And Jack, what does she love? She loves the Mario Brothers movie. <laughs> okay, Hillary, what do you like? Oh, tomato. Gollum. <laughs> no, how do you no, say no, no, no. I, I just you wanted to hear Mario. both of you say Mario. Because right now I think Jack is in the. I said Mario. Oh. Exactly. Oh. So in the Mario majority. Jack, you're wrong. I figured you might have been close enough to New York, but like Mario. That's only, I guess it's a New York thing. But he's from Brooklyn, so that's how he says it. If you watch, if you watch the cartoon, it says Mario. I'm sure he does Mario like that. Yeah. Yeah, but that. Well, like it's three against one right now. The guy's so. been hit yeah, a bunch yeah. of head. Well, let's talk like this. The rest of the podcast. That guy's been hit the head by a bunch of chairs at wrestling matches, though. That doesn't work. You can't use that as your your line of like this. This excuses my pronunciation no, of the name. No, I mean the voice of the cart. Captain Lou Albano thought he was still in a Cindy Lauper video, and is like, "Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna dance around, kids." <laughs> I love all the different iterations of Mario. Like it's. But the then same is it because I always thought like Wario. It's not Wario, right? Yeah, I it's mean, Wario. But also, like, You're wrong. Yeah, but also, Am I wrong? Is it Wario? No, no, no I believe it's Wario. Also, Waluigi is Waluigi. He's not seven Uigi. So <laughs> there's no wait, logic. Wait, wait. What? Well, Wario is an M turned upside down to a W. So mm -hmm. Waluigi should be Luigi with oh, an L turned seven. upside down. So he should yeah, be seven Uigi. Seven Uigi. And played by Dan Hedaya. <laughs> 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 seven Uigi would be the perfect like 80s soda reference of like never had it never will i was like well, what do you want my water this was like the, and we, just, we, just recreated, like we just recreated we just we just recreated the scene from the opening of alien resurrection where they had to teach ripley what water was it's just, water <laughs> cup <laughs> pass thirsty i always got made fun of saying water because I, I i don't say water i say water yeah that's a new york that's a new water york thing. yeah water. what's wrong with what's on water mm -hmm. Drop, right, water. The R. I don't know. When do you, I was a little kid, so it made fun of me. Water. That's how you. How do you say button? Water. Button. 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 Who's got the button? Okay. button. Yeah, like, like I know people who go button. Like it's wolf. a fucking button, man. Like you don't why say. You... Okay, I don't like when people say wolf. Uh, woof. Wolf. Oh yeah, that's a. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a, I've that's got a friend. Thing. That's a Michigan thing. That's a Michigan thing. Yeah, I, I think it is. Friend... Thing, but... no, I've got a friend from California that says woof without an L, and he says dwarf instead of dwarf. Uh, and when I did, we did 24 hour comic, comic book day a few years ago. And so we, one of the characters in it is a, a young female werewolf and we call her Wolfie, but I always have his character call her Woofie because it's just, it's perfect towards what the, the thing is. I, I like those speech things. I like those little, because that's what makes a script fun is it gives oh, yeah. the characters personality on the page and you can bring that across to whatever it is, whatever medium putting it into later on. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, that's how we know Corey is a T one thousand. The dog's name is actually Max. <laughs> <laughs> Dumbass. We had we had the the actress who 
Oh man, that's that's too much of a stretch. Um, huh? From so, aliens? No. Um, so Wolfie is fine. Oh yeah, yeah. The, yeah. the guy from uh, Taco from the League, the yeah. Abyss. Wait, what? Oh wait, are we talking about different actors? What's going on? No, no. no. no we're, so we're John, talking- John La Jolla, Taco, who in the League? Mm-hmm. He's in a band. It's a folk band called Wolfie's Just Fine. Oh. I wrote a song called A New Beginning, and it is about Tina from Friday the 13th 5, who you played by Deborah Voorhees. Deborah Voorhees was on our show a couple of weeks ago. That was a great show, by the way. Thank and then you. on our show next week, Kevin Bacon. Wow. Don't worry. Just a word of advice, guys. When, when, uh, when you have Kevin Bacon, for the sake of his career, don't badmouth SAG after on the air. <laughs> <laughs> As soon as he comes out, I'm gonna be like, "So, uh, sag after, right? Am I right?" <laughs> I just like the implication that we could be the ones could break Kevin Bacon's career <laughs> at this point. <laughs> He's shit now. <laughs> um, Fuck. I'm gonna proceed in a little movie convo here. Little, little do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I want to know uh, what you guys thought about Call, Winona Ryder. Because I thought it was a really cool twist that she turns out to be a robot because that's an homage to the first movie where you find out Ash is a twist. And, and I guess Bishop, but Bishop you find out pretty early. But like, it, it, you know, when you watch the first Alien, you don't know that Ash is a, you know. Yeah. You know, that, I, that, was a, that was a genuine surprise for me. It was good because it gave a context to what happened to those uh, artificial humans as it went along. We get to find out now, however many years later, what the status of them because we know that they had a bunch of fuck ups and that's what led to Ash in the first one and then we know that they were supposed to improve with the time we get to Bishop in the next one and they've gotten more accepted but yeah it makes sense that there would be a machine uprising which is maybe a little bit Terminator um, mm-hmm. because then they just blended in the humans I like the moment where she says we all burned our modems um, like that's how they all got out of being tracked and stuff I thought that was really cool they turned uh, off location services yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, I'm sorry. We we all ran on CompuServe. We don't work anymore. So. <laughs> well, it just makes you wonder what he's going to do for the, the next Alien movies with yeah, Michael just, Fassbender. Just making him the same. And what if he's maybe gay and plays basketball? <laughs> Let's give him a hoodie. Because I think. Let's give him a hoodie. I, I think I did read that it's going to be two more that'll bring us up to the original Alien. Two more films. I, I heard that there was a Prometheus three and four, which would get you to aliens. Yeah, the, fast yeah. bender, the fast bender quadrilogy. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. No. And there was other, like this movie really was homages to the first three. I would even yeah. say three because alien three is also kind of an artsy fartsy movie. And this has some artsy fartsy mm-hmm. shots and you know, like uh, James Cameron wouldn't have had all the weird like sexual stuff in it. You it's even more said fartsy there, than artsy. There really is no sexual tension in, even with uh, Hicks. In the, I know. I mean, yeah. I had a lot of sexual tension. <laughs> <laughs> with, 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 with Michael Bean. With Michael Bean. When I was like me. 15. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, I liked, I yeah, like it, the first two. Well, and she's almost, she's kind of a, androgynous. Mm-hmm. And then in the second movie, yeah, you can obviously, they maybe it's love. That's why it's not so sexual. <laughs> they really care for each other and there's affection there. But yeah, there's like, something and i like how they kind of hint at it and that's why you're so disappointed when he freaking dies because you're like no i want to see you guys Spo- again spoiler battle. alert for matt oh sorry <laughs> well, I, I think hicks no. it's, it, he respects yeah. her because of how yeah. hard she fights yes. the whole way yes perfect man <laughs> yeah i mean because he's part of a, a military team and he obviously they all respect vasquez they they respect the, the t- they somehow put up with hudson but they <laughs> being a team and everything and everybody else in this movie is so hard ass on his team and they all die and she survives and she survives while fighting to protect other people. And she's also the person that they should have listened to all the time. And he's the first one who's like, yeah, we fucking listen to her. She knows what the fuck she's talking about. Smart man. And, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and that, it, it, I don't know if it necessarily would have become roman- romantic or not, but in space, no one can hear you scream. So that's good. Well, if you don't if you don't like Alien Three and you don't and we well, don't know what the Neil Neil Blomkamp sequel is, there is another sequel 
to aliens mm -hmm. uh that because a lot of people hate alien 3 and it's the aliens video game that was in pre-production hell for 10 years oh i think it finally it was supposed to be a triple a it was supposed to be like the red dead redemption 2 of like uh -huh. five years ago came out uh finally after development hell it was it's okay it's the it, it's it because it was a 10 year old game and looked like a 10 year old game mm -hmm. it was a fine it was a fun game but the cut scenes are canon or not like movie canon but they they uh people say that that is a the sequel to Aliens, and it's the same voice cast. So, it, and it looks, it's an animated Michael nice. Bean, and it's an animated mm. Bishop. <laughs> and I think it is Lance Hendrickson, or uh, maybe it's my, my, my Michael Bean. It's one of the two, maybe both, but there's other characters too, and it is a sequel to Aliens. Yeah, I think it's like, the, yeah. it's like the Ghostbusters video game that came out for the PlayStation yeah, 3. Yeah. It's Ghostbusters 3, based on their, uh, their Ghostbusters oh. 3 script that they wrote years ago. Uh, and that's, yeah, that, and it's great. And the com I think the Alien comics go really deep. Like, the robot uprising, like this whole larger world. Yeah, I world. did. I googled a little bit, and it was like aliens or um, Ripley's daughter or something. Yeah, Ripley's daughter was supposed to be Amanda? the star <laughs> of. I think I read that right. Maybe the Neil Blomkamp movie. If, uh, yeah, they they did talk about her character. Yeah. Oh no no yeah. Oh, what was it? Maybe it's the game, but um, the the expanded the expanded universe also has like the predators and stuff. So th there is a lot of meat there and mm -hmm. like other backstory and it just sucks that every time they make another 200 million dollar movie it's just the same fucking movie like yeah. there's so much else to do yeah even the predator movies like i didn't see this latest one god but the one it's they made right. with adrian brody like the latest one was not good in my opinion. yeah no i i was like kind of pumped to see it and then i i was like no. i liked predator nope. i like um maybe if they made crazy rich predators i'd see that <laughs> I, would, I would say that that was a really good movie. I love that movie. It was the wedding scene. Mm -hmm. Wait, wait, wait. That's like you that's like Crazy Rich Asians? Yes. Yes. I did I have I know nothing about it other than that I saw the preview and I was like, this looks stupid. Oh, it it's, was, it's one it's of the so best good. like modern romantic yeah, comedies. It's really good. Put that on the list. You have to bring your wife. It's a date movie. Well, and that's the thing. It's I'm not gonna watch it alone. <laughs> Sit on my couch with a real strange boner watching that. Romantic comedies alone. What's wrong with that? <laughs> I'm watch Ghost every night. Is that weird? <laughs> I watched um, what was that Matthew McConaughey movie, Ghost of Girlfriends Past? I watched it on HBO the other day. Oh, that was a fun day. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was fun. It's all right. Um, yeah, no, Crazy Rich Asians was awesome. Yeah, it's really good. You should you should watch it. The uh, xenomorph spit in this movie. Uh, they spit acid like like a Dilophosaurus. Um, yeah, that was a little Jurassic Park. I think they yeah. might do that in AVP, but I don't think they did it in previous films. So I just thought that was interesting. Maybe it was part of the human DNA since they were like one percent human. Maybe they, they like hawk lugs. Like that was like they give they have the human reproductive system and they also oh, hawk wait, wait. So okay, explain the alien, to me. The, so the alien started yeah. out and then it evolved. Yeah. Okay. Now, I it, cloned you. Right. You had a alien in you. Mm -hmm. So when I get the DNA, it's all kind of mixed together and it took me eight tries to separate them. We didn't really separate them 100%. Mm -hmm, Ripley's got mm -hmm. the nails, the fingernails, <laughs> and the hands of blood. And the aliens have this like, uh, like recessive gene that evolves into a human reproductive uh, system. But also, they're a little smarter. They know how to use mm -hmm, the button. Mm -hmm. um, uh, right. They have the monkey brains. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, uh, they, maybe that's how they spit. Got it. Uh, that's got just it. a theory. That's headcanon. Oh, and then like gross. And then let's talk. Can we talk about the hybrid? Man. Because that's a that's also a cool twist. Because yeah, I really wasn't seeing that coming. Because yeah, the second all. one introduces the queen. We need to see something mm -hmm. we haven't seen before. Uh, Alien Three didn't really do that. It didn't even show. Like, ugh, I'm sorry. It just, cuts right to the big alien. Yeah, you don't I'm get any, you don't get any little guy. I'm not a fan. Um, but yeah, I'm sorry for anything, Hillary. Oh, thank you. <laughs> just saying that. Just throwing that out there. <laughs> Can I be? Can I? Can I have no regrets? Jack, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, sir. Sorry no, not. but you're right. We had not seen that before. I and I, honest to God, you I, didn't even watch it. What if you didn't see it? You had your eyes covered the, the entire time <laughs> that thing was on camera, except when it would do the puppy dog eyes. <laughs> it's gross. The, the dead rancor, like the, oh, I, the puppy wrong. Dead rancor. Uh, and then you were like, Carl looks like Sigourney Weaver. And I mean, I guess it, they probably <laughs> modeled it after her. Yeah, I didn't mean that as, as like derisive, um, like her bone structure. I just meant like the, the facial. No, no, I mean, that makes sense because of all the weird embryos or whatever. But yeah. And uh, it when, it, just, when it gets sucked out the airlock, oh, you probably, yeah, you may have missed this. Um, oh. The very last thing that gets sucked out is the, his face. 
uh-huh, and, like, I did it see pulls that. back the flesh. And, and for a second, it's a human skull. Yeah. And I thought that was very cool. Yeah. I thought that was really no, cool. No, it's cool. No, it's, of course, you know, I watch it. I just watch it between my. I mean, you watched Ron Perlberg for two hours. The thing wasn't much different. Yeah. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> no, it was, yeah, it was intense. Um, and I like that the, it's an homage to the original movies, uh, going, blowing it out the airlock, except more intense, oh, more yeah. 90s, more extreme, but it's still blowing it out the airlock. <laughs> I didn't think about that. Yeah. And she's a pilot 90s. again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I did like that. But this is the movie where they didn't credit H.R. Uh, Geiger for the alien. Uh, oh, really? You didn't even get like a residual? Uh, no. And, and that's the thing. He said he liked the movie, but it was a bummer because they didn't credit him. And it, wow. it's kind of bullshit because, yeah. It's, it's not like the original EM ideas weren't in this. Yeah, and it's the closest to his vision because he's all about that like weird animalistic sexual. Yeah. Like the, the reason Sigourney Weaver fell in love with that idea was based on his drawings and storyboards from the first film. Yeah. She's and interesting therapy sessions. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Probably. Mm-hmm. So you want a fucking alien. <laughs> Coming this season Nothing. to Fox. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's like great. And that's a good song. So you want a <laughs> fucking alien? Oh, so we're doing Book and Mormon style. <laughs> okay. um, Hillary, have you never listened to Guar? No. I'm assuming that's a no, but they have a song <laughs> called Fucking an Animal. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's, like, it's like their uh, I Want to Hold Your Hand. Yep. <laughs> Pretty much. I want a fucking animal. Wow. It's, I want to hold your hamster. And, oh, God, and fuck oh. it. The, next, the next line is not good. So... Can we tweet it? Can we tweet? Can Podcast Terra tweet yep. at uh, at Guard later tonight saying we have a song, <laughs> new song for you? <laughs> I want to hold your hamster. And fuck it. Right oh and ask them if we could have rights to use it in our musical. <laughs> yeah. cool. Can you imagine Alien the Musical? Book by Hillary Mann. Song. Music and lyrics by Guard. <laughs> <laughs> it will be a smash hit. It will Listen, be in all of the toys. They just did King Kong, so I mean, I, I want to see that the big puppet. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> the gorilla puppet. But no, I'm, I'm, starting it's amazing. To, I'm starting to get really jazzed by this idea. Yeah, we should totally do it. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Get on the list now because fucking Gremlins three. We've been waiting for two years. Yeah, no, I'm sorry, that Jack. I'm supposed, <laughs> what to, is- I'm supposed to do a Gremlins three podcast. I love that. I know. I'm very bad at what I do. I'm supposed to do a Simpsons podcast. <laughs> <Get it. laughs> oh, fuck that. No one gives a shit about the Simpsons anymore. Have you watched a recent Simpsons episode? No, we don't watch no. them. Out of principle. Don't. Don't waste your time. I have a new... But I want to watch them. I, I haven't know. watched any. Probably. Mm-hmm. Don't. Like eight or something. Don't do this. I have a new... I have a new threshold with TV, mostly with cartoons. If you start singing, I turn you off. We've been singing the whole time. No, 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 yeah, no, and that's ridiculous because Bob's Burgers sings all the time, and it's and terrific. I turn them all off. What's wrong about what's so wrong? wrong? You're a musician. You're it, in a I, band. I hate, I hate. He's not in a band with a singer, though. You don't like Family yeah. Guy, right? Yeah. Um, I I watch Family Guy, but if they start singing, I turn it off. Well, I don't know how you make it through any episodes because they'll just put in a song to piss you off, and then I turn it off. <laughs> how do you make it through Bob's commercials? Burgers. Um, nobody bakes like commercials. Yeah. Jack, this is the white man's America. I don't watch commercials. Oh my God, I don't even know what that means. I'm not even going to try to break that down. Me either. <laughs> I actually started, I stopped watching commercials for years after the DVR came out, and now I'm back on it again because now I'm doing like Hulu and YouTube TV, and I'm doing less DVR. So I'm actually oh, back to yeah. watching commercials again. And I watch them because I'm like, oh, that bitch got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she, she had this for a while. Sorry. Oh, one of the redhead, huh? <laughs> I love a quality commercial. I like seeing something that actually pulls me into it, and I get excited for good ads. You know, it, yeah. it can be yeah. funny, I, it can be touching, it can do a lot of different things. But I at least like commercials that give a shit. I don't want to see a hundred billion commercials about the general insurance uh, well, because it's right. all crap. But a lot of commercials have the capability of being quite fun. They are trying to sell you something, so at least put a fucking effort into it. Exactly. Mm-hmm, exactly. Mm-hmm. You know who you would be good as? Mayhem. The Mayhem guy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know him, actually, you, and he's awesome. Really? He's, 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 awesome. Yeah, he's lovely. He's, he's great lovely. In rescue me. Yeah. Great Do you actor. know him, like, personally? Yeah. She's a New York actress. They all, they all, there's this union called SAG After you're not supposed to talk <laughs> shit about in public. No, um, we believe you. <laughs> Hillary, if you want to come back and bring Mayhem, just. <laughs> Oh my God, Please leave Jack at home. 
He is clearly <laughs> unable to be on the show at this point. We've gotten too big for him. I'm kidding, James. No, no, this is I'll perfect. Send you this photos is like, later. We'll, we'll this, is, this is the social. Yeah, this is no. me. This I'm at the Alec Baldwin stage where I'm punching people in the street over parking lots, and nobody <laughs> likes me anymore. Hey, and he's married to a Hilaria. Is that her Ooh. name? Yeah, I know. I know. I know. Alec Baldwin's wife is named Hilaria. And she's probably younger than me. Yeah, I mean, definitely younger than me. <laughs> um, yeah, I know it's weird. Hillary. Are we, are we going to play the how old are you game now? No, we're not. I'm going to look up how old Hilaria is then. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell me how old you think I look like. Yeah. <laughs> I like she, that she loves that. Game. You don't look anything like how old you are. I'll tell you that much right now. Cause I'm guessing... <laughs> because, because his eyes literally, his jaw hit the floor when he realized <laughs> that you're older than me. Because I look like a grizzled old, just like dying. Yes. I'm guessing you're older than me and you look much younger than me. <laughs> how are you? You said you're 85. Yeah, I was, I'm 33. By the way, it, uh, I got something we can plug for Hillary, even though it's not that part of the show. But Hillary, uh, oh, played Fuck it, my, played, she played my wife in uh, the table read for the oh, past. Yeah. Uh, and Dan played my dad. That was, that was the high point of Jack's life right there. <laughs> it really it, that, it's the closest I've come to directing a feature. You know, that was so fun. We directed a table read and literally like. That's what uh, you told like, me I look like Julian Jacobs. Really? That yeah. was it? That was it? Mm hmm um and uh <laughs> doesn't she she looks oh, like I shook. <laughs> hillary I'm just kidding hillary no, has, got me watching community hillary is like first of all she's she obviously beautiful um but oh, she and she has Stop. a face she, and she yeah, just can never say that about me you fucking I said prick. Time. no that that thing before about christian bale how you look like him <laughs> 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 but anyway so Hillary is obviously very beautiful, uh, but she has a thing where she there's a bunch of different actresses, like famous actresses that you look like, and they but n none of them look the same. Yeah, I know. But, yeah, like, never right, like, like, yeah. What do you get? You get uh, oh, who's the I, 50s actress? People say that. You look like the one from Sex and the City. Um, Kim not the horse yeah. face. I don't Kim know who else was in that show. Uh, She's lovely too. Kim Kim, Kim Cattrall. Uh, and okay. uh, she looks. You look like that alien from Star Trek Voyager that I told <laughs> yeah. you about. That. <laughs> And she does. Yeah, I know. I get Which, if you're listening to this don't podcast, this is riveting information. <laughs> so you're saying she looks like two aliens from Star Trek because Kim Cattrall played a Vulcan. That's right. Oh, that's right. Good you know, job. some kid. Oh, bless his heart. I was. I probably he, he. This kid came up to me on the subway, and he told me I looked like. And he was young, so he must have just started watching Star Trek: Next Generation. But he told me I look like the Doctor. I, I told you that too. Yeah. And like, because I guess when I started watching it, she was like, she's well, probably the same age as now. Yeah, she, she but I old. was so like horrified. I was like, oh, like I felt so bad because no. he was like so excited. And I was like, I like shot him down. Yeah, no, it's, really it's the cheekbone. Did you say Star Trek Voyager? No, Star Trek Next. Star Trek Voyager, she looks like the alien. Well, the, the doctor in Star Trek Voyager is does not look like she doesn't look like the doctor from uh, from Star Trek Voyager, Robert Picard. I don't know. She she looks like uh, Doctor uh, the Crusher, Beverly Crusher, uh, who has long red hair. So you think it, of it okay. right it, yeah, it's, it's the same thing. I I I never watched a ton of Star Trek: Next Generation, so I word for it. you don't have to worry about it. Okay, which I'll doctor? Then. Jack, which doctor though? Are we talking about Crusher but, or are we talking about? Beverly Crush. No, no, uh, not the uh, who I like, but uh, and I and uh, she, she's also a pretty actress, but uh, it would be a disservice to say Hillary looks like a um, <laughs> Hillary looks like uh, Doctor Crusher. Yeah. Uh, I think. And oh, I, I think Kim Cattrall. I see that all the time, especially when yeah. I see, like the eighty, the her eighties movie. Um, yeah, I get that. But wait, wait, what were we? Talking? What was the start of this? Because there was a. You were time I don't even know what's happening anymore. We were reading. guessing your age. That's oh, right. yeah. I, yeah. I mean, I don't mind telling people. I don't know if I need to tell the whole world. No, that's okay. no just you could just flash it like a gang sign if you want. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, you no. should check out. You should check. I'll out let you movie. know. I'll email you. You should check out the past. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad we're on that level. Right. No, normally, I don't mind. I just it's not like out there. No, no, no. no. It, yeah, it, it, it's definitely not something that anyone need, really needs to give a shit about. I just. Sometimes I like that weird frame of reference, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Be just for whatever reason. Like at this point yeah. in my life, like I either dislike you or I don't dislike you. I mean, if you guys were millennials, I'd be like, see ya. Well, Corey's eighty-seven <laughs> years old, so he's the opposite of a millennial. 
Wait, I'm confused. I, did is I just that, lose a lot of is your Sia, fan is Sia what, is Sia John what, Cena? No, is, is, <laughs> is like Sia, is that like derogatory? Is that like what, what you, how you imagine all millennials? Is that your millennial stereotype? Sia! Oh, no, I thought she meant no, I think I was just like Sia. If you were, no, I have friends. <laughs> yeah, I thought she was talking about the singer. It just, yeah. You're a millennial. You're you. I'm not a millennial. 19? No. Yeah. Right. Nope. There's not gonna say it, but all right. But I'm not. <laughs> you're right on the cusp. But there's there's I'll, no. I'm in you're a generally considered. Nope. I'm yeah. not. No, I'm not. There is a micro generation. Have Look you never it. heard of the internet? Like, if I try hard enough, I can figure out how old you are. We're willennials. <laughs> you were you were what? Will you were either in high school or college when the willennium happened. You're a willennial. What yeah. what is the willennium? Is that when Will Smith got real big? It's a sub genre of millennials. And if you were coming of age, no, with, I'm in uh, a generation that is not Generation X, but identifies very much so with it. And it's just like a couple years that it, we are, and we're not Gen Y. Like, okay, so you're older than Jack. <laughs> you can't be much older than because Jack's got me by like six weeks. I'm I'm I'm. On the cusp too, but not as Actually, much. Actually, wait. How old are you? Jack is forty-seven. <laughs> I'm I'm on the cusp as well, but in in the window. Uh huh. Please, please I don't early say Jack's forty-seven like it's an insult because that's how old I actually am. <laughs> <laughs> and Jack, I think I, Jack is not forty-seven. I think Jack is. I will please don't say it man. like it's an insult. <laughs> yeah, it's not an insult. Let me protect Jack from calling him forty-seven. The, Let the, me. The, the bass player in my band is 47 and looks worse than Jack. Really, Listen, you said some bad things Sigourney to me Sigourney Weaver now. was 48. Yeah. And she had a sweet, Karen sweet caboose. Four, and yeah. she, yeah, she looked fucking fantastic. 48. No, oh, my God. Ugh. Sigourney Weaver, for me, has looked better and better the yeah. older she's gotten. Yeah. You, you look at Baby Mama. You look at Cabin in the Woods. That woman gets more beautiful yeah. all the time. No, I yeah. disagree. I think she peaked at the fetus. <laughs> <laughs> I think he was a sexy yeah, fetus, does. and, it was and you know, home. more parts for older yeah. women in yeah. I'm older women, like women in. Stop Hollywood. saying it like that, Corey's right there. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, you know what I mean, like, yeah, yeah. No. Freaking, she was she was awesome in the Defenders. She's part of the MCU. Yeah, she was, she was a super villain. She's wait, what's she the was, Defenders? She, that's uh, Jessica Jones, Daredevil, Luke Cage, and Iron Fist. That was up. on Netflix. It's on Netflix. Okay. I got. Wait, is this the second season of Jessica Jones is out, right? Yep. I haven't watched that yet. Yep. I like the first season. The first season is the best out of any of the, okay. the seasons. And then I I made it through two seasons of Daredevil. I haven't watched the third. Right. Third season is actually really good of Daredevil. Okay. Where it Did missed depth in the second one. Come back? Who? What's that? Nafrio come back in the yeah, third season? Yeah, and he's season? amazing. Okay, I figured. He takes front, yeah. That's what the stage. second one needed. He takes center stage. It's great. And let's see. Uh... Luke Cage. I haven't watched any Luke Punisher, Cage. Punisher, Iron Fist. I wanted to watch The Punisher, but I haven't watched it yet. It's right. so much time. It's, it's... Oh, I wanted to ask you guys. Yes. Because this is the podcast of terror, and I know we talked about it, but have you guys watched The Terror, the miniseries on AMC? You should do that. It's considering freaking considering your fantastic. Podcast of terror. And I will, listen, we will do a show on it. There are 10 episodes. I've watched the whole thing twice. It's amazing. I've never seen somebody so quickly take over another podcast. <laughs> no, it's it fun. It took That's me three it. years to get on 11 times. You've already just like, here's what we're doing. Here's the game plan. Well, it takes balls, Jack. And I'm sorry, but somebody had to fucking take control here. And I think she's the only one who will. We all know mine don't work. Next, <laughs> week, I want everybody to check out the Gremlins 3 podcast next week. So <laughs> <here> we <laughs> It's going to have a soundtrack going in. That's, a <laughs> That's true. Hey, Jack, we've been begging you to do Gremlins. Hillary shows up. She has a soundtrack. She's got a fucking plan. I used to have a, I used to have, I'm so, God, I got rid of it. I'm so mad. So when eBay first came out. Oh my God, you are old. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't that long ago. eBay was founded in 1927. No, someone, <laughs> someone told me about it and they were like, and I was like, what, what is this? I don't know. And then he was like, I don't know. Think about the one thing like you always wanted, but you never got. <laughs> and immediately I, I flashed back to you. <laughs> yeah, Olivia Newton-John. <laughs> no, I flash back to being in preschool and I really wanted oh, now I'm not gonna I am gonna eat myself. Um I really wanted a uh, um gizmo backpack. Wow. Like a little stuffed mm. gizmo as a backpack. So I go onto eBay 
type in Gizmo Backpack, and for thirty five dollars all the way from Japan, I got myself a little plush. That's so funny. Gizmo Backpack. That's how I discovered eBay. It was childhood nostalgia. <laughs> Me and Dan bought the t the uh, tour the Shuttle Zord from Power Rangers season two because we wanted to complete the Ultra Zord. We're like, wow, like, We're uh, just big nerds. Yeah, like well, you can't find that anywhere. But and then this guy awesome. was like, imagine a website where your heart's desire <laughs> could come true. <laughs> I got a lot of um, compliments on it. But then, yeah, and it just, it just, I had it around for so long and it got kind of musty. And Did you get it wet? Days. Did you feed it after midnight? Did you, <laughs> you put a book in it, it after midnight? <laughs> but it was so cute. And I went back on there to find another, I need to find another one that looks just like Who that. would have guessed the straight from Japan gizmo backpack was not going to hold up? <laughs> <laughs> the quality just wasn't there. No, actually, uh, it, no, it did. It did. He just had this little felt nose and it was, it was getting all velveteen rabbity. <laughs> Yeah. And then it was just kind of one of the things I like I moved a few times and it was like, what do, what do I really need? You know, and so I had to say goodbye to Gizmo. This would be great on the Gremlins 3 podcast. Goodbye. <laughs> it never fucking happened, Jack. I know. I, know. You should really, you should I really stars. love Gizmo, though. He's so cute. <sighs> but anyway, you should watch The Terror. Yes, it's so good. It's such a good TV show. It's phenomenal. Um, okay. Best thing I watched all year, hands down. And again, I'll watch The Terror. Yeah. We'll mm -hmm. watch The Terror. And Hillary, you can come back. Here. If um, yes, if Jack yeah. will do the Gremlins three Gremlins from outer space in Nazi Germany podcast with us, <laughs> when you put it like that, which you're more than welcome to be a part of. <laughs> when you put it I like know, that, we're never watching the terror. Well, this sounds like something that you really want to be a part of. I've so. been promising. I've been promising to finally sit down and do this show for. It has year. been fucking two years. Wait, so what? So it's going to be a limited mini series okay. of eight to 12 episodes where we gradually hash out a, a, a fully a, a full treatment of a Gremlins 3 <laughs> film where okay. it's the Dirty Dozen, where the Gizmo <laughs> leads a 10, 12 Gremlins over the enemy lines to, to assassinate Hitler. I love it. Yeah. Gizmo assassinating Hitler. It's a pre but love it's a prequel. We're going to have to do a, too, we're gonna so. have to do a chapter on avoid. Uh, we'll have to do an episode on avoiding prequel traps. Yep. But it also takes place in outer space. Uh, I guess. <laughs> Why does it have to be a prequel? I mean, where does Gizmo come from? You want right? you want a future outer Hitler? space? You want, you want to change uh, it to no, Trump? right? Change it to South. Gizmo's oh, from outer space. That's oh, Gizmo, Gizmo, Gizmo kills Trump. Trump. Gizmo I love kills that. Trump. Yes. Oh, okay. We'll put that in there. I don't give a shit. Yeah. But uh, but Hillary's still trying to get her uh, career. He wants to make sure her career's going. So we can't do anything to Baron. Uh, <laughs> Baron's off limits. <laughs> Bang. Um, <laughs> look how offended Matt was at that. <laughs> He's like, I've been working on all my Baron material for the last three months. All I want to do is DeBaron, guys. Oh my god, he already had like a whole thing with like Barrett Trump in the kitchen, like hiding from the Raptors in Jurassic Park. <laughs> <laughs> Some mirror to trick the gremlins. <laughs> and it's just Melania walking through with her fucking waistcoat coat on and in high heels, running through mud. Oh god, those Christmas pictures. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my favorite was the one they turned into the Muppet. The yeah. The Handmaid's Tale. Um, too. I had one or two more notes. Oh, I wanted to talk <laughs> about the the look of the film. It was I like that it wasn't. Don't laugh. This is a film podcast. I know, I know you guys forget. No, it was it was <laughs> the entrance of the fucking computer into the I know, frame look, that. Like, I just like jotted down a few notes on this little uh, notebook. Oh, gosh, it's so much more. All efficient. I did was drink beer. <laughs> Millennials don't use paper. Yeah, exactly. That's right. Uh, I know. I told you, old school. She's like, "Do you have? Ha well, I'm gonna write this down. <laughs> Do you have well, an you Underwood typewriter phone. I can use, sir? I'd like a Mead notebook." <laughs> she asked for tree <laughs> pulp and then formed Mead her Mead own star. paper. I, I told her we were gonna be on the podcast. She's like, "I don't know Morse code." <laughs> I actually do. <laughs> oh. <laughs> da, da, da. Not helping. Well, Your I, ego <laughs> had to kill my punchline. Well, actually, no. It's actually it's not my ego because my so my dad was really into ham radio growing up, and he wanted me to get my license. And I so you had to do I like you were vegan. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for it. I was going to say I'm wow. really into ham as an adult, but you know. Wow. I'm sorry, I couldn't help. I can't even dignify that with a laugh. <laughs> I, no, I'm Jack. I got you. I no, laughed hardly. Okay. You wanted me to get my ham radio license and like the Morse, you had to do the most memorize the Morse code, which I got fine. Mm -hmm. And then you had to like, I took all these classes and then you had to, and it was all this physics stuff. And I was way physics, too young. Goodness. It was, or <laughs> whatever. So yeah, oh, I did, right, I did yeah, so no. well, but uh, not, yeah. No, yeah, no, no, physics. no, no. I, 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 I thought you were taking a class in Morse code. I forgot you were taking a class in ham radio. No, 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 so no ham radio. Physics. No, and I just sense. was way too young. Like I didn't know. And I, I think I had like, because I didn't pass did pass a test i don't know i can't remember but i never ended up getting it so i feel kind of bad 
That's... See, that was an ego stroke. That was like a I'm sorry, man. Hillary I'm sorry, failure. Yeah, I'm sorry I brought back these hard feelings of uh, <laughs> those bone breaking days. But I think Morse code H is. Anyway, I. <laughs> What's your favorite Morse? Code? Were you about to Morse code your age? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my name. <laughs> little little trivia: you Morse code no, really, like, it comes out baby I shark. Know. I don't. I'm. <laughs> fuck you, Corey, and that baby shark shit. That uh, fuck no. Fuck. No, I'm proud of my age. I just you know I like to leave people guessing. Yeah, mysterious. So you're really intrigued now, aren't you? <laughs> Forty two. No. I'm kidding. <laughs> I thought you'd be way more offended. I was. I was. Just, I That's a no. good no. Nice. No, Sigourney Weaver was, oh, she was 43 in Alien 3 and 48. Yeah, she was 48. Oh, 48. 48. Yeah, yeah. She wasn't, yeah. oh, God, 48. What a horrible age. That's worse than 47. Right, Corey? Not by much. An age ain't nothing but a number, <laughs> folks. That's very true. Also, but rheumatism hurts. <laughs> but being vegan keeps you young. Just saying. Yeah, Just putting it out there. That's true. Just I'm not vegan it. and I look like trash. <laughs> yeah, but. But I'm 48. I'm going to die in like five years, but I'm going to have enjoyed all the shit I got to so eat. So here's the thing is Hillary basically said we all look like shit because we're not vegan. Yeah. No, she's, I was she's the only one who looks decent here. Yeah, she's 100% right. Yeah, fair. You know what? I also get this. You're going to, I don't drink either. Well, I, I got drink because I me. deal with people like you. Oh. <laughs> no, 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 we already feel bad when I tell you why. I have a really oh, rare no. auto. Oh, no. It's like a real reason. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. America's still in the chat, but she's probably just great for <laughs> fucking victory on that right now. No, I didn't mean to. I'm sorry. No, no, See, Matt, you are an asshole. I'm totally a dickhead. I know it. Yeah. And I eat little baby them. animals so I can lift heavy, heavy weight. No one knows about them, and a lot of people are affected by them, and people need to... It would be a good podcast. Yep, I know. I need to talk about it, yeah. Autoimmune diseases, folks. Oh, read about it such a terrible person I'm <laughs> no, my fine. face is completely numb so <laughs> see i don't like a lot of movies because they have a very desaturated look but alien nice resurrection yeah. <laughs> but alien... thanks jack i appreciate you alien resurrection keeps that dark and gritty like grays and blacks with the the, the industrial spaceship but there's a lot of color in it like there's a lot, a lot of, of color. you have the really bright yellow blood which wasn't in the oh and the before. pink tongue of the high the pink tongue oh. and the pink bullets the late the bullets oh. are kind of like heated bullets oh. like tracer rounds and they're like bright pink mm -hmm. uh the, the water, water really the pretty. coolant is very blue very pretty i like that i was gonna say it's well, like toilet when water, you ask but... me my favorite color i do i do like turquoise and that kind of aquamarine color as well that's my birthstone i'll give you that oh <laughs> But what's your birth year? I'm a Pisces. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> I feel really creepy, like looking. I'm like, oh, what is it? Turquoise. I notice it's not stopping you, though. <laughs> that's um, why that Matt, your that's why your face is it looks so beautiful right now with these blue. Uh, it's, it has oh, nothing to do with like, so seven and beers I've had, but that's why it's so blue. Oh, hey, your curtains are aquamarine. Yeah, right? my wife put those up. Well, she's got good taste. Uh huh. Yeah, Why I wanted to paint this room black, and I didn't know it was an option until it was done. I'm surprised there isn't a fifth color Mario yet. You have you have red, you have green, you have Wario yellow, you have Waluigi's purple. You'd think by now they would introduce like a fifth new color as like a gimmick. You know how like every once in a while there's a new M&M color. Orange. Yeah, I guess he's yellow. Yeah. Um. Yeah, yellow. Orange. I don't know. I just I stopped. Let's see. I did. Was it Wario Land? That was on the Game Boy, right? The first Wario appearance like was Super Mario Land Two. Wario really the Six Yoshi. Golden Coins for Game Boy. <laughs> yeah, Yoshi's great. He's cute. He's adorable. Um, oh, there's a really funny tweet or a GIF or a meme about like sacrifice, and it's when you jump when you have to ditch <laughs> Yoshi to make the jump. Oh gosh! Oh, I hated ditching Yoshi. I love those little eggs. <laughs> it makes you feel any better. Well, playing Red Dead Redemption, I feel bad when I accidentally shoot a horse. Oh, yeah. It's amazing how we, how we I really feel love for animals. Well, I, fin I finished the story mode. Spoiler alerts for anyone. Your horse dies. The, the hardest part of that game is when you, as your character, thank your horse for everything. Aww. Oh, my God. I fucking... Uh, Didn't they just kind of rip that off of Fable, though? You shut your cock sucking mouth. I hugged all of my dogs. Did you guys see? Do you remember the movie with Viggo Mortensen? Hid Lord Hidalgo. Of the Hobbit. Lord of the Rings. No, Hidalgo. Um, yes, yes. It was like the, the first thing you did after, I think. Yeah, it was a big Disney, Disney, Disney yeah, failure. It wasn't a failure, was it? I think it. I don't think it made its money back. I, I loved it. Maybe it did. Probably didn't make its money back. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm no. I'm, I'm, I'm no Johnny out. expert on on 
Did you know that Waluigi's first appearance was in Mario Tennis? Yes, I did. You God need it. Damn it. Jack. Jack. They needed another. They need. Oh my God, Matt. What? <laughs> they needed another heavy character in the tennis. I didn't know that. Did not know that. I'm trying to figure out if there's a fifth one. And there's really no realize. fifth color. Like that's what I'm saying. Like that's we're, what I'm trying to figure out if there's one planned yeah. or there's one that exists. And it's also an easy thing to do. That's why Mortal Kombat and all those other games do it. You have the sprite, you just change the color. It's like one line of code. But what color would the next Mario be? I was thinking blue, but you already have purple. We have red, green, black, yellow, black purple. And white. Like a black yeah, and black and white. white. That could be like a 20s. This should be like a 1920s like silent film Mario. I, I guess the Odyssey has. Oh, so anyway, I really like the, I like the colors in the movie. Oh, and also back to the hybrid and how disgusting a creature the hybrid. Hillary is completely given up on us. She's now just okay. checking her phone. No, I'm just checking. Hidalgo. She's she's texting mayhem as we speak. Yeah. <laughs> like, hey, I met these guys. I think they might be serial killers. So if I go missing, <laughs> right, you, hold on, wait, wait, budget. All right, hey. Budget was forty million, and mm -hmm. it made one hundred and eight point one million. That's incredible. Forty million is very low for the early two thousands. That's Wait, really for this movie? Hidalgo. Hidalgo. Oh, he Hidalgo. races the Arabian horse. Oh, not that movie. Oh, Omar Sharif. He doesn't. Right. He races the horse? Like he races against, it's him versus horse? horse? Man, man versus no, horse? No, it's yeah. him and the horse, and the horse is an Arabian. Yeah. Did he keep that, that horse too, like he did the one from Lord of the Rings? Wait, what was that? Did he keep that horse too, like he did the one from Lord of the no, Rings? No, I, I can't remember what happens at the end. No, I can't no, remember in, the horse dies. In real life, not. right? Do you mean in real life? life. In real life, you want to buy. Oh, right. I think, yeah, yeah. That's right. I does forgot he, about He doesn't that. live in California, does he? Didn't all those actors have like trouble evacuating their horses uh, during the wildfires? Oh, I'm sorry. Let's sorry. not bring it up. I didn't get to meet Sid Haig because so, of sorry, in California. Everybody. I don't I've made I've I'm made I've made 911 jokes. I've made like suicide jokes. I bring up the California wildfires. Everybody just shuts down on me. Can God. we just apologize to Matt for the inconvenience the California wildfires had on his experience uh, meeting Sid Haig? Oh, uh, you didn't get to meet Sid. Haig, <laughs> well, what, but the problem is, is that it that then rolled over into me getting a picture with Clive Barker, <laughs> right? Which you, should, you didn't do either. <laughs> you don't get uh, you don't get a celebrity autograph insurance. Acts of God. Oh, God, I really should. I wonder if they offer that next time. <laughs> All I've ever wanted to do is meet Sid yes. Haig. Really? That's number one goal? I have I have uh it's not number one, but I have Captain Spaulding tattooed on my back. Okay. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I, I saw your tattoo on your arm. Yeah, yeah. I'm working on my back. I have Jason oh, Freddie and tattoo artist. I've never seen Matt in person. I didn't know that. I know uh he yeah, assumes he has Captain Spaulding. He can't see it, so it's actually just a Spaulding basketball. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing they clown makeup to be fair but yeah i said i said i'd like captain spaulding tattoo on my back pete didn't know what i was talking about so he just did a basketball with clown makeup on it yeah. you just gave me the best idea i know I, I didn't know what i wanted to get for another tattoo and now i kind of want to get like remember the alex trebek game show classic concentration uh and it would have oh. a rebus in the background Do you know what a rebus is i know what a rebus is but i didn't remember, you remember classic another... concentration no yeah early night uh, late 80s um anyway i want i want huh. a captain spaulding would be like a cap plus tin plus a spaulding basketball and that's a rebus spelling captains i want like a rebus i want somebody to look at my back and have to like figure out what the puzzle is that's cool we had to make one it's uncomfortable school. when people stare at your back floater shirt on <laughs> i mean it's a good time in prison because you don't have a lot to do so so in fifth like grade alien three. in fifth grade we learned rebuses and we all had to make one as an art project mm -hmm. and we had to pick one that was a famous movie and everybody came out, and it was, uh, God, this was 1994, 1995. So it was like Jurassic Park mm -hmm. um, and all these like Star Wars and famous movies. And nobody got mine, and I was so heartbroken. I was like, this is so easy, you guys. And it was Superman for the quest for peace. <laughs> it was, it was just so, so easy, guys. All right, how would you do worst episode ever? I can imagine a brat worst. Um, and then how do we do episode? Uh, episode. Like EpiPen. an EpiPen and a soda. So you know. minus then and minus a, and then ever would be, um, hmm, what would ever be? How do you visualize? I don't know, you ever? guys are. What's e what's ever in Morse code? Yeah, I just I just tune them out for a couple minutes. All right, so just let them go. No, you guys want to roll. I was just like, you don't need. No, me. no that's what I'm saying. Just let them go. We'll, we'll we'll pick it up when they're done. Yeah, you guys can Facebook DM. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, am I'm I the only, but am I the only one that actually had any notes left on Alien Resurrection? Notes left. 
Yeah, my notes were gone about 90 minutes ago. Oh, yeah, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I'm yeah, in Matt's on. notes, it's like Sigourney Weaver was in this. Hoorah. He, just, he, just, <laughs> he, drew the, he drew the clone with the boob. Hey, and she Winona, like, Winona Ryder, colon. Like, she was great. She looked like without hair. <laughs> Who? Winona Ryder. Was she bald? I think yeah. her head was shaved. When? In this? No, it wasn't. She had her cute little pixie cut. Are you yeah. fucking kidding me? She was not bald at all. What are you on, man? Did you watch Aliens 3 instead? Do you, you think just watch, Rock was Winona Ryder? Did you just watch reruns of Kojak? <laughs> I could have swore she had uh, her head was shaved. Why does Ripley keep calling everybody baby? <laughs> <laughs> do, do your listeners like Kojak jokes? <laughs> I, do Actually, now. Right, I just moved from... Uh, I lived... And and worked in Petaluma, which is where Winona Ryder grew up. That's where Twit oh. is, right? Uh, what's his face? Yeah, uh, that's where Twit is. Uh, Leo Laporte lives. I was watching that earlier today, actually. Yes. The, the podcast of how many times Corey can talk about moving from California to Michigan. <laughs> okay. Uh, Matt, you want to talk about fast food again, motherfucker? <laughs> I'm not against fast food, nor your move. Oh, no, no, talk I'm, about girls, <laughs> girls, you're both pretty. Yeah. Hillary <laughs> needs the fast food notes for her for her Christian bail prep for a method. No, she I... wrecked our fast food opener because she talked about gnocchi, and there's like no way to go back to like, hey, I got the Arby's uh Euro sandwiches <laughs> finally. <laughs> gnocchi burger. <laughs> gnocchi burger sounds amazing. That sounds amazing. Can I tell my Jeopardy story now? My gnocchi. Oh, fuck yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so I was watching last week's Jeopardy, and the reigning champ is this guy. I can't remember his name, uh, and he looks like a walrus. He's like this Aww. big, hulking, bald guy. Yeah, I think he might be a sheriff or a police detective. I, I miss. I I I, 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 I DVR. So I, I know who you're talking about. Yeah. So here's the thing. I watch it on my phone on landscape view uh, at mm -hmm. the gym on the elliptical, and I, I have it down with the dragging the finger through the timeline mm -hmm. to skip all the commercials and the interviews because I do it so repetitively. Impressive. I do three episodes a run. So like literally, yeah. I know exactly how to drag. So anyway, I caught the tail end of his interview because I have fat fingers. So I uh, and uh, he's like a sheriff or something, and he's super smart and he keeps winning and he knows everything. And then I remember the answer was gnocchi, and he did. He must have seen it a million times, but he didn't know how to pronounce it. And he's like the least New York guy like you could think of. Like, yeah. He's like like middle America down to the T, or maybe Texan like or something. Yeah, and he was just like, he he got it mostly right. I was surprised, but he he worked on it. He was like, what is? <laughs> and it just it made me. <laughs> like, I, just, I would love to pay this guy to pronounce like gabagool and. <laughs> yeah, it's, there's some of those words that it's just like it's easy to just walk up to the person and punch them in the face than actually try <laughs> to get the word out. <laughs> gabagool is spelt C A P I C C O L O A O L A. Gabagool. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, that that's my that's my final gnocchi story of, of the evening. <laughs> Don't compliment Jack on being a racial stereotype. That's not right. <laughs> Maybe I'll just bring gnocchi for my for this next the next episode. I'll just eat it while we're talking. Yeah, I was like, how does that benefit me? <laughs> when we, wait, when we met, I was living back on Staten Island. I probably had an even thicker accent and like it was probably even did you think when you first met me that I was like just like like a Jersey Shore Guido? Just a big potato. No. Okay. No, because you don't work out. <laughs> hey, oh, that's like saying, "Oh, Corey, he obviously yeah. does cocaine." Yeah. External, and you know. I appreciate that. Wait, wait. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I looked through your stupid face <laughs> and saw the beauty no, inside. You're really funny. Um, <laughs> you're funny. You got that going for you, Jack. You're pretty funny. I'm. I'm I have my moments. I do the ha ha's. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I'll bring gnocchi <laughs> and you can watch me eat it. Jack can make uh, homemade pesto for it. I, I no, make I very good pesto, I but do I don't like, like pesto. <laughs> I do gross. like it just a nice like red sauce. And then this oh. is actually like this is like my death row meal. Oh really? Should I? Yeah. So all right. So oh. it would be <laughs> <laughs> after you after they catch the uh, the, the manhunt of your, your assassin days. You burnt potato okay, days. So we'd start out. <laughs> Oh wow, it's a three course death meal. Love it. <laughs> first, like, I'd have bread, probably like I guess well, I'm gonna put garlic on it. So right. just bread. Wait, wait, tap water or sparkling? Oh tap. I'm okay. not a sparkling. Okay. Do you no. want to hear today's specials? <laughs> no, because I know what I want, sir. So <laughs> <laughs> you just strapped to the chair. Can I order off menu? I'm just kidding, I'm not one of those. Wait, Jack, you're oh. a waiter in New York? 
<laughs> yeah, no, I love. I love. I'm picturing. Here's what I'm picturing. Here's what I'm picturing. Well, then I don't want to read your script. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I'm picturing Hillary in the chair, strapped like this, <laughs> and like the executioner coming. Like, hi, I'm Chet. I'll be your executioner. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so, what do we start with? Okay, so some like really good bread. I, I guess. the best prison no, 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 bread. But the best. I went to this Italian restaurant once, and they like it was olive oil and roasted garlic. Oh yeah. Oh god, so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, simple, okay. very okay. good. Okay. And then just a nice green salad, maybe some balsamic or something. No romaine. We're not trying to kill you. <laughs> yeah. I do like romaine, but not now. Um, <laughs> no, it's good. They said it's good. And then. <laughs> and then, loss cure. Um, <laughs> and then uh, I would like, I love artichokes. Okay. So like roasted artichokes, fried artichokes, artichoke puree, something okay, like yeah. that. I yeah. like that too because it's, it's poetic because you choked your victims to death. So. <laughs> And, and then tip the them in mayonnaise. Yeah. <laughs> or a nice aioli. Um, so <laughs> Wait, so now you're an animal I... <laughs> type. Five. You're vegan, but you eat humans. <laughs> or sometimes too. Okay. Only vegetarians. Um, and then, yeah, and then gnocchi and like a red sauce. And I would just, that's like the perfect meal for me. <laughs> 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 Will that be anything else? <laughs> no. See, I wouldn't really need I mean, to after that. That would be really it's, good. It's a good running meal, though, because it'll shoot right through you when you crap yourself and you're dead. But that's fine. That's a good idea. <laughs> I also like that you stuck <laughs> to the bullshit yeah. that you're not going to have meat in your last meal. It's like, no, I've done it this long. I'm going to I'm gonna ride it out. Well, that's what people think. I They're like, I could never do that. And I'm like, I eat burgers and, yeah. yeah, I ate it all. So, but, you know, what keeps you healthier and... You know, they last meal, you know, they're always getting veal. You, you eat vegan burgers, though. That's. But they're like beans. And like... Yeah, so make a different face sound. It's not a burger. I have a oh. question. Touche. Yes. It's not a yes. hamburger. I'll give you that. I like burgers. <laughs> this isn't judgy at all, either. It is clearly like. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> really. Is. With that. I know, oh. it is. Go on. Would you eat an impossible burger? Like I this? have. Oh, you have. How is it? Is it yummy? What's an impossible bird, right. guys? White Castle does it. It's it's a genetically oh. created lab meat. It's it, not. It, it looks like the hybrid. They from don't. Animals, right? If you look at it, no, it's like potato and there's some. It it was good. I like. I mean, it was great. I like veggie burgers, too. Like, I don't I don't miss anything. You wouldn't eat the meat that's grown in the culture. No, no. that's what <laughs> I meant by impossible burger. Oh no, but no, but the Impossible Burger I, I think has like, like potato meat. in it, and no, I thought it was like meat that was made in a lab. That, like, no, 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 genetically no. just meat, but it never no, no, had no, a no. soul. It's, no, no, no. Okay, you wouldn't eat that. That's it. No, I don't know if I'd eat it. <laughs> Supposedly, that's if, I, my my theory is uh, when like we're overpopulated and 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 you know, there's a recession and stuff. I think we'll have to stop eating cattle, especially when like two billion middle class Chinese and Indian. Well, citizens. I mean, being vegan. Your yeah. carbon footprint is exactly way but low. I think we're going to replace it with insects. I think, or else we're going to look like I the end of Alien Four. I think crickets are going to become like a main food source. There's a there was yeah, a cricket restaurant that was place. opening in Sonoma County. Yeah, uh, there was. A, yeah, no, I think it will be like mass produced on a. Ma it'll be a major part of the American economy. Like we will have like insect farms because of the carbon footprint. The hardest part is getting to find the acceptance in what you're eating. Like I I live my life by a simple edict, which is never stare directly at the McNugget. I don't want to know what's in that. <laughs> Exactly, right. exactly, but it tastes you great. You don't know you're eating crickets when you're if you're eating it the way that, that a lot of people eat them, processed and everything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't know. That's that's my personal theory, but I think crickets is going to be like a main food source. And I, if I had money, I would invest in like a cricket farm. <laughs> but I, mean, I don't know if I could no, eat that's it. Smart. But I don't know if I could eat it. Here's my wife made stuffed mushrooms the other day. Crickets sound more appetizing to me than mushrooms do. I'm not a mushroom guy. Really? Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I like some mushrooms, but not all mushrooms. It, it, mushrooms grow in nature on shit from nothing. It's like, here's some shit, uh, and now it's suddenly growing stuff that you're supposed to find appetizing. No, thanks. I'm not into that. You, just, uh, are good. you described Wii Studios just now, by the way. <laughs> I probably did. <laughs> um, and so the first line of Wii Studios is uh, Bart Simpson peeing on a Calvin and Hobbes thing, and then Studios, how do we draw that on your back? <laughs> that was good. That was good. Um, so obviously, Matt's always uh, tough to uh, get engaged with any of these movies that you cover. Which, Corey, by the way, we missed you, buddy, while you were gone. Uh, those were those were big shoes to fill. Uh, oh, yeah, or like a big imprint on the chair. 
No, I was very happy. Wait, does to Matt see... not like any of these movies? He never likes anything. <laughs> what happened? The one movie, the one movie Matt liked, I shit all over, and then we got hate tweets about it because of the fact that it had D. Snyder from Twisted Sister. It was this movie. It's like Matt's favorite horror film because he grew up with it, and it's fine. And I just kind of like I talked about how bad it was, and somebody just ripped us a new one on Twitter about it. It was our first hate tweets, which meant we made it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but it's also it hurt yeah. Matt's feelings so bad that he can't ever not bring it up. <laughs> like this bitch said this said we were fat hipsters. It's like I hate oh, that fucking lady. Maybe we are. <laughs> that means you're doing it right though if you're getting bad tweets. Sure. Um no, anyway, I was just said I was telling Corey Matt how uh, how happy I was to see him back back at the uh at the podium. <laughs> the, the nice thing for me is I got to come back and listen to all the episodes with you, uh, with Erica, Aww. with all the people except in. Because I love listening to you guys. You guys are my favorite people I hang out with. And when I don't get to hang out with you, at least I get to listen to your shows. And that that's fun for me. And I could not have pictured anybody better than you guys to come in and, and fill my spot because I love what you do anyway, but your people that, and talking with, the perspectives and stuff I get from you is what I'd want to hear in the show, in the context, as it is. Like, oh. you guys bring something to yeah. it extra, which is why we always invite you back. But when I'm not here, yeah, like, that's like, yeah, Jack's going to come on. I'm like, thank God. You know, I love that. <laughs> I appreciate it. I know your stepdad's not crazy about me, but. <laughs> Ooh, why? Forgot about that. Oh, so Jack's got a potty you, mouth. That's not going to like me either. No, no he's not going to like you at all. Well, I wasn't playing him episodes I was in, so he would have gotten a lot worse. <laughs> <laughs> he just pushed me out of the car and I was driving. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but my point is, um, we're happy to have you back. And Corey kind of carries the weight on the show when it comes to the actual movie stuff. No offense. No, that's totally true. All I do is pee. <laughs> no, he, all he does is pee. Yeah. So I'm curious if Corey had anything left to say about the movie. I don't know if there's a lot to say about the movie. It seems kind of straightforward. If you've gotten through the other alien movies at this point, it's not a surprise. At most, what it does is it changes up the Ripley character, and it does bring you kind of a new frontier as to what they're doing with, like we talked about, how it's space pirates as opposed to marines or the the straight up stalker horror of the first one. Um, but it, I don't feel like it breaks any new ground in the sense that we've seen a lot of the stuff already. It is really fun, and I I do stick with the fact that it's a great precursor to Firefly. If you're a fan of the Joss Whedon series. Firefly or Serenity, watching this, you kind of get the feeling of, oh, okay. Now, did he kind of take it back, or is this just where his head is? Because we we talked about he does do the female lead characters very similarly. Um, if it's Space Ripley, if it's River, if it's Buffy or whatever, he he does get into this like this is how they move, this is how they act, this is how they fight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's it's not a bad shtick, it, and he he brings a lot to the characters beyond just the physicality, but they all do kind of land in that same role to a certain degree. That's still a great point, especially about the, besides clone Ripley, that's not, it's almost not breaking enough new ground. Yeah, I agree. It doesn't really feel like, okay. but all right, uh, before we rank, rank the film uh, oh. or, or, or rate it, uh, I am curious, uh, Matt, you can participate too, if you want. I know you don't give a shit, <laughs> but I would love to rank the, the, the eight existing alien movies, the, the, Ooh, the, okay. the Ripley, the, oh. the Ripley four, the AVP two and the uh, two new ones. At, at least he's saving us from having to watch them all. True. <laughs> who, who Are we starting all? from eight to one? Yeah. Who wants worst to go first? To... Worst the best. Requiem is the worst for sure. Okay. And then. Oh, are we doing it separately? No. Oh, no. oh, you want to do everybody has to do those. Do does their worst? And like agree. Okay. Um, I... No, I would say Prometheus is the worst. Really? No. AVP, the first AVP. Really? Yes. I this, said is, this is why it might be easier for everybody to get. Okay, all right, fine. No, right. what, what happens is you, Jack asks you what your, no, Jack tells you what his score is, and then you tell him what you think the score is, and then he changes his answer to your score. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I do it on, on, on my Simpsons show. That's true. <clears throat> okay. But I don't give a shit about the Simpsons. We're talking about AVP. <laughs> Requiem is eight for me. Then... Corey, what's your eight? Oh man, I hate Covenant so much. Right. I, I'm really gonna have to put it at the bottom because oh, and I haven't I, seen. I only saw Requiem once. 
I mean, I don't know Covenant once, but it was a long time ago. But yeah, but Covenant, when you watch Prometheus and you watch Covenant, it's like you're in a really shitty Groundhog's Day. <laughs> oh, yeah. Also, Requiem is a very pretentious title. Like Covenant and uh, Prometheus fit because it's high art, like uh, prestige Ridley Scott films, or at least trying to be. Um, AVP is a dumb, like made for TV schlock. Why, why is it? Why is it called Requiem? It should just be called like AVP, like Blood Guns. Yeah. <laughs> In the dark. <laughs> it would have been a billion times better if it was AVP Blood Guns. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I think this ranking is taking too long. Maybe <laughs> two. Oh, okay. All right. All right. All right. Two is your worst map because you haven't seen it. Sure. <laughs> I thought that's what you said. Did Wait, you say what was? Two? I just yelled the number two for no reason. I mean, he could be talking about aliens. He could be talking about ADP Requiem. He could be talking about Covenant. Number of times oh. I've seen my wife naked. Okay. All right. Okay. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. For me, Requiem. Did you just call your wife a two, by the way? No, no, no. I said two is the times I've seen her naked. Oh, okay. Um, I but I like song. her choice in curtains. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they match the drapes. <laughs> Thank right. you for making this. I'm just gonna, all right. Wait, no, it's Requiem. wrong. It's matches, it matches the carpet. Requ I'm sorry. Requiem. All right. Uh, okay, hold on, hold on. Covenant. You've said Requiem 47 <laughs> times in a row. Right. Requiem, and then, well, well let's see. Requiem, we got Requiem, Covenant, ABP. Requiem. Oh no no wait no no I gotta go back. <laughs> okay. Requiem. No, no 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 no. <laughs> Say Requiem again. <laughs> no. Number eight. Number eight is Requiem. <laughs> Requiem. <laughs> okay. like, you want to say it one more time? Just to, yeah, of course you do. I hope you don't have a stutter and I'm making fun of that. Then I'll feel bad. Also, just to give Matt more work, he has to put all the rankings in the show notes. All right. Eh, fuck it. <laughs> Requiem. Just copy and paste Requiem. Yep. Requiem. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay. That's be a should we put in a pre, should we put in should we put in like a pre requiem? She's older than all of us. She's probably having a stroke. <laughs> That's eight. Okay. Then what was eight again? <laughs> no. I mean I'll do it. But <laughs> all right, so <laughs> Requiem <laughs> and Covenant. Covenant. Then <laughs> Alien. No, AVP. AVP. As much as I guilty pleasure it, okay. AVP. Alien 3. Prometheus. <laughs> Hold on, guys. Wait, we, have some some... Here. we have some momentum here. <laughs> and then. I feel like I should be an alien purist and say the first one is the best, but I do love no, the second you go one. With you go, go with your gut. <sighs> but where does yeah. Requiem come in? <laughs> Number eight? So one and then two. Is it eight or seven? Seven. I don't even know what to do. Like, oh, there's eight. There's eight. Yeah, there's is, eight. Wait. <laughs> Did you put Alien Resurrection anywhere in there? No, I didn't. So I have to go back. I'll start from the, start from the top. <laughs> Let's take it from the top. The movie we're here to talk about doesn't get ranked. Requiem <laughs> is the first. We're gonna, to, we're gonna have to have you back for Alien Requiem. <laughs> okay, Requiem. <laughs> Covenant. <laughs> Save me. <laughs> Alien Three. Alien, don't forget Alien Resurrection. Prometheus. Oh, no. Prometheus. Okay. Alien Prometheus Resurrection. <laughs> number one, Alien, and Aliens okay. is my number one. All right, here we go. But did everyone... That was kind of... I was kind of I unclear. Don't, I don't know what you said. I, called, I, 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 I heard <laughs> Requiem and Alien. I called of... Alien number one. <laughs> Maybe, <laughs> that was worse. Maybe I should go back. Yeah, go back, yeah. I have to say, at this point in time, Ooh. Requiem is my favorite alien movie. That's now. That's now. Yeah. Let's start. Wait. We gotta make it again. We gotta make a new list. Okay. <laughs> oh, I, 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 I'm not gonna put any effort into this because I, I don't want to take as long okay. as you did. So I'm just gonna sorry. say, uh, I'm not gonna be sorry for anything. No, I'll be sorry. Never be sorry. Never be sorry. <laughs> okay. All right. Number eight. Mm -hmm. 
is AVP. Number seven is Prometheus. Number wow. six is, yeah, I guess six is Requiem. Um, five would be Covenant. Four would be Resurrection. Three would be Alien. Hmm. Three, two would be Alien. One would be Aliens. I'm a, I, there's there's some wiggle room there though. Like three and four, I could swap. Yeah. One and two, I could almost swap. But I really do love. I think Aliens is a perfect yeah. film. Uh, Covenant. I don't know. I gotta see it again. Ugh, worst. Requiem. Is fine. I don't. I I, I have a like I have a soft man, spot for. I know. Man. I know. It's schlock. One through eight. Requiem for me. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds good. Corey, finally, last, last but certainly not okay. least, Corey. It's kind of easy for me. The the five through eight are the last ones to come out, pretty much in order. Except no, no, yeah. So okay, okay so Covenant, Covenant, Prometheus, Requiem, AVP. I, I just find AVP more. I know. I'm with you, buddy. Nostalgic pull because yep. Hammer is in it. Yep. Then Definitely. Alien Three. Um. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's tough between I tough. like Resurrection because I think it's fun to watch. I would watch it before I'd watch Alien. Yeah, that's the problem with these rankings. Is like, what's the better movie versus what's more fun to yeah, watch? Well, I'm like, AVP side. is a crap movie, but I love to watch it. Yeah, I'm always <laughs> going to err on the side of I, I would rather watch this than that. So I'm going to say Alien, then Resurrection, then Aliens. Wow. That's fair, though. That's fair. Because yeah, no, I, 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 I've Sorry, definitely seen Ridley. Alien Resurrection more Ridley. Ridley Scott. Oh, I think you meant like Ripley. <laughs> um, oh, but that's interesting. I never thought about that. Ripley, similar Ripley, their names are. Yeah. So it sounds like we need to have a comprehensive discussion on all of the alien franchises. We're going to have to do all alien. That, that'll that catch you up to 12 real quick. <laughs> Eight podcasts of terrors yes. right there. Um, and the terror. It's really oh, we got to do We got to do the terror. It's such a good show. And it's scary as hell. No, and it's fine. We'll do, we'll do the terror after we do Gremlins 3. We could do it as pot shots and do an episode by episode breakdown. Fuck my life. Ooh, I like that. I have a great name for the podcast. It's Requiem. <laughs> <laughs> we'll never be able to get through the intro. I love how I was like, what's that, Jack? <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, no. Should, so should we, rank, should we rank this movie? No, we totally should because it's getting super late for you guys. Um, uh, what is the scale? One to five? Zero to five. Here at a five. I've been on the show 12 times, 11 times. It, still it changes every third time you're on. It's fine. I know. I know. It's a terrible, terrible. You want to be a classic. Good. Poorly run ranking system. It is not a good ranking system. Um, I will give this a four. Wow. So... Wait, is it five's zero to four? Best. Zero to five. Zero to five. Zero to five. Five's the best. Yeah. In what world is five the worst? <laughs> Um, I don't know. Hmm. One would be five seriously though. When whenever no, I mean, you rank something in like the highest number is the worst. The worst well, is five. I I'm certain certain mini so golf. Why is it you're still number one to me? Wait, no, I'm oh, hold on. Five is five is the best. Five is the best. Okay. First is the worst. Second is the best. But we third just third with the hairy hairy chest. We just ranked where number one was the best. That's why. Yeah, you're right. We're doing we're doing it backwards from the Thank ranking you. of the movies. This isn't because okay, right, we're right. not ranking it. We're giving it's it. A, got, got okay, it. okay, okay. It's a scale. So this yeah. is ranking for zero is alone. Zero, one, two. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Don't think about any other okay. alien film. I'm just I mean, oh, just as score, would you give Requiem? Because no, just, no, no, like Requiem. Corey, don't get her started. Your new year of your all goddamn night. What score would you give this movie? Can we, do we have to do zero? That's confusing me. <laughs> no, because you can give a movie a zero, meaning it's just it a fucking answer. number. I give it, I give it a three. To be fair, it took humans 4,000 years of civilization <laughs> to be fair. Did you see zero. I was counting on my fingers, guys? I did. And you were using two hands for one through five. I, yeah, I wasn't <laughs> entirely sure what was even happening over there. This is a completely arbitrary number. Like, this doesn't change anything. I was doing that one. What did you give it? I gave it a three. Three. Okay. That's fair. Corey? Uh, 3.5. Thank you. That's, that's also good. Matt? I give it a two. Yeah, we know. <laughs> Don't give a shit about what I give at this shit. point. <laughs> it, it's Matt, very mediocre. Matt, looking at the scoreboard, when's the last time you gave something more than a two? <laughs> when was the last time you gave something more than a two? Yeah. 
Lost Boys, I gave it a three and a half. Oh, that's Lord it. Lord of Illusions, I gave it a two and a half. What's yeah, fuck. That's with uh, Scott Bakula. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a good one. It was on last week's show. Uh, you can find it on the podcast. Oh, excellent! I was just super well. confused. <laughs> I was very confused by Lord of Illusions. I need to watch it again. It was I all like Lost Boys. By the way, that was probably the best thing of my week was seeing the release notes for that episode, and it says Lord of Illusions. Matt was very confused by this, and Corey insulted him. <laughs> <laughs> Which the like, best part is, is I write those. Oh, guys, I know. <laughs> Holy fuck, Jack's gone. He you probably know? had to pee. Let's yeah. make fun of him. One time to your two, he's probably texting you right now. <laughs> Jack's a fucking asshole. He's not going to listen to this either, so. Well, I can see listening to your musical talents why you don't like singers, Matt. Well, exactly. Except me when I sing about the Alien musical. No, Hillary, you've done a terrific job. Your music stylings, I would sign you to a record deal in a heartbeat <laughs> if I could. But I can't even get myself one, so why would I give you one? Go on my website and hear me sing. <laughs> But really? I'm as a nine-year-old, yeah. Why did I feel like that was a... I remember listening to you on um, 90 percentile because of my undying need to be back on that show. It was so fun. Yeah. Yeah, and we covered Batman Returns. That's very Good. true. I tried talking about Hackers, but no one besides me has watched that movie. I've seen it. Oh, come on. Well, Corey, unfortunately, you don't do a 90s podcast. <laughs> no, I do an 80s podcast. I uh, Have you seen Hackers, Hillary? I have not, I, not in a really long time, but yeah. But yeah, so I, I purchased a custom enter key for my keyboard at work that says "Hack the Gibson." Um, amazing. Yeah, right. And you're like one of three people yeah. that get that joke. Duh. By the uh, way, I would I would put sneakers above it. Whoa. Way above it. Whoa. Robert Redford. Requiem. Requiem. <laughs> yeah, right. It's no alien requiem, man. <laughs> Um. Yeah. No. We'll see. Hackers. I did Batman Returns. I tried. Can you please be in Hackers Three? I would love that. Jack, Can we do the script for Hackers Three? Yeah, Jack. We need to do a skit for. We need to do a script for Hackers Three. Also, also qualifies as a horror movie. Yep. You guys should. Uh, you guys should totally watch the uh, the table read we did. We 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 start as uh, as husband and wife, and Dan played my dad. For Hackers 3? <laughs> no, 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 no. For my, you missed, I did, you missed I did that write, part. I know, but I'm well, saying I, I did write how her. Impress, how impressed are we supposed to be when Dan plays your dad all the time? Uh, <laughs> I actually and, did write, I write a role for her as well. Um, for Actually, after I met you. I actually wrote it specifically for you. I don't know if I ever showed you that one. No, you told me you did, yeah. and you never showed me. Oh, uh, yeah. Do you that play is a another Hackers pickup 3? line in a bar that Jack uses well, all the time. But here's, here's, here's why Don't fall for it like I did, okay? It's a perfect Jack pickup line because the, the part I wrote is still, I just play the part lead. Like, it's still me. <laughs> like, I wrote, it's, still, like, it's all about me. You, you play the second, you play me here, and then you. <laughs> <laughs> what? <sighs> Beatmaster says that we need to do Hackers 3 Requiem. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Would you be Done. playing the Miller? Okay. Part? So we need to do ha- uh, we need to do Gremlins three. We need to do the Terror. Excellent. And we need to do Hackers three Requiem. <laughs> <laughs> done and done on this show. Great. Podcast of Terror. Well, uh, Gremlins three would be its own show. Hackers three, oh, I, I believe, would be its own show. And then the Terror would be on Podcast of Terror. Mm-hmm. I understand. Okay. At least perfect. as a pot shot. Yeah. Then it- in the name, no, you're gonna be busy. 2019 is gonna be a busy year for you. <laughs> yeah, whatever. It's it's gonna Sorry, be. Sorry, fucking... Steven Spielberg. I've got to go to. <laughs> <laughs> you saw her on FBI, but now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, NAFTA AFTA is gonna be a little. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna be yeah, chopping at the bit to get you. <laughs> I've done way more. Interesting I'm gonna nab a little bit for you. No, you oh. bought it my Eggman's best commercial. <laughs> I love that commercial because I watch Jeopardy every day. So I literally saw you every every single day. What commercial are you in? Uh, it's fine. <laughs> no, 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 no. You can't be like best? talk about it. It was an eggland. Egg yeah, it was egg. like several years ago. Eggland's best eggs. And it's they even- don't stop playing those commercials. And, well, Jeopardy. They, yeah, they, they it was like it ran for like three years. They or play something. the same commercials in the same order every single mm-hmm. time. I'm I'm sure you were really upset every time a check showed up. <laughs> Well, fun secret is that oh, I wasn't no. in SAG yet. 
So it was a non-union commercial. So you get paid oh, like a lump sum. So yeah. it sucked because everyone saw it like all the time. And even played during the Super Bowl. And people were like, you must be making so much money. And I was like. <laughs> By the way, remember you can't it, it. So you got, a, I got more money. But it's it, okay. You're going to yeah. get that Hackers 3 gold. I know. You can't. Yeah, just we're going to get you a lot of Hackers 3 money. It's, it's not oh. just SAG. It's SAG Nambla. <laughs> oh my goodness! I've given up on trying to find the. I guess you're gonna have to go into podcasting after this. <laughs> <laughs> you will have no choice. Got to. Yeah, there's it. so much money in podcasting. <laughs> there's so much money that I still have to go to work tomorrow. Yeah, me too, for the first time in three weeks. I just don't and I'm all the unemployed. Honestly, this is how he ended his vacation, guys. Yep, yep. This is why I said Sunday was iffy for me. <laughs> <laughs> and then he was the one that picked Sunday. And he's the one who said, let's rank the eight movies. <laughs> well, I didn't think it would take her so long. <laughs> Requiem. Requiem, yeah. oh, man. I didn't think she'd turn into Howard Hughes at the end of The Aviator. Requiem. 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 This episode. Oh. Wait, what? What was I didn't hear? Corey shits out all the time, and he shitted it out at the worst opportune minute. Uh, did you step, did you step on his line? Hmm. We'll just wait quietly. Oh. Gingerly, he'll come back. He always comes back. He always comes back, yeah. He's Are like you? a boomerang. <laughs> I was thinking like a stray dog. <laughs> boomerang. Cor- Corey, what were you saying? I said this episode of Broadcast of Terror is brought to you by Kleenex Boxes. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? It's the Howard Hughes reference. It was, it was appropriate at the time that I'd said it. I'm with you there, Corey. It's okay. <laughs> that's my pride. I, 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 never mind. You guys are out of Corey. But Howard Hughes made me think of Terry Quinn, Terry O'Quinn. Terry, Terry, Qu- Quinn. Terry O'Quinn from Lost? Yes, but he was in The Rocketeer because I was thinking about The Rocketeer when we were talking about doing 90 percentile mm-hmm. because I mentioned The Rocketeer because I also really like that in addition to Batman Returns. <laughs> But he plays Howard Hughes in The Rocketeer. Oh, yeah. That, that's like my definitive mm. Howard Hughes. And Jennifer yeah. Connelly was in The Rocketeer, and then she yep. was in He's Rec- Just Rec- Loving Into You with Ben Affleck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Oh, wait. Yeah, this is fun. Okay. And then, oh, wait. Geez. Bill Campbell was in Rocket. He was the Rocketeer. He was also in the 4400. This episode has been 4400 hours long. <laughs> Are you guys trying to tell me to stop talking? No, no, no. I'll not never tell you to stop talking. Because <laughs> I'm never going to be sorry for anything ever. Billy ever. Campbell was in. Was he in an interview with a vampire? Or or Dracula? Oh. Wait, no. Keanu. Hold on. Was as, in as Dracula. He was like a. I had a Billy Campbell thing. Keanu Reeves is definitely in Bram Stoker's Dracula. Right, but he was like, also John Wick. Billy Campbell, I think, is also in Dracula. Then I don't know. I, I didn't. I'll I, get there. I don't know what I'll Billy Campbell. I, I'm not familiar with his earlier work. Oeuvre. <laughs> Dracula. Oeuvre. Okay. All right. So he was in Dracula. Yeah. Also, the 4400. Great show. <laughs> Great show. So mm-hmm. and Gary. Oh no! Wait. Um, how do we get there faster? What are you trying to get to? Gary Busey? No, Ben Affleck. <laughs> Oh. Was Winone in something? With ben oh, Affleck? we're playing Six Degrees of Ben Affleck. Yeah, I just caught on. Or Gary Oldman. Uh, uh Hackers. No, not <laughs> Hackers. Um, Sleepers. Who's in Sleepers? That that's always our uh, that's always our Ben Affleck connection. Uh, is that the one with? Uh... So Billy Campbell was in Dracula with Keanu Reeves. Keanu uh-huh. Reeves was in. Uh, Keanu Reeves was. In... Oh, he was in this really bad movie, Destiny. Oh no, but I was I was really excited because he's in this movie with Winona. But then Winona doesn't get us anywhere with Ben Affleck, except um, that she's date Matt Damon, who's Ben Affleck's best. <laughs> ben Affleck was also in Matt Damon. Oh wait, Armaged- <laughs> Arma- Arm- Armageddon has somebody in common with. Uh... Billy Bob Thornton. With Keanu Reeves. Th- Seeing that. Well, no, who's? I don't know. This is tough. Usually, I'm much better at this. Hold on, wait, wait. I'll get. There. I used to okay, be able to right. do these in like a minute. Six degrees, Ben Affleck. Now I have like taxes and and four hundred one ks up All here. All right. Welcome to being an adult, Jack. And see, it sucks. Is Gary Oldman's in Batman with, but with Christian Bale. But has Christian Bale been in anything with Ben Affleck? No. Um, no, but. He was in something with Bradley Cooper. No, with Jennifer Lawrence. Jennifer Lawrence. Oh, God. oh American Hustle. Yeah, but where does that go? 
Amen. Uh, this is tough. This is tough. This We're is- going to get there, guys. We're going to get there. <laughs> Hold on. Brought to you by okay. Marathon. Marathon. Take your time. Brought to you by Marathon All right. Gas. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> get a full tank of freedom. Um, we'll figure it out. Wait, off there. Right. We'll Christian it Bale, off there. and he was in Hostels with. What are we trying to Elizabeth connect? Billy Pike. Campbell and Ben Affleck? Is that what we're trying to do? Yeah. <laughs> Seal Award. Like, <sighs> wait, has Ben Affleck been in anything with Harrison Ford? No. No, he took over the Harrison Ford part in those. Uh, oh, but God. there's nobody that crosses over. Yeah. Billy Campbell what's was in. Is, is Keanu Reeves our best connection to Keanu? Or Jen- Billy Jennifer Connelly, maybe? Paul Bettany? No, they yeah, they were in a movie. Together. Or Russell Crowe. Ha! No, wait. I got it. Yes. I got it. I got it. No, no I got okay. it. Jennifer right. Connelly was in The Hulk with yes. Ed Norton. Yes. Who was in uh I was going somewhere else, but I forgot. But Ed Norton was in The Score with De Niro, who was in Sleepers with Ben Affleck. All right. I already did him to Ben Affleck in two steps. Oh, you did Billy Campbell? I thought you did uh It was in The Rocketeer with Jennifer Connelly. Jennifer Connelly was in He's Just Not That Into You with Ben Affleck. Oh, that's how this started. I thought you were trying to get to Kevin Bacon at that point. Oh, well, Kevin Bacon's also in, in Sleepers, isn't he? Oh, he's just not that into you. Mm-hmm. I, I, yeah, I think you had crapped out a little bit there. Our bad. Yeah, it's all right. I, it's just an admission on air that I just watched. He's just yeah. not that into you. Also, it took us 20, 10 minutes to come up with six degrees. You did two degrees in two seconds. <laughs> and you nailed out your movie ranking, too. You didn't stay on Requiem for 15 minutes. <laughs> I could. This is why we miss you. The people enjoyed it. Corey gave this whole big speech about how, like, oh, everybody who filled in for me did a great job. No, we didn't. Oh, <laughs> we, we needed Corey. Oh, man. Yeah, I just let these assholes talk. <laughs> Thank yeah. You. I, do you want? Do you have anything to add, Matt? <clears throat> Nothing. No, Matt was how, about to ask uh, where people can find you guys on the internet. Corey, yeah. you still have to read the outro before we can get to that part. You keep thinking that I can read it. <laughs> my ass. When my when my mic goes out nine times in the thirty <laughs> seconds, it's going to take you to do the script. You can contact us by leaving us a voicemail at eight zero five three two eight thirty nine sixty six. You can email us at pod at gcast dot com. Holy fuck! How many uh, beers? You can leave a message at uh, how many? Six. Just d- during this? Yeah. Um. You can email us at pot at genecast.com or you can leave us a message on the genecast.com website. You can also follow us on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram at Podcast of Terror. You can also subscribe to this podcast via iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, or any of your favorite podcasters and leave us uh, feedback on whichever you like. You can also go bit.ly. You're going to get hit in the head with a brick (laughs) and you're going to go into like a coma and that's like you're just going to be muttering it. The the EMT's like, what the fuck is he doing? That's like that's what your brain is going to be doing on autopilot. Yep. Uh, you all subscription options and links can be found at gncast.com slash subscribe. Finally, you can find the entire network on Facebook under the Galactic Network. Um, if you feel so inclined, you can go to amazon.podcast podcastofterror.com. Jack, you know the spiel. Just put podcast of terror instead of uh, worst episode ever. Uh, for me, for my yeah. my contact information, sure, um, why not? do whatever you want. I yeah, don't care follow, anymore. <laughs> follow, follow me at Jackie No Breaks on Twitter. That's my main my main social platform of of choice. I'm also on Instagram as at Jackie No Breaks. Uh, follow the podcast uh, at We Studios Pod W E E Studios Pod, um, and uh, you can also follow our other ones. Uh, but We Studios Pod is our main one. And check out 90s Percentile. Uh, both both shows are on hiatus. Hopefully, both shows will come back soon. Uh, but check out 90s percentile. Check out the episode, I want to say 70, with Hillary mm-hmm. Mann from uh, over a year ago. Uh, and just like like uh, this, like this show might be. Is this one of your longest shows of all time? <laughs> it's oh, yeah, close, no, but please no. keep so talking we, while I look. So for 90s percentile, we actually, <laughs> to, to not do that, we have a 60 minute timer that we stick to very hard. We go 60 minutes and that's it. And Hillary is literally like, with the timer on us, she's like, no, we're just going to keep <laughs> keep going. <laughs> I mean, then we was, I was like, like, we can do an extended cut, yeah. right? I mean, they were like, no, and she just, she just, she just kept going. And anyway, it's one of my favorite episodes we've ever done. Aww. Um, and uh, I, I encourage everybody to check it out. And uh, yeah, that's it on my end, I guess. Oh, me script read good. You want script notes for me? Me script read good.com. 
Jack, I don't want to condone talking longer, but if we make this go about 11 more minutes, it will be the second longest episode we have. See that. <laughs> we, I've always wanted to be second best. <laughs> well, it, you would edge out your episode with you and Jeff. What's the number one? Three hours and 30 oh, minutes God. with Corey, Matt, Vincent, and I. Can't do that. I don't yeah. think I'll ever break. I don't think I'll ever make number one. We really could. We yeah, just need to start earlier. Start earlier, yeah. Yeah. When we talk about a ten-hour series, The Terror. Yeah. Also, I'm I'm coming off an eighteen-hour vacation, uh, eighteen-day vacation. Right? Day? So I've, I've done nothing. <laughs> I've slept twelve hours a day and watched Star Trek, and I've done nothing for three weeks. I was supposed there to write. It's literally been two guys. weeks of Jack being like, "You guys want to play video games?" I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, do something. <laughs> it's true. It's literally the only text I sent. But uh, Hillary had work today. She came from work. Mm -hmm. Like that's uh, she has all that this energy still. It's, it's, she's uh, never ceases to amaze me. She really does. Oh gosh. And everybody should well, follow her. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I would like to say that my parents. So apparently, I started talking at nine months, which I guess is early. What a shame! And you never stopped. <laughs> and we never stopped. So my mom and dad say, "Requiem." I don't actually think I talk. But... <laughs> I think it's coming. <laughs> that's my first <laughs> What did what did you have for work today? Can you talk about it? Um, I mean, sure. I. <laughs> well, we need ten more minutes of material, so talk about it. Well, wait, I want to do like you need to follow me. Yeah, let's I get our social. Well, yeah, yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah, of course. I, we might be able to go ten more minutes. I don't think your audience can. <laughs> uh, fuck them. They'll deal with it. All right. Um. Okay. So you can follow me to Instagram. That's probably what I use the most. It's Hillary. I it right now. I L A R Y. Hillary with one L, folks. Yeah. It's Hillary. Yep. One L. Jack corrected me earlier today. Really glad he did. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. One L, two Ns. This is where, by the way, where Hillary ranks in my life. I <laughs> think we met in 2008. Um, that sounds right. I kept typing Hillary Clinton with one L after I met her. <laughs> and everybody Thank always said correctly. Thank you, because ugh, everyone always spells it wrong. It's like the bane of my existence. And, and I always, like, it's only, and I'm yeah. happy to have, you know, would have liked the next 48 years yeah. of been gotten my name misspelled but um yeah no everyone spells it two l's there it was, only, it was only in 2016 that i stopped spelling when, hillary clinton wrong default, like default. Yeah. well then when i meet other hillary's because there aren't very many of us um no, not since the hillary purge of <laughs> <laughs> well i took out all the millennials I didn't know any hillary's growing up and then when she came along and now there's like hillary swank and hillary duff who both spell it with one l i'll have See? you no yeah. um i could go another 11 minutes so, on. sir this sir <laughs> edmund that's hillary fine. yeah but that's hillary scampy Jumbo Hillary. <laughs> <laughs> I like it though, because it's you know, it's not like when I was in middle school, I had three friends named Sarah, and they'd walk together, and I'd just be like Sarah, and they all turn around and go what? Yeah, a lot of Jessicas, yeah. and Rebecca's back then. So sorry, I mean Sarah's a great name, um, <laughs> but uh, and and A and H, there's you know, uh, so it's Hillary I T S H I L A R Y. That's my Instagram. My Twitter. I don't. Uh, to be honest, I'm really not on it much. You but using Twitter. I, That's where I all my know. good stuff is. You keep missing it. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I get emails when Jack puts out those golden, golden tweets. <laughs> <laughs> what? Do yeah, you? Twitter emails me and it's like Jack Cohn just tweeted. Oh, yeah, I, I had to pay Google Aww. a lot for that. <laughs> yeah. So it's Hillary Mann is at Twitter. So man, man with two, with two ends. ends. Yes. Yeah. And then I have a website. Hillaryman.com. You can check that out as well. And check out The Finger on Amazon. Yes, check out yeah. The Finger on Amazon Prime. Yep. Uh, you can <laughs> look at my reel. I don't know. It's, <laughs> it's fun there. Hire yeah, her, folks. Can... <laughs> she needs money. Give her a job. Oh, yeah. You can check me out singing as a nine-year-old for this Macy's musical. Oh, boy. That's is what it, I was saying. Is it your creepy Beautiful. little girl voiceover that I hate? Should I Should I yeah. do it? Uh, no? Yeah, no, I'll just take my head. Okay. Wait, no, you have to. No? You don't want me to talk like this? I could have talked like this the whole shift <laughs> or the whole shift, the whole, well, it feels like a shift. Can you introduce, can you introduce the hackers three podcast as your little girl character? How would I introduce it? Oh, this is the hackers three podcast. This I'm is the here. hackers three podcast. Hackers three hackers in outer space. <laughs> Corey, Matt and Jack. And hackers yeah, three and, and Hillary. <laughs> <laughs> Just... And Hillary. That's impressive. In outer That's space. <laughs> And then we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna do Gremlins three, and we have to <laughs> talk about the terror, the terror. <laughs> we're, on the, we're on the podcast of terror. Can you say Requiem with the accent? Requiem. <laughs>
It's actually not too different than when I was no, it's laughing. Requiem. <laughs> Requiem. There's normal. Okay. My yeah. God, you'll get there. Oh my God. It's, it's kind of weird, right? It's going to come up in an audition for a really important movie now for you. <laughs> Requiem's going to be in the sides. And I'm going to fucking fuck blow it. Up. it. <laughs> you're gonna blow Steven it. Spielberg's going to be like, no. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> or Steven Spiller's gonna be like, I heard you on the podcast of Terry all the time, and uh, I'm sorry, but you're out. <laughs> My He's mother was to... Hey, hey, Stevie, Stevie, just let her through. It's cool, bud. Or no, maybe you know, Murray Ridley no, gonna... or Jean Jean Pierre Genet. Yeah, Jean -Pierre. No, it's gonna be the opposite. The casting director is gonna go. That's it. That's the one we've been looking. Everybody's been taking that requiem line so serious, so maudlin, so funeral esque. <laughs> 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 we love it. that's that's it you're going places kid aliens nine you're old <laughs> listen i'd do it i'd i'd start with michael fassbender <laughs> <laughs> i guess the ball is just a bad one that's left see where are they gonna go i mean so okay at the end of covenant mm -hmm. he he's gonna clearly he's gonna kill what's her face Sam, um, Sam uh, Waterson, yeah, Waterson's daughter, Those and then all of characters that were so attached to. Oh, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Ugh, the first and second, like Dallas and <laughs> the others. That well, one that was, ate everybody. That know, one, that, was, that guy was cool. I never remember Veronica Cartwright's name, but she had a name. But you, she's so memorable. I, mean, I don't remember most. I'm not. And I'm not good with character names. Ian Hart. What was his? What was his robot name? Or what was Ash. His? Ash. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. And then I can't, I can't remember anyone else, but, but you were attached to them and Jonesy, the cat. And then in the second one, you've got Gordon Vasquez, Hicks, Hudson, a pong. Yeah. Newt. I mean, it's great. And you love all these characters. Paul Reiser, Paul Reiser's character, but with a B Paul Beiser. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what you don't know that that's his character's name in aliens. Paul Beiser. He introduces himself when she's like, I'm Burke, Burke. Burke. It's Burke. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, Paul Beiser would have been. Bad. I was like scared. Where I remember where I was little and mad about you came out, and I was like, I'm not watching that. He's bad. <laughs> yeah, <I'm not laughs> there are some this. people where I'm like, like I just watched. Uh, I you watched an episode fake, of. Right? It's pretend. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I just watched the, the Matthew Weiner. Wein Weiner. Why? Why? I think I don't know. I don't know. The um the Romanovs. Romanovs. Yeah, and there's he's in it, and I'm just like I still can't. I'm like, oh, oh, gotta be he's bad, great so. in Stranger Things. No, he's great. No, I love Paul Reiser. No, but it's just like that. That is like seminal. You're not mad about him. <laughs> You're kind of <laughs> no, mad about he's him. He's great. I just always expect him to turn out bad. Although you kind of figure he's going to be bad. Spoilers for Matt. <laughs> How are we doing, guys? Like, yeah, minutes? fuck it. Um, <laughs> and then. Like, like three more minutes. Doesn't he play an unlikable character in Beverly Hills Cop as well? No, he plays the friend who. This is not my office. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Covers for Axel. I always get him mixed up with the drug dude. I, I've only seen the first one a couple times. Two is my. But yeah, so Alien Three, I can't. Well, he was the second one, except for Charles Dance, who gets it. Like, Char yeah, Charles Dance is amazing, and yeah. uh, Charles Dutton. All the yeah. Charleses of in the Charleses Alien 3. are great. Yeah. yeah. And then this one, I mean, it was a little bit better. Oh, the characters. I, I mean, I yeah. don't think there's. No, no, no. They're they're they're, they're, they're not as fleshed out, but they're distinguishable, yeah. and you kind of you're like, oh, well, I guess sad. Two this person of them are. Dies. Really, just yeah. the ones that live. Yeah. The ones that die are kind of flat. Yeah. Besides maybe um, Leland Orser is like, I'm going to die and I'm really a nervous guy, but I'm kind of. And I love how at one point he was like, I'm fine, guys. I'm fine. As if he would know what an <laughs> alien bursting out of stomach would feel yeah. like. Also, every like, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. Also, everybody else, like, I don't know. They, they all seem to know the alien mythology pretty well for a bunch of people who are just thrown into the situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe... And then and I do. I mean, yes, go on. I was going to say, did anybody in the film just try Rolades just to see? <laughs> <laughs> no, we ran out of eggs. You just you just had a bad, you just had bad salami. Yeah. <laughs> um yeah, I mean, but that's why like I liked AVP because you do kind of you're like, "Oh, I, I like her and uh, anyway. I like that Italian guy from Under the Tuscan Sun." <laughs> <laughs> and Prometheus I hated was all the a characters. Jerk. I hated and he all the characters. Dumped Diane Lane, but she got with that other cute guy at the end. Oh, we're gonna have to do an Under the Tuscan Sun podcast. I I love that's a guilty. No, that's not a guilty pleasure. I enjoy that's that movie, a and a lot pleasure. of people do. It's a great movie. I've and Diane Lane's great. Diane great. Lane's great. Yeah, Streets right? of Fire. Yeah, she's Judge Dredd. Oh, oh yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. it's, uh, mm -hmm. Star Trek: The Next Generation. Sweet, so Corey, where can people find you on the internet? <laughs> I'm not really on the internet. 
Uh, God. That's, God. That, that's kind of it. I, I, I got uh, locked out of my Twitter, actually, and I feel like that was a beautiful thing to happen to me because I should have left me out here. Oh, ah, fuck that guy. Uh, no, it, uh, my phone number changed, and I forgot that my two-factor was set up with texting me as opposed to a uh, my Authy app. So it's like, oh, I can't get into Twitter. I can't get into my box account. Well, well, I guess the internet's fucked. <laughs> That's, I don't, we'll figure it out. We got to have you back on Twitter. I love Twitter. I, I wish everybody was on Twitter. I'll try to get a new account, and it just follows you. <laughs> well, I'll take it because Matt's right. We get the the emails that, that Jack posted this and Jack posted that, and it's like, man, that's all I really want. I need it. I've, I've been hemorrhaging followers, and uh, I'm actually right now I'm perfectly balanced followers following. So I have I need somebody to add so I don't look desperate. <laughs> I need to I, I wow. need to have more followers and following. That's a pretty <laughs> fragile lie to build for yourself, Jack. Ugh, <laughs> 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 oh, social media. That, that is a Fabergé level of like. <laughs> Oh my god! How are we doing? I, Do we we eggs, I mean, the scent. I mean, I mean. No, we're at this point. We're good. I just I'm just <laughs> oh, for god. an opening. I have work in the morning. She's got to travel yeah. uh, back oh, to right, back right. To all right, that's gonna do it. Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram and Untapped at Matt the Lifeguard. Next week we are going to be talking about Hereditary with JF Dubo. Oh. oh shit! Really? Yeah. Sorry, buddy. Oh, we decided god. that earlier yeah. today. <laughs> No, I'm I'm so relieved. I'm so relieved that someone. I hope to God he loved that movie. No, he hasn't watched it yet. Oh, God. we talked about it earlier today. He asked what movies to watch. I'm like, well, we've been talking like about Hereditary. Uh, my wife and I saw it, and uh, we despised it. Here's a nice piece of oh. shit. I haven't seen it yet. I've Absolutely. Seen a- I liked it. I didn't. I liked where it was going, and then I didn't like how it ended. But I like. Well, uh, well they'll talk to they're comment. Not, yeah, you can watch them live and join in the comments. Cool, That's I what will. I do at bars sometimes. I just tried to hijack their next episode. <laughs> no, I, no, I, I, don't, I don't doubt you could. We'll be doing it at uh, 8 p.m. next Sunday, your time. Okay, great. Um, I liked it. If everybody, <laughs> I wanted my opinion. I saw Suspiria a couple weeks ago, and I thought I'm surprised that it doesn't have the hype that Hereditary had because it was amazing. <sighs> it was really good. I heard All right. Anyway, yeah, we'll yeah. add it to the queue. We'll, we'll we'll cover Suspiria on your show. Deal. Yeah, Suspiria the- or uh, still suspect. <laughs> That's gonna do it for the episode. Record. Holy <laughs> shit! Can I close this episode? Uh, can you stay scary, everybody? Oh, is that how you close out? That's so cute. Corey, stay scary. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna do it for another episode of the podcast. Say it, say it as a nine-year-old. Say it as a nine-year-old. We'll see you guys oh, next week. Oh, is this gonna segue into the the heavy metal, the grindcore? <laughs> yes, it will. <laughs> Hillary, please say "Stay scary" in your nine-year-old voice. Stay scary. Oh, I can do that better. Hold on. <laughs> oh, hang on. Yeah, right. There's no second takes. <laughs> I already stopped it. Do you need me to cut this Stay out? And... No. Okay. Then... You need, I need okay. a little more warning here. No, do you want to redo it? Sure. All right, give me two seconds here. Never ask an actress if she wants to take. <laughs> I know. That's why this episode's <laughs> <laughs> All right, all right, all right. Ready? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Go. Stay scary. <laughs> Perfect impersonation of Mass Man. Perfect. I wish I wouldn't have cut off Jack, but it was... <laughs> You want me to do another take? Matt is always quick yeah, on the draw. A second. Yeah, give me a second here. Oh, really? That hurt my throat. <laughs> Stop being a puss puss. <laughs> All right, Jack, you ready? Oh, it's just me? I don't get a lead in? Yeah, have her do this. No, I'm going to really... lead in. Oh, Damn it, you guys. Get into character. <laughs> All right, Hillary, are you able to do this again? Mm-hmm. All right, hang on. Yeah, sorry. All right, all right. right. Hillary, please say, stay scary in your nine-year-old voice. Stay scary. (laughs) (laughs) That's my impression of of Matt's music. Are people still listening? (laughs) There are people still on YouTube, and I don't know if they're paying attention.
How is your YouTube uh, audience? I wish I always forget to look at the chat and participate. Uh, there was a couple. Hey, thanks for right. thanks for watching. Yay. We appreciate it. All right, Jack, go to workish. Oh God, I'm gonna kill myself before then. No, don't do it, buddy. You text me this in the morning. My, uh, this is my final show. This was me passing the torch to her. <laughs> <laughs> She will be your champ now. It's not like we don't have nine other podcasts for you to do with us, Jack. So <laughs> this is me getting out of Gremlins Three. No. Never. Gremlins, killing myself. Don't I would chain you down if I had to, but I realize that your life is so empty that I don't have to. So <laughs> wow. just get you to. I'm not going to compliment him for being a dip. Wow. <laughs> He's just gay. Aww. It's it's tough love. I know what he means. He's it absolutely is. He's I don't know, man. He's being pretty fucking mean. Yeah, I'm I'm hanging out with Erica too much. Hey, so Jack, I have your Pongers movie on my Plex. Mm -hmm. I, I saw I saw you responded with yours, and it's actually I'm going I'm to watch it. Then. Yeah, okay. uh, I'm going to. I, I uh, what I do is I leave my emails. I mark them as unread to save them for later. And you, oh, uh, I do that. I'm gonna check. I'm gonna check yours out. I, I was supposed to do it. I had eight. I had twenty two hundred emails. I tried to get through uh, on my vacation. I'm down to four hundred. Man, don't make reading my shit a priority. You've got other stuff going on with that. I, I'm very. I cute. absolutely appreciate that you even consider it. But it was just more of a you know, you show me yours, I'll show you mine. Um, <laughs> love that game. But I, I I love Pongers, and I was so glad to be able to like grab that and put that on my. Oh, I, I appreciate. Oh, that's so cool. That's so cool. That can you can put it on there. That's very. I gotta learn how to do that. I just uh, basically grabbed it from the YouTube. Oh wow! Yeah, no, that's um, that's that was the only movie I really ever got to direct besides the one I did with Hillary. But that was a table read. That was the only movie I really got to like try to make a comedy movie. Uh, and I was really happy. I was always disappointed in in myself for not finishing it and uh, for having very low production values because I was just like more interested in the in the jokes and the writing and the directing than anything else. But I was always I always prided myself on the fact that all the most of the other student films were like cliche pretentious student films, and I would just I just loved the idea that like my student film was like a like a Zucker Brothers homage. I thought it was really funny. I liked it a lot. There were there were definitely scenes where I was like, "Holy shit, that is hilarious!" Oh, I really appreciate that. Thank you. I, I uh, that means a lot. But you kept talking about you guys doing the table read. You said, "Is that something that we can actually watch?" Or I, I, that was on my to do list too for my vacation. It's like I got to figure out how to. It's streaming. It was streaming on Amazon Studios. Uh, I don't. The people that edited lost the footage on me. I don't, I'm gonna try to do like a screen, rec like stream it and screen record it if it's still there. But I don't know if it is. But uh, Hillary is really funny in it, and uh, I got really lucky with my ensemble. It was a lot of actors I had just met in improv. Uh, that was a really fun, and it was like oh, yeah. I direct. I, I it was a great direct directing challenge for me because it was the second uh, besides Pongers, it's the only time I ever directed. And what we do is we would sit on the couch, and it would be the two or three people that were in each scene, and I would basically just like have to give you guys direction like on the spot, like based on my knowledge of the script. And it was a really interesting like challenge. That's not how you should direct, and it's not how you should prep a movie or ever do a movie. But uh, it was. I don't know. I thought it was interesting. You were yeah, you were fine. reading it kind of cold, right? Maybe you've read yeah. the script once or twice before the night before or something. Maybe, yeah. But it was yeah, it was pretty cold. And we shot and we did it completely out of sequence, which was tough yeah. based on everybody's schedules. Anyway, we should go. Yeah, absolutely. But thank you both I so much. It was so much fun, guys. Thanks for having me. Thank you. You were fantastic. <laughs> you were an absolutely terrific addition. I'm I, sure I'll be back again, maybe. I, I had a feeling she would shine. <laughs> Jack, you haven't brought us anybody awful yet. Everybody you brought us has been oh, like the, the tops. <clears throat> oh, well, I, like I said, I, it's, I, I have plenty of people. But I like to be number one. I know plenty of other people <laughs> that could be on the show. I try to curate who I think would work well with you guys. Yeah, but it also it's a statement about who you are is the quality of people that you bring to us. Aww. Yes. Aww. This is, I appreciate it. I love all this love. <laughs> <laughs> From Corey and not Matt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm... Matt's that like my brother. When I see good him, episode and trying to edit. <laughs> He's like, I, I, yeah, I, good luck with that. I see uh, action movies with my brother, and whenever there's like a tender scene. My, I sit next to my brother, and this is what I hear. So, like, we'll see Creed, and he's in it for mm -hmm. the boxing scenes, and then there'll be a scene with Tessa Thompson. Mm -hmm. She's like, "I'm doing it for you," and you'll just hear my brother, "Oh God!" <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! God. Oh, that reminds me of Princess Bride, and he's like, "Is this a kissing?" <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's my brother, except yeah. he's forty nine years old. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, speaking of Tessa Thompson, uh, sorry to bother you. Just I hit know, the blue. I gotta watch it. I gotta watch it. 
She said I watched it. it yesterday. It is really good. It, it, it's it weird. No, I still hey. Still I can't wait it. to check it out. Yeah, I'm gonna, I, I need yeah. like. I need to be. A, I can. I can't watch anything good anymore. I can only watch like dumb TV, like Star Trek, because my brain's dead. <laughs> but one day. And, and with that, you should go. <laughs> I gotta go to bed. Okay. All right, let's yeah. let's. Yeah. All right. I'm sure we could do this another three hours if we wanted to. So I could just pull it. I'm. I'm. We can always do it again. That record. Yeah, we we'll can just start earlier, guys. We'll just start earlier. Yeah, that's fine. So we'll watch the terror, and we'll, we'll go for at least a four-hour episode. This is why you shouldn't drink six beers. And... I can do it. I'll bring we're a cooler gonna... next time. I'll take three pee water. breaks. Yeah, we're gonna get mad a catheter. Yeah, I don't give a shit. Oh, actually, I had a soy chai from Starbucks. Oh. <laughs> yeah, soy chai. That's cool, guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay Sorry, all right we'll let you go we'll let you go no god it's you, nice meeting I'm, you guys likewise it's really nice meeting you. very nice meeting you well i do i do have to get back to manhattan the yeah. l train's still running right? oh, you know, oh god i thought you were taking a cab oh no oh no <laughs> go get back to whatever city it is you live in the l train's running it's it's a, it's a sweetheart so we'll see when it's okay running. all right